It's showtime, COD fans. Welcome to Boston. It's finally time for Major One. After four weeks of online qualifiers, the top teams are set. And today we'll see them face off in the winner's bracket. First up, the LA Gorillas try to take down the juggernaut Atlanta phase. Coming into the first LAN of the season with a perfect 7-0 record. Next, Minnesota clashes against reigning champs New York. Will their momentum carry them to victory, or will the subliner stop Rocker's roll? Plus, Toronto Ultra continue their revenge tour, taking on a fired-up surge who've come into Boston with a chip on their shoulder. And finally, Optic Nation will be cheering on the green wall against the hot new Spanish squad, Miami Heretics. Vamos! It all starts right now, live from Boston. This is the Call of Duty League Major One. Doors are open and the fans are filing in here at the MGM Music Hall at Fenway. Welcome back to Boston, everybody, for the 2024 Major, the opening Major of the Call of Duty League season. And there you can see the Rowdy fans. They were tossing footballs, everyone fighting for their spot in the front row. Well, the time is now. It's game time. Welcome in, everybody. It's Chris Bucket alongside Study. We've got Alley Cat and Nameless. The Major is finally here. No more online play. We're going to see the teams on stage once again. Study, what are you fired up about? I'm fired up about not having negative 20 degree weather as soon as we <laughs> enter Boston. Facts. That's first off. But, like, we have so many people who can come out and win this tournament. Well, like you said, five contenders, man. I think anybody can walk away with this one if they come out and play a great week in a COD. Nameless, who are those five in your book right now? There are a bunch. I mean, I think Optic, New York, FaZe, uh, I mean, potentially Toronto. Heretics come out and win. Toronto, you can't count them out. So we got some heavy hitters here, man. I can't wait for the action to kick off, Chris. And Ali, we are going to yeah. stay pumped up here on the desk. Oh, yeah. They hooked you, us you, up you with our own this? fridge. I want this in my gaming setup. Actually, we have a very long day. Is it this open one, from my way? Here we go. Yep. Yep. Okay, I got uh -huh. it. I got Get it. We're good. We're good. Hold on. Hold on. ASMR. Yep. Did you guys hear that? Oh, it's spilling. A anyway. lot of excitement. All right, while well, she's chugging her monster, let's catch you all up with what went down in our qualifiers because all teams had to play seven matches. At the end of them, only one of them was perfect, and a whole lot of teams, they're still looking for their second, maybe third win. Let's talk about some of the top dogs. Who impressed, though, Jay, as you're looking through any star players here in the opening month or two of Call of Duty? Well, it's got to be Atlanta phase, and more specifically, Sim. Like, what he's been able to do all so far throughout the season, he's, like, leading in the SMG category. We talked about hard point s and he's coming out week one getting one before clutches like he's just unbelievable right now for this roster and atlanta Faith is sitting at seven and roll due to a lot of what this guy does i love what we've seen from him and of course you've seen the heretics making some waves let's chat about this squad and what they brought to the table well, for those of you that don't know much about the Miami Heretics, they actually played in Black Ops 4 before we moved into franchising. So by no means are any of these players rookies or really new to the scene. If anything, it's kind of a redemption arc for them because we haven't seen them on land yet in this game, right? We've seen what they've been able to do online. A little bit of a strong start, had some hiccups, 3-0 Optic Texas, and now they have to try and do it again as their first matchup during this major. They're coming in with a top four seed. I don't think any of the coaches' polls saw that one coming. Let's take a look, though, at a team that everyone expected to be in the 
top three. Once again, they're coming in with the number one seed. FaZe has been on top. Yeah, it's been a while since they've been that number one seed too, and FaZe have been unbelievable. I mean, you're talking about a team that has maintained a level of dominance after last year in Search and Destroy. Same thing in this year. And then bringing in Draza, you know your respawn's going to improve. They have been perfect in the clutch situations. They have been dominating in their hard points, and they look like the team to beat here at Major One. I mean, it's just an unbelievable roster that also plays at a very high level intellectually. They're going to be tough for anybody across that stage. These are the top dogs, but there are a number of teams nipping at their heels. Let's talk about the team that was on fire up until that grand final of the World Championship. Toronto <laughs> coming in with a top three seed, and they're looking to make a statement here that they are the team to beat in the league, that they deserve to be World Champions at the end of 2024. And they definitely do, man. If you talk about what this Toronto Ultra roster did all of last year, they were always contending for a championship. They yeah. fell short in the World Championship, and that was the biggest upset I've seen in quite some time. 5 -0 was not expecting that, but going into this year, they make a roster change. They bring in a better SMG player, a better objective player in Envoy, and that has completely changed the face of this Toronto Ultra roster. Like, basically unbeatable in hard points and in their controls. They're still one of the best teams. They can just figure out their S&D without question. They can compete with the best. Well, we did all these qualifier matches to find out where our teams are going to land in the bracket. Let's first take a peek here at the standings phase. Perfect 7-0. and oh, Your top four, you got Toronto, you've got the Subliners, you got the Heretics edging out Optic with the 3-0 in their last qualifier matchup. On the right side of the screen, though, that's where things are going to get interesting, Jay. Yeah, I'm completely agreeing with you, man, because already you have ten, teams sitting at 10 to 20 points. And for majors nowadays, you get more points at majors, so you have to make sure you perform at these to even have a chance at making it a champs at the end of the year. You can see Boston did not get into the top eight. That belongs to LAG. Instead, Boston comes in with the 10th seed, and Ali, that means they're playing in the lower bracket so we will not see them today how's it gonna work though if you're a boston fan when can you cheer on your hometown squad well you can cheer them on tomorrow they'll play the losers between the toronto ultra and the seattle surge if i remember correctly and that is gonna be a tough matchup but i have to say boston breach again i like their team makeup i think they have a good chance and obviously they're gonna have the home crowd cheering for them and i'm looking here at the bracket jay what side do you want to be on with phase optic heretics or do you want to be down there with no, toronto I'm not surge everything is a gauntlet, bro. everything is literally a gauntlet i wouldn't want to be on either side but if you have to be on one one of those sides, you just have to work your way through and get a couple W's. If you somehow make it to the end of that bracket, you win the championship match. Well, Boston is hooking you up, Nameless. This thing is beautiful yeah, this, this year. this thing is absolutely sick. I love what Boston's done, man. And then, you know, Jay, do you have one of these things? One of these trophies? Bro, listen, man, I don't got a trophy. I got a big check from back in 2009, bro. Like, they don't you make them like this big old check. The <laughs> checks got way bigger, and they continue to increase. $150,000 goes to Ooh. first place. But not just that, Allie, we we have jumped the points up for land, making it even more important to get these wins in person. Oh yeah, points have gone up tremendously. We're now at 100 points for first, 75 per second. I believe it was something like 60 last year yep, for yep. first. So now in this year, it's just that much more important to perform on land. You can see the top eight are getting paid out. They're earning points. And if you're looking for some duos to lead their squads, well, let's start here with the top. Atlanta phase is perfect. And if you're looking for someone to set the kill record, it could come from either of these two this weekend. Simp and Abizi were red hot last time we were in Boston. That was MW2. Now we're in MW3, and they look even stronger. I mean, honestly, we call them a dynamic duo. It really is a dynamic trio, but if you do want to focus on the SMGs and Abizi and Simp, I mean, they are just disgusting at this game. They've been disgusting for the past four years, but I think what's so interesting about this game is how well it fits their team and how well it fits these two. We've seen already what Simp has done with the beginning of this year with the fact that we have no sound EQ. We have covert sneakers added into the game. We have Red Dogs. If Atlanta phase struggled anywhere, sometimes it was in their communication. Well, that's not going to be an issue in this game. So for Atlanta Phase, you know, all these teams, they try to build to beat these, this duo. A BZ yeah. and Simp. We need somebody to go up against a BZ and Simp. They completely changed the way a lot of these team dynamics work. So one of the scariest duos that will touch that main stage today. Taking a look at some of the numbers from the Tiny Terrors. They've been dropping bombs across their 32 events. Nine wins, two of them earning championship rings. They are two-time world champions with 21 grand finals appearances. You can always expect them to be there on the final day. The question is, who's probably going to be joining the Tiny Terrors? Let's talk about a duo that's coming from up north. Toronto has some big ARs of their own, Nameless. Yeah, I mean, if I had to pick an AR duo to build a team around, it would probably be these guys. They Agreed. have been unbelievable, right? Like, even when they had Hixie, Unreal made to the World Championship final, and then they bring in Envoy, who 
you know, has more experience playing that role, and you've seen it reflect in the numbers. The respawn has just been unbelievable. I mean, you're talking about Insight, who's been dominating Search and Destroy, number one in Hardpoint KD overall. Scrap is the damage dealer. He's been number one in damage. And Kleenex's numbers are through the roof as well. So everybody is playing in top form right now. And that's a testament to the chemistry of this team. But really, these this AR duo is a force to be reckoned with. They play off each other so very well. Here's a look at the leaderboard and where they land. Toronto, it's not just the two ARs. You also got Kleenex there in the mix. Three players in the top six for a hard point. One of the reasons this is the best HP team in the game. Oh, yeah, they're beating teams on what? An average 97 in every, in every hard point? You're not going to compete with a team that's destroying you in every HP. Yeah. That's why their stats look like that. So if they continue to play like that, without question, they're one of the best hardpoint teams in the they're game. Not even, they're not getting traded 75% of the time. Yeah, they're chilling. Both ARs, yeah. that's nuts. Man. Those are four of the most dangerous players in the venue. But if you're looking for two fan favorites, they are wearing Boston green this week in Capsidal and... Snoopy, the youngsters brought in, are leading this team with two world champs on the ARs to back them up. It basically looks like these guys are free. They let loose Capsidal, they let loose Snoopy, and when they're at their best, they can take over games. And I love this roster. It's just like for certain rosters that get formed in the beginning of the year, they start off on a better foot. For this team, they're gonna need more time in order to be in their full form. And when you talk about the SMG, Snoopy gets it done when you talk about the respawn. He's basically unkillable in that mode, but when the s &D flips, it all turns into Capsidal. And that's the thing that really throws me off with this roster is that both SMGs, they had their shining lights in their respective game modes, but if they can do it together, that's when they take their game to the next level. Search and destroy, it's always pivotal here. Games two and five in our best of five series. It will yeah. be the decider in any matchup. When it comes to the leaders, who have you been impressed by? I mean, you gotta say Abuza, right? I mean, this guy is trying to put himself on the board for rookie of the year. He's on the likes of Surge and I mean, 1.35 overall, again, you're talking about this is the youngest player on that squad, but obviously you see our top teams also joining the ring. So Snoopy and Capsable on this list, inside and Kleenex making it again. And I'm surprised I actually see Afro slipping in here, considering how LADs have been playing. There you have it. You've got two players from Boston in the top eight, and once again, the Toronto boys showing up there right behind them. Let's take a look at the schedule, because Boston, they don't play until tomorrow. They need to find out who they'll fa be facing off against from this winner's bracket as we kick things off here here in just about 20 minutes. You're gonna see LA taking on Atlanta, Minnesota versus New York, Toronto versus Seattle, and Miami versus Optic. This is your last chance to get pickups in. Nameless, what's the toughest one to pick for you today? I, I honestly think the Minnesota and New York series can be closer than what people think. I think that's going to be a banger. And then Miami versus Optic is the easy answer. Yeah. yeah. That one's just going to be insane. Who knows who's going to come out on top? Chad, let us know what you're looking forward to. We're going to be breaking down all of the games. We'll be talking about the Optic curse when we come back. This is the CDL. We're back with Major One live from Boston. Brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Tune in throughout Major One this weekend to earn awesome in-game content. You can rock the Frostbite blueprint, charms, emblems, calling card, and get XP tokens. Be sure to link your account now to start earning. The MGM Music Hall is filling up as fans are filing in from all around Boston, the Northeast, getting ready for the first major of the 2024 season. And we are just a few minutes away from that first matchup. While we're waiting on the games to kick off, we wanted to remind some fans out there of a little Call of Duty history because we have a showdown in the opening round that is not good news if you're a fan of a team that wears green. Oops. Optic Texas has been one of the most dominant squads we've seen in the CDL. 
except in their matchups against Florida. What is going on in this showdown? Why has Optic had some issues here? It's got to be something supernatural at this point because you got to <laughs> think like the Optic Texas boys, like they're used to this matchup. It, there's no way it can be mental, but somehow the script keeps scripting in a version of Florida, Miami. They somehow keep having to go against, up against Optic and they're winning majority of the time. So for Optic Texas fans, this is probably the worst pull you could have gotten for round one, especially because historically Optic Texas does doesn't do that well day one of majors. Yeah. Well, recently it was a 3-0 yeah. online, and it was a dominant showing from the Heretics, nameless. Yeah, listen, I mean, to add context to it, it does seem like Optic was testing out the map because they no. played them no matter what. Yeah. But I will say also, it's been different iterations of Optic Texas Game and Patty. different iterations of Florida teams, and still Florida has had the edge. It's the ghost of Dave Patty. At this <laughs> He's the reason that Florida has the edge. It's going to be an insane series, man. Can they get over that hump? That might be the final thing that they need. That battle is coming up at 6 o'clock. Before that, though, you'll be able to see Toronto take on Seattle. And Seattle is a squad that we had in our top tier in the opening two weeks. After that, they kind of leveled out to 3-3 three and three, and then eventually finished 3-4. and four. The Surge coming in as underdogs against Toronto Ultra today. If they're going to get things going... Who are you looking at from this team study? I feel like it has to be Hoop. Like, he's been the nuke for this roster. Whenever they walk away with respawns, he's doing it with that SMG in hand. Does not matter what map he is playing. But overall for the team, I feel like it has to be a better performance at Hardpoint. You're going to be against the number one Hardpoint team in Toronto Ultra. Yeah. Your rotations are the best, but your holds and breaks don't stand a chance versus these guys. And then if you fall short, if you lose that search and destroy, say for instance, Matt Karachi, you don't want to play that against these squad. You lose that map too, though, you're also playing against the best control team. So it has to be through the respawns if you see out. Yeah, I think you made a really good point. I'm I'm not making part of my prediction until I see Hoop do his walkout and seeing what version of okay. him that we're going to get today, you know what I'm saying? But I guess the biggest struggle right now for Surge is, yes, they might have the edge in Search and Destroy in the series, but honestly, just barely. We're talking about a 4-3 Toronto Ultra and a 6-3 Surge, and that just means Toronto Ultra ending their series quicker, right? Because they're winning those respawns every single time. So for Surge, we're going to have to see something special today. Big shout out to Easy Mac and our whole stats team who put together the numbers because they called out something interesting here, Nameless. Yep. Seattle, they beat up on the little guys, but they're having trouble keeping up with the big dogs. Listen, I mean, this will probably reflect for most teams. It's yeah. tougher competition, yeah. uh, but maybe a little bit more glaring on the side of Seattle Surge, sort, sort of working through some issues in their hard point. But I will say they are good at an assortment of things. Like in Search and Destroy, you guys mentioned, they've been fantastic converting the first bloods. In hard point, they've been fantastic at rotating. Number one in the league, just holding and breaking has been a struggle. So they have a great coaching staff and a star-studded roster that's won world championships. This is a team that can figure it out, especially going up against Toronto, they have a decent chance. Toronto's win earned them the spot against the Surge. Meanwhile, the Subliners will earn the number three seed and are now going to be facing off against some interesting competition in Minnesota in the opening round. No stranger to this series, you're going to see old man accuracy going up against the Subliner squad that won the world championship, dominated the grand final, and then has had some ups and downs in the qualifiers, but at the end of every match, they're still considered the favorite, even in their losses. Some people are calling it a fluke. Yeah, I mean, you know, for for New York, this team is just so strong, right? Yes. We talk about the S&D, they're the best search team in the game. You can make an argument for FaZe, but New York won the World Championship. It's still 9-1, right? They're working through their respawn at the moment, right? I think their 9-10 overall respawns it just hasn't been perfect yeah. for them th thus far. But this is a team that I know in a land environment, they all have trust in each other. They can take over and make a run at this whole thing. S&D wins championships. That is the backbone of this team. So for New York, I'm not super worried, but I do think this match can be kind of close with the recent form of Minnesota Rockers. Just and the only thing that scares me for New York is their respawn right now. Because the fact that they're so strong in SD, 9 and 1, their response haven't been the best. All their hard points, they come down to the wire. Their control hasn't really been strong either. But going up against a Minnesota roster, this is definitely how you want to start off a tournament. Playing a team that you already beat in a 3 1 fashion is a good way to start. Yeah, as we look at the maps up right now, Minnesota Rocker took that map one. They are actually 6 and 1 in game ones. But yeah. the biggest problem for them against New York is even say maybe they take that control. If they push to that game five, Minnesota Rockers 1 1 in game fives. For New York Subliners, 3 0. So even if they do manage to make the series go on, on longer, that game five isn't looking to be in their favor. Minnesota's winning it. Call it down. <laughs> saying it. All right. Saying it. All right, let's get moving here. We got to talk a little bit about the opposition here because the Rocker are the underdogs. They have nothing to lose here. In fact, they had nothing to lose in the qualifier. They started off 0-4. They were in dead last 12th place. They somehow put together back-to-back 3-0s. They finished on a three-match win streak, and they earned their spot here in the winner's bracket. 
What are your expectations for them now, Nameless? What are they playing for? Yeah, I mean, they're playing to make a run, Chris. No, like, this is probably the most underrated team in the league that we yeah. have right now. And when you look at this matchup overall, New York has been one of the worst control teams in the league so yeah. far. Minnesota are going to have the edge in that matchup. I mean, the last three series, Minnesota are 9-2 map count. That is very impressive, right? And that is without Giga Wake taking over series. It has been vivid in the search and destroy, and I'm gonna give some extra love to Linz. He's the one who brought them back to life. The only one above a one in all three game modes, also leading the team in damage and hard points. So for this team, they're dangerous. What was the stat you said about map one, Ellie? Six and one they're on map one. Six ones. and one on map one. If they come out, they win that map number one. They have the edge and the control. They're in a in a great commanding spot in the series. Minnesota, do not count them out. You can see Linz was that guy against the surge. His 2.18 control performance was absolutely ridiculous as he was the thorn in the enemy side that entire matchup. Look out for Linz and look out for the Rocker as they will be taking the stage after Atlanta. Atlanta, though, is coming up first. When we return, it's Atlanta. It's LAG. This is the Call of Duty League.
And we are back live in Boston here at the MGM Music Hall, gearing up for the first match of day one. It's one of four, and we're opening it up with the big dogs. Atlanta Face taking on LAG. Welcome back to the desk. Chris Puckett, Study, Alley Cat, and Nameless here to break all things down, Atlanta and LAG. And I want to start here with the top-seeded team, Alley Cat. Yes. You hated on them all last year. You doubted hey, yo. them. All right, listen. I didn't <laughs> doubt them. The problem I had with Atlanta Faze last year was that they had, had so many small problems that I knew they had the talent to fix, and they wouldn't do it. So it bugged me a lot. But I think this year, they look incredible. I'm a big fan. Did they fix all the mistakes? They fixed the majority of them. They still have some communication mistakes, but luckily for them, the game really fits their play style. Let's meet the team Rock and Red. You got in a new face all the way from Alaska. The former LA Thieves world champion joining the roster, Draza, alongside Abizi, Simp, and Selium. Why is this team so scary, Jay? Because you look at this roster, they still have the core three who's been winning for a long time. And then you add a player like Draza, who's a world champion. And what he does for this roster, it does wonders. You see what it's doing for Simp. It opens up so many lanes. He's leading when it comes to the communication. It's not like he's a slouch in the respawn. He actually makes them better. So I feel like this team literally has no weaknesses. They got a couple losses in certain modes, but they're basically undefeated. Listen, the scariest part is that nobody really needs to go off. Oh, God. I haven't seen a game where, like, Selium's had to take over, Draza's had to take over. They are sound across the board. Yeah. And you can see it here in the scouting report. Like, they've just been unreal, Chris. Let's take a look at our Monster Energy pregame. Al, you've been chugging it. You're the most fired up. Take it away. <laughs> I mean, I am. I had a coffee this morning, too, so I am feeling Twisted. it in my system right now. But for the Monster Energy pregame Atlanta phase, there's only so much you can say about them, right? They've been almost perfect. 11-0 and overall when it comes to clutch situations. And then they dominate their early series. 7-0 in map one, 6-1 in map twos. I mean, their search and destroy has been literally disgusting. Number one opening dual win rate, number one post plant. I mean, they have been completely unreal. LAG, though, has been a team to cause issues, especially when you look past them, when you underestimate them. The Gorillas have gone to a number of game fives, and even though they just have two match wins, they are still a threat, surprisingly, to the teams above them on the leaderboard. What have you seen from the squad representing Los Angeles? All right, on an individual basis, Diamond Con has been unbelievable, yeah. but yes. so has Fame. Yeah. He has turned it around com completely, leading the team in hard point damage, and kills per round in search, so everywhere he's playing great. Um, search and Destroy has been the Achilles heel for these guys, so if they can figure that out, they'll have a lot better chance in this series. But the last time that they played FaZe, don't get it twisted, the respawns were neck and neck. Yeah. Like, they yeah. got 3-0, but it was a 20-point hard point and a one-round control. They can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. It could be, I mean, if they come out and they win that map number one, which is Skid Row, a map that they both don't have too many reps on, they have an opportunity in this series. And we heard from multiple teams that the LAG, when they are scrimming them, they're one of the best teams to play yeah. against. And just, they can't transition over to the main stage in their matches. And every top team that they have played so far this season, they have played them really tight. So they can't count Gorillas out just yet. For your Monster Energy pregame, let's take a look at the keys to causing the upset here. Name was, I'm looking at Estriel, but he can't be the only guy, right? Yeah, no, it's not just him. I mean, it's going to be search and destroy uh, is the main thing. But for Monster Energy pregame, oh breaking gosh. it down, 36.4% break percentage. That's great. That's great, absolutely fantastic. And then okay, SD form has disappeared as well. 0 and 4 record since the break. Assault gets zero kills in 66% of rounds. Damn. Now that has to be better, right? First of all. But also Estriel, he's supposed to be the guy out there in the opening dual fights, you know, alongside Fame. He's only been winning 33% of his. That's not great. So that has to be improved throughout this series. But they have also lost a lot of round 11s, which is, you know, you're not going to win series if you're losing <laughs> your last round icy, man. They don't have a lot of dubs, but they have a lot of game time. And let's take a look at the the maps they choose to play on this time around. If you're just joining us, the coaches get to decide one map for each game mode to ban. What's left over is what we play on. And it looks like they've decided on Skid Row, two invasions back to back, Karachi and High Rise Alley. I'm gonna be honest, as soon as I saw this map set, I got really pressed earlier, simply because <laughs> one of my only notes for this matchup is LAG are gonna want to avoid Karachi hardpoint at all costs. And where is it? Map number four in the series that could possibly be one of the most important maps in this series is it Atlanta is 3-0 and o on it. So if even LAG are able to steal that Skid Row hard point early on in the series, I'm assuming Atlanta takes a search and destroy. You push them at three, it's a flip-flop, and then you go to Karachi, and it's basically a lock for the Red Boys. I don't hate it, honestly. I really don't hate it. I mean, I think that LAG and Beja Control is a map that they can definitely win. It was close last time. They haven't been horrible at it. Yeah. And that Skid Row, they have a 120-point differential. They've been good at that map. So some opportunity here if you're an LAG fan. Jay, 
You've been in these guys' shoes. What's it like being the first match day one of the first event of the year? I think this is the best opportunity for them to come on and try to make a run because it's your first match. You're going on the main stage versus probably the best team in the game. And if you can come out and just perform the way that you know you have, the way you do in practice, you're going to stand a really good chance of just having confidence going forward. You might not even walk away with the W here, but just getting a couple matches, playing great versus Atlanta Phase would do wonders for this team. It's time to make our pick -ums official as you guys have done online. We're about to do it here on the desk. And as the team leader, I'll go first. I'm going to lock in Atlanta face. Okay. Yeah, I'm right there with you, bro. Ain't no, ain't no step in my rep. I got Atlanta face. Well, give me the number then, Jay. What button are we pressing, no, no. guys? There's no button here. There's a phase button. You hit it? There's a phase button? I'll hit it with you. Yeah, okay. no, we're, we're, yeah, yeah I mean, I've sat here and I've tried to make the most convincing Rewind. argument I can for LAG, but I'm going Atlanta face. <laughs> I think go. Atlanta face come out and take this one. Atlanta phase, they have all the numbers. We love our statistics, but will we be wrong? It's time to find out oh, as wait. the audience got their vote in as well. The fans? Also going with Atlanta phase. Okay. Any surprise here? No. No. Definitely not. No surprise. They've been watching Cop for the last couple of weeks. They know what's going on. <laughs> there you have it. All right. I think the match is ready. You guys ready to get this party I'm started? I'm ready, man. Let's go, yeah. man. Boston, are you ready to get this party started? Woo! Let's send it to the stage with Guy Blaze. What's up, Boston? It's Major One, and it's time to get this thing kicked off yet again. And we got two awesome teams coming to the stage. Give a warm welcome for LAG. Make some noise for a song. These are the for sure underdogs, but they found themselves in the winner's bracket. It was not easy. You got a rookie on the team, some players coming up from challengers. They want redemption and they want to seize this opportunity. They have to go through the best team in the game that went undefeated throughout stage one. As Bryce loves to say, it's David versus Goliath. It doesn't get bigger than this. Let's see if they can take the dub. It definitely doesn't get bigger than this, Nameless. A David versus Goliath matchup on the stage. Well, it's time to bring out Goliath. Get ready, Boston, because here come those boys from the South. I have a plan. Crazy with the rage, dangerous and rage. Oh, 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 what these problems I put you in that coffin but I'm never tossing you keep this ain't a stop it hungry for the beef leave you obsolete see my life speak see me in the streets see you in the heat ladies and gentlemen give it up for Atlanta Faze plan but I have some statistics the only undefeated team in the league and still after years of being the top four they're getting booed by the crowd it is the villains in red the Atlanta phase looking to possibly get their first chip of the season blaze I'm ready to get this started I'm ready to get it started as well Allie let's see if phase can keep that perfect record now Boston let's start the season off right you ready to go yeah. miles chance let's get it Thank you very much, Blaze. Yeah, we're ready to go. Major one. My God, I can't believe we're already into the swing of things here in 24. Excited to be back. Let's get this one started. And it is going to be a hell of a match that we're starting with, too. The Boston crowd already cracked me up. I heard booze when LAG coming out. I was like, are they going to cheer for Atlanta? Booze when Atlanta comes out as well. So we are getting the energy flowing for this series that we have at hand. And again, it is being phrased as a David versus Goliath matchup. And it makes sense. I mean, we always talk about the rookies in the CDL for Estriel. This is his first time on land 
man in front of a crowd and he gets Atlanta phase as his first. That's going to be a memory for sure. Well, he may have got Atlanta phase his first, but he definitely got a louder cheer than they did when they walked out on stage. Estriel, his debut here on land and under the big lights here in the CDL. We'll see how he fares on the other side of the stage. So chance, phase, seemingly invincible when it comes to uh, MW3 so far. I mean, they've had the highest of expectations for years now, and they have been pretty consistent on delivering as well. This year with the new addition of Draza, I mean, it was pointed out on the desk. They have a perfect record across the board, even in hard points, eight and two record. Like they're the best in the game or in that conversation. Every single game mode straight down the line, every single player is going to be in that conversation. I'd say Civ, especially so at the start of this year. Of course though, for that first hard point on Skid Row, Atlanta phase seven and zero on the map ones. They always start you off right. Here we go. Let's get major one going. And Sim has been heralded as one of the finest submachine gun players to do it. He's been doing just fine with the assault rifle this season as well. That MCW looking fine in his hands. Let's see how things fare here on Skid Row to start the tournament off. I can't wait, mate. It's going to be so good. And I will say, obviously, it is a matchup where you're expecting Atlanta Phase to win, but potential dangerous things to look out for as well. The side that Atlanta Phase is going to be starting on, that is always a massive opportunity to get the early time and set yourself up on rotation. Assault is already going to be worried about those P2 spawns, but you got to deal with the terrors inside of the hill. Yeah, one problem at a time. For now, it's P1. And for now, it's not a problem whatsoever for Phase. Dance on the outside. Watch that rival nine here on land. The minimal latency indeed with a weapon that kills that fast. We're expecting big things. I've got a P2 already. Well, that's a big fight from Assault, but again, this is still a good chunk of time that you are throwing away on P1 to effectively set up on this rotation. So LAG, they're playing the long game, but this might be one of the more dominant opening breaks we have seen from Atlanta. And obviously a dicey situation. If you lose this rotation for LAG, they're going to be in a horrific spot. But good news, you get your trophy player by the hill as Shrio getting the cutoff kills as well however Sim might have found the route oh no problem though assault reads it and so far so good LAG it's a clean sheet here on the second hard point top left hand side of the mini map you don't want to let those white arrows get anywhere near and right now those white arrows are going to be having to take very deep routes and they are coordinating together the game slows oh. down when it comes to land and for fame well you're checking all the corners all the stuns his direction Atlanta phase taking their time coordination is there they're working the break we got to draw the flight forward it's two for phase diamond con next man up guns at the ready Pick Simp finds himself two. Two members of FaZe left here in the play. They get through the top window. Draza breaks it. FaZe are in. Yeah, that is it. All ready to break. You're looking for is a strong P1, and they have followed up and done the near impossible. LAG quick to strike back, but still an extra few seconds stripped away on P2. And again, it is that pace that Atlanta FaZe able to slow down. Or maybe cheeky gunfight to BZ. There's for the final 15 seconds. So that was a dominant P1 turned into a mixy P2. And that one rotation. Assault's here first, but he's got Selian in his sights there to take him down. LAG finally have some semblance of control of the game. Back alley here in the mean streets of Skid Row. That's the next hard point up. And once again, the Los Angeles Gorillas, they are first in, best dressed. Can they hold on? Assault's got eyes on the back line. Four and one from him so far. Can't get any more. Sim cuts him down. Nice trades abound. Nobody left there on the point for LAG. I mean, that is what? Two breaks in a row from Atlanta Phase that are perfectly coordinated. Every trade coming through the right guy in the right spot at the right time. And now you just get Sully and post it up for the hold. Cheeky angle to deal with, but it's perfect. No shots on him from Diamond Com, but Assault there from the trades. But you are weakened up enough that you got to wait for the teammates. Teammates deliver. Oh. There's the bounce back from LAG. It's three for fame. Can't get a Oh, good work on the break once again. That's a very supple 20 seconds they're going to be fighting over for here. Selim, though. Oh, my God. Seemingly unkillable. It's a three spree from the Wonder Kid. Yeah, put that man in some stairs. Oh. He's going to show you a bad time. Oh. And he might get traded, but look at the rotation where LAG had won the first two. Well, now they're going to be playing from behind. LAG do currently have the best break percentage in the league. They're going to need it right here. Into the barbershop we go. Face first time we've seen them in a point since the first. Nades are up. Oh, you'll take that. Friendly fire. 50 seconds to go on the point. Here come LAG through the front. Draza finds his first. Two more on the inside. They've got the contest, so no one's getting time just yet. Oh, baby! LAG sprint to life. Sell him on the back door. Oh, stays alive! Yeah, he, he's just that iron boot in the back. That is such a clean break that just gets demolished and broken down. And now it's Atlanta Phase pushing the pace. So much was going right. 
until Salium just breaks you down. 10 and 5 from Salium looking for the 11th. LAG might be able to get another late break here. Fame flying forward gets himself too. And it's another sweet 20 seconds. Well, is it a sweet 20 seconds? Yeah, Atlanta fans are going to be fighting tooth and nail <laughs> for it. So any little bit of effort LAG put in, well, they get put on the back foot. But we're going back to another money hill. LAG, they got players on the wings, but the question is, where did the other two spawn? One's close. And the other guy spawns up mid-map as well. So LAG will be here towards the Money Hill early oh. on. And Diamond Khan is a shooter. You will be collecting a good chunk of this time. Shooting online. He's shooting on land here. Attack at the ready now from FaZe. No trophies going to save him from that lethal. Does a bit of damage. Just enough to slow him down. At great wow. range though. Simp put in the work. Estrell on the trades. LAG are holding it together. And now having to move that front line forward to stop the push from FaZe. Yeah, you need your comms to be on point as well right now. And Estrell, that is unlucky. It is the card that explodes. But on the cross fame, at least there to chop you down. But you have to be dialed in in this moment. Solid right now on this P5. LAG holding it all together so far. I think it's about time we go for a quick listen in. That's See you on the exam. He's in one room. I went to room now. I'm busy top left. 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 Down the head, you got him. He's in me one I stopped one, I stopped one. I went over, I went over. No trophy. He's far, far, far. 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 Far, He's in fire, in fire, 100%. I know, I saw him, I saw him. Stun him, dead, dead, dead. I'm going to go to the garage, I'm going to go to the garage. He's staying down in the garage, dead. Where do you spawn? I spawned out. 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 Nothing. Bottom for two, bottom for two. Bottom for two drops. Kill back out. He's playing too easy. He's going to take it. He's going to take it out. Too easy. One shot. Aggressively calm comms coming in from LAG, but as calm as they are, they are still on the back foot. It is the P2 where they did not hold the full 60 the first time around. And now Atlanta phase, you see the deep spread they have across the map. Able to snip out a BZ, but it's a long way to go to get to this hill. And they facilitate the push. So the 10 point game coming into this hard point. And now FaZe starting to push that lead ever forward. Selium sitting pretty up there in top P2, top blue. You'll be hearing it called in ranked play. Now rotation. We're going to the south side of the map once again, back to the alley. And it's just a, a devastating hill right now. Atlanta phase. This is a perfect lockdown of the time. You heard in the comms from LAG of players bouncing back and forth between the rival nine and the MCW. They're on point. Well, so is Atlanta phase. Every player had the right gun for the right moment on that hill. Right now they've built themselves a massive lead. Oh, Draza, he's moving. Information passed over, not enough to stop. The flow of reinforcements now from LAG over the point we go once again. King, Abizi, close it up, gets his, Sim finds his as well. The back alley now open for business, and FaZe are looking towards the win at 250. Yeah, pulling out some brand new spots, and Sally him just doing same old, same old. Just went on a five spree before he fell, so no cruise, but the kills are flowing. And now you're just looking for the cutoffs. This is where the game gets easy. Roam top P1, everybody from LAG going to be forced to flood in through ticket. It is a dire situation for Gorillas. 25 for the win. Here we go. Draza still holding on the point. His teammates finding kills all over the place. Selium keeps the play going. Draza soaking away. No one from LAG close enough. The defensive hold from FaZe is so good so far. The final few moments are in the hard point. Estriel, what can you do? Try to find the break. No hope in hell. Final 10, and FaZe take map one. I mean, they are coasting. They are on cruise control in Atlanta. FaZe starting things off right. Still perfect in the map ones. They make it look easy. That is map one. Some strong signs of life out of the members of LAG as we expected, but not necessarily enough to get it across the finish line. FaZe far too strong in that second set of hard point rotations. A chance. It's business as usual. And I mean, even from the way this game started, right? LAG spawning it on the bad side. They don't win the opening break towards the hill, so they put a massive amount of effort on that rotation of P2. 
Atlanta phase just break it down. You watch like the coordination they have, everybody double challenge together. And LAG might have gotten a few of the trades, but Drazi just goes and breaks them up top. If you break a money hill like P2, it can be devastating because we saw exactly what happened when Atlanta phase had it. They locked down for a full 60. LAG could not sniff the top. Oh, they're locking them down for the full 60s. Oh, what you are looking for, Selium though, an absolute standout there from phase 20 and 12 with just over 4,000 damage. Damage set chance, something we don't talk about too much, but we are this season, uh, something we're hoping to get to rank play soon as well. Diamond Con the other side. Everyone's putting up these damage numbers, Charles. How important is damage in this game? Well, the da that's like sort of your impact and the presence that you're able to show on the map. And I think the moments we saw from Selim where he's racking the damage up, like the barbershop hill, it started out with a team-made kill for Atlanta Phase. So they're starting off in a 3v4. Selim just does an incredible job of staying alive, dishing out the damage, and just buying his teammates so much more time to get back in the mix. So uh, Selim is truly just a player that you are constantly going to be feeling him on the map. Pressure indeed. Highlights here from Matt number one this was Draza's break from upstairs getting it up close and personal there with the MCW beautiful work there from FaZe so so hard to break that blue hard point here on Skid Row and once again Fame this was nearly a really solid four piece he manages to get over he just the tiniest bit towards the end Selium this was the beginning of many many sprees we saw him go on the map. it really is the nature of playing against Atlanta FaZe too because LAG outside of like that really one small moment on P2 battle they played well they were out slaying Atlanta for the longest of times until Selium really started to get going had great moments moments for the setups on rotations as well. Unfortunately, even if you play near perfect, sometimes that is just not enough in the scoreboard towards the end. Effectively devastating because Atlanta Faze, outside of that singular team made, virtually no mistakes they made on the map. Pulling out cheeky spots like a BZ standing on the windowsill. And obviously when you go P1 and you got the tiny tears on your team, they're going to have a field day. I feel like uh, we've got a very small sample size to work with so far, but getting to watch MW3 here on land so far, Rival 9 looks good. Looks real good. Oh, the ray gun. The, the ray gun looks good. The Renetti looks ridiculous. Draza picking up pieces with that. And just the game flow again. There was only one real point there between five and six where things were really, really tight chance. That was the beginning of the comeback. But once you get broken, that six hard point, that was their big P2 hold. A tremendous change there in the game. I mean, yeah, just getting stuffed out at the later half of that game, getting ran 100 points to none towards the end. Again, make a small little mistake in Atlanta phase. You're just going to take absolute full advantage of it. And I'm going to be honest, it's not like this series necessarily gets easier. Invasion, Search and Destroy, another map where Atlanta phase has been perfect. And the damage stat, as you brought up, it's going to be fun to pay attention to what Selim is going to be able to do. That man will live on the palace walls in the back of his spawn. <laughs> Did she got the damage, setting up the tears for the information game. They love to have a field day, but of course, LAG is going to let it in. They have some SND threats of their own. They're going to bring something to the table. Oh, the series is far from over. The double dose of, uh, of Invasion will be fun to see how that one all goes down. Control will be put on that map as well. We'll get to that map number three. And if we have to go deeper in the series, we will see. But for now, very, very interested to see how Search and Destroy goes, Charles. For the folks at home, first to six. We take turns attacking and defending. Let's see how it goes. Uh, well, again, in Atlanta phase, if you want to learn how to play, I know Ranked Play recently came out. They might show some creative sort of options of what you can do on a map like Invasion. I know guys like Draws are going to be living on the back bridge by the Humvees, locking down A Street. Some would be on the back wall. and. Simp and Ibiza might take turns dancing, but there are some lethal first blood threats on the side of LAG. Both Diamond Con and Fame have been outstanding throughout this first qualifying stage. They're going to need to be at their very best if they're trying to go toe to toe against Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Map two, here we go. Selim has been an issue in search and destroy so far in the season. Again, albeit not terribly long. But the opening qualifiers have been very dangerous indeed in phase, as you would expect. And it is, I mean, those stats, by the way, if you're not aware, they are truly nutty. A KD like that with his level of activity in the rounds, 0.8 kills per round, is not too shabby at all. It's a round one. There's no trophies out. Nades can always make an impact. That's why Atlanta phase may be playing a little bit slow around that van. But the opening salvo is taking place. No first bloods just yet. Fame a little bit active towards the middle of the map, but Atlanta Fay is going to be slow work and deep. The dangerous alleys here of invasion. Very, very close quarters engagement here. Draza trying to take care of Estriel on the bomb site. Smokes out. Covering fire comes through. Just enough damage there. Is it enough to get the kills? Estriel finds one with an A. The BZ taking care of the attack is up front. And Estriel, two from the point. Yeah, what a job by him just to stay alive. You saw the nades were coming through to dish out some damage. But LAG on defense in a cheeky spot as well. Diamond Con finds the perfect oh, diamond oh. in position. And he's got hands as well. 
Man can shoot, man can punch and sell him. 1v3, no dice. A very solid first round from LAG. It was Diamond Con on the broken stairs with his fists. First round in the bag. A nice two from Estrell there on the bomb site while under tremendous pressure. Yeah, and again, just to sort of point out the damage again, Fame might have sort of lost that battle against the BZ towards the middle of the map, but you saw the tags he was getting from that dark alley really set Estrell up to slow Atlanta phase down, and if you soften him up, make him a little bit weak, Estrell did deliver in the round and gave you the two kills, so strong stuff coming out of the rookie. Swap sides now, LAG will be attacking. It looks like we're leaning over towards that B side of the map once again, the top side of the mini-map. Oh, 15 HP from Estrell. Yeah, that's BZ. You walk 15 feet out of your spawn. He is already applying that first blood pressure. Selim living in his home, and that's the sort of setup you're going to see. Selim on that back wall has so much coverage of the map, and he can just tell Symphony and BZ when and where to make these moves. And you absolutely trust draws it to lock down B. So LAG, a minute left in the round, plenty of time. They're taking things slow. They're taking it slow. They're very isolated on that top right-hand side of the minimap. Anywhere you go, FaZe will have eyes on. Draza has the street cross. His teammates there lying in wait, Simp to pounce once the damage is dealt on the inside of the courtyard. 40-ish seconds to go, Chance. We gotta make a move. Yeah, and this is where Selling comes into play, by the way. He's getting the intel, they're working out A Street. That's where those shots are being exchanged. So Abizi might be set up ready for a gunfight. It's the tears towards the middle of the map. Do you check this corner? Abizi's getting one for sure. Sim's there to back him up in case of any kind of mishap. 25 to go. Draza managed to get the first blood. The nades are there. There's immediate oscillation to the other side of the map there from LAG. Are they going to run into trouble? Draza, oh, he spotted them out. The play may be ruined. Fame trying to keep it going. 15 seconds on the clock. Estrell finds another. 2v2. The clock still ticking red. Final 10. If you don't want to let this bomb go down, Abizi is going to be jumping on this one as quick as he can. It's the one air player. He got to catch it. It's going to be Fame back and Abizi down. Oh! Selling coming in on the flank, but Abizi's done his job. He trapped the last guy on sight. Estrell now in a 1v1. What a career defining moment this could be for him, Abizi. Toe to toe. Wait for the region. He still hasn't got it, Abizi. The bullet pen. And he says no. Faze tied up. Welcome to the league. Welcome to land. The rookie versus Abizi. Abizi letting him know Ooh. it wasn't just that gunfight towards the end. Even the read on fame, the movement on point. And it'd be easy. Anytime you get a smile, you know he's doing something vicious. Here you get it from his point of view. Well, just a little head nod. And I saw the three and one from Abizi there. Estrell fighting for his life from that back bomb site. And with a perfect play call from LAG, though. Still to get the plant to really make something of that round when things were not working out for them. Exciting stuff. Still one to one. Phase now attack. And just added pain, by the way. That would have been 5 0 for Estriel getting close to the cruise missile that Abizi just shuts down. So the first blood king can absolutely handle those late round moments as well. Lethal threat and search to destroy Atlanta phase, though. Similar to what we saw their previous offensive round, slowly working this B site. This time, though, Estriel has a bit more help. Dimecon making some aggressive moves. Slowly but surely now, you have to clear out a million different angles. Power positions, windows, nooks and crannies throw an invasion before you can make a move. In Jaza knows too. Yeah, I think he, the way he reacted might have heard the player going up top. And obviously with the shots coming through, yeah, they know Estriel's here. Trying to weed him out. The pressure's on him. Abizi trying to force him back. And well, they found that first blood. Oh, they found more than the first blood. They found the window into the B-bomb site. And now they are there. Diamond Con just in time to stop Sim from getting across. The jump check, though, spots him out. Ooh, and the Terror is now starting to make those dark alleyways here of Invasion look that bit more frightening. I mean, there's just nowhere to go. I mean, if Fame wants to flank through spawn, Salim's going to lock that down. He's trying to go through Dark Alley. It's two different players from Atlanta Phase. You have to get the timing with Diamond Con perfect. They cannot coordinate, and you just get shut down. There's that presence of Salim, the ever-present threat on the map, and that is a perfect round from Atlanta Phase. They find Estriel, it's a little too aggressive down that B Street, and they just pick you apart. Even the round before, when Atlanta Phase was on defense, it's the same thing, that B Street action. These rounds can be slow on invasion. When stuff starts to pop off around B Street, that's where you're gonna see those first bloods roll through. Right now, Atlanta, they have been on point. Such a different look on the attack there from Phase. As soon as they had the opportunity, they took it. LAG really unable to get anything going there on the retake. Let's see what they do now on defense for Atlanta Phase. Can they start to string some more rounds together? It's two in a row so far. 
Selium lands a lovely nade, a great range. All members of LEG still post up towards that backside of the map with a 2 2 split here from FaZe. And it's still just the type of setup where it is incredibly difficult to work with. Either you try to double hit towards B, where P's are going to be posted up in square. Simp's not easy to weed out. And of course, Draza in the god spot. This is where they're applying the pressure, though. Action again. B Street. First blood's going to be always happening over here. Communication tells Draza everything he needs to know. Nades up. Damage dealt. Here comes the opening salvo. Sim going in for the kill. Oh, he managed to get caught out. Fame gets the first blood. Here come the reinforcements from FaZe. And you're at least able to slow him down. The bomb is just now actually crossed. And Selim going to be a little bit heads up, but the bomb plant spot two on point. Estriel going to get it down. Oh. Suppressed. The flank now wide open. Assault lands it. Assault. They get their job done. LAG tied up two to two. That's beautiful. Being able to get that first blood on Simp, you're worried about the timing. Him and Draza trying to coordinate together, but they can't get it done, and that is just overwhelming force towards the end. Ready shots might not be super clean, but fame there for the cleanup kill nonetheless, and timing on the flank was perfect. That is a very important round for LAG to be able to get. Any offensive win you get on this map, you are happy for. Yeah, that's a big, deep flank through that wide open road by the bridge that Assault has to take there. He can only really take that when he knows that the numbers are so, so low there from FaZe. That 4v2 spot, tough to be in. And Fame, he is right up on the front line. I mean, he is just the, the man that's in the delicate spot, right? Either you're watching the dark alley cross or you're dealing with the pressure towards mid, and he doesn't really have anybody watching over him. He knows his A Street is covered, and it looks like he might be getting some call-outs from Assault. Ready for this presence. It's selling in that direction. But Atlanta phase, they have spread the map. They are absolutely playing for that first mistake to come through. But so far, LAG haven't taken the bait. Yeah, not taking the thing. Even with the damage dealt from Assault, their fame did not move. Eyes here from Selim at long range. He's going to spot out Assault. Oh my God, lovely tags there. Enough to slow them down even further. Yeah, action still on fame, though. That's the presence towards the middle of the map. And Assault trying to help his boy out. I mean, this bomb is clearly leaning towards the A site. So far on defense, LAG have not reacted. Number three and number four, Estrella and Diamond Con slowly need to start getting into the mix because the move on the A-bomb about to happen. As soon as that back door bursts wide open, Fame definitely heard it. Sees a BZ. Oh, no, he moves. And Sim punishes him. Clock ticking, though. Can Assault get in a position quickly? Will Draza be able to keep him back? Estrella at range there. The bomb has been planted. LAG down a man. And Jaws has got the potential cross as well. He's watching his flank for the moment, but you're kicking the door Damn. open any time, but you got to win the first gun fight. Sick just shutting you down. Estriol now flying forward, gets himself one. 30 seconds to go. Faze only a man up. Draws are now on the flank, looking to stop this and end the round right here and now. He's looked left, he's looked right. He's going to get Diamond Con, but it's Simp in the feed as Faze take the lead. Hey, and that's the thing about Atlanta phase, man. You have to play so close to perfect call of duty. When you leave that guy towards the middle of the map, when he's calling out for help, you need to be there so quickly. You saw it from Fame's perspective. He just gets overwhelmed. His spot gets like sniffed out by a BZ, and then he's just dead to right. Again, you're effectively dealing with a, a 2v4 defense on that site. Near impossible to pull off. Atlanta phase at another offensive round. To the back. Up by one. And the search has been wonderfully close so far. Extra bomb in hand now for LAG to fly forward. Simp and Ibizi, though, they have taken that far position in the back side of the hotel now. Ibizi watching the middle of the map. He's going to get a ton of information in. Simp, maybe able to catch a player out. Oh, that's great information. And yet, oh. both the cars are going to explode. The nade coordination on point. LAG, main advantage. They love to see it at the start of this round. Simp's trying to do the wet work there from inside the janitor's closet. Gets himself the kill on Estriel. That's a five spree now. Fame trying to clear out the tank. Oh my god, he's so close. Can he hear that player? Can he sniff him? Can he smell him? It's going to be a gunfight in a moment. There it is. Draw and slides into it. Fame stays alive. Nearly gets a second. He's trying to stay alive as well. Not getting hunted down either. Selim is pushing aggressively through A Street. And well, he pushes aggressively and finds the pick. Meanwhile, Simp, he's got the cruise missile and he's got the bomb underneath him. And Selim <laughs> with the easy reads. Dominant there on the defensive end. It's a classic move from Selim. It's an off angle, staying seemingly out in the middle of the road. It seems to be summing up with Simp for now, but we'll get back to that. In the meantime, a strong round from Atlanta Phase. They took the initiative early on. They took a lot of the middle of the map. And that Simp and an easy duo, they did tremendous damage early on. Yeah, I mean, you're feeling so good about taking down one of the tears at the start with the first blood, and it just does not matter towards the end. Bit of a, a brutal round that we're going to be dealing with, and we saw the conversation taking place on the main stage. There's going to be a quick pause to sort out some sort of issue taking place, but 
A 4-2 lead right now for Atlanta. And again, anytime they're giggling, that is never a good sign. <laughs> no. Well, they're having fun, as uh, I hope you guys are at home as well. And everyone in the venue, guys, thanks for coming out. We miss you. We miss you a lot. You smell good and you look good. And can't wait to see how the rest of this week goes. But in the meantime, we're going to get this technical issue wrapped up. I think Simp was, what, 7-3 and three coming into this round? And he had a cruise missile. And he had a cruise missile. I mean, that... It's a big, big thing. Now, again, we are playing on an older patch here in the CDL. We're going to get towards a newer patch later. But for now, trophies are still very, very much a good thing to have against the Cruise Missile. Uh, quite literally the best thing to have. It stops it entirely. There is no harm, no foul. Cruise Missiles often on this current patch is more for the information that you are able to get. Obviously, seeing everybody on the map at the same time. Never going to shy away from. Assault. Boston! Get your heads out of the gutter. He's got hand warmers in. Come on. It's day one. It's okay. You guys are great. Uh, we might be oh, no, nearly ready. That's what the pause feature looks like, guys. For the players, they just can't move. It's great. Of course, Sally in there, one of the most twisted players in the league chance, enjoying himself that sugar-free monster. I d that's my favorite flavor by far. The white one. I, I was going to say, I don't even know the flavor names. I, I like the orange. <laughs> Me too. Tastes like lightning. Lightning indeed. Draz, newest addition to the Atlanta Phase roster. He has a plan coming into this season. I think they're executing pretty well so far. They've got to be feeling fantastic. As the Optic fans are, they'll be playing the Miami Heretics later on today. First time we get to see those guys on the big stage since what? Black 2019. Ops Black Ops 4. Big stage again. Massive moment for Estriel. He's had a lovely search in his story so far. Five and four in the search to, in the stats department, but. Some highlight plays. Nearly managed to take that 1v2 situation against the BZ. If not shut down their chance, what a moment that would have been in his first series. I mean, that's the thing, though. It is the series where it is going to be a learning experience or just a pure experience through and through. Aye, yeah, yeah. You have the opportunities to pull something off. Always fun, but Astral's first time in front of a crowd. And you always remember your first time. Well, we're almost ready to go, guys. Simps back in the lobby on a six spree. We're waiting for one more member of LAG to join up and then we'll get things going. Chance, anything from the search so far that you've been very impressed by? I mean, FaZe, their attacking rounds have been very, very tight. I, I mean, it's the same thing with Atlanta FaZe. Might they be are, they're good, the Chris. Game, but <laughs> while they're playing, they're having a great time. It is very much the details. You have to be perfect. You cannot make mistakes. Even when you get the first blood on Atlanta, they can still make the big play and pick you apart. It's been the little things in every single round, the difference between when Fame is playing on that middle tank versus when Simp or Ibizi is always able to clutch up. But we do see Fame has made his way back into the lobby. So we do have all eight players now ready to get engaged back on Invasion. Just got to hit that go button. Yeah, we paused the Invasion for now, nearly ready to get things going. It's four to two. Faze with the lead so far. It's first to six here in Search and Destroy. That's Fame fades back into the lobby. We're almost ready. Yeah, and 4-2 is the swing round. LAG want to take full advantage of sort of that stop in momentum. Going down 5-2 is horrific. Being down 4-3, not too bad. So one of the most important rounds you have in Search and Destroy outside of, you know, the round 11. You know, the round, the round 11. Get that gong ready. I'm sure we're going to see plenty of it here at this event. The referees are still on stage, so we're almost ready to get things going. Sim doesn't think so. That head shake was something, but for now, I think the uh, attacking rounds from FaZe have been very, very strong. We've seen different looks. We've seen different angles found. Wonder if LAG can keep things going. Going down 2-0 in a series against Atlanta FaZe, not a good place. If they can tie things up going into that invasion control, that would be ideal. Not even ideal. I mean, you would have to phrase that as an absolute necessity. <laughs> yeah. Players switching teams, too. I wonder if that's Selim going to just stare down the opponent in the middle of the game. He is never a player to shy away from mind games during a match. Well, of course. Well, Selim, one of the players who, for the longest of time, has been using the in-game chat feature to send messages of encouragement, messages of, uh, uh, you know, of just pure chaos to the opponents, offering kisses, all sorts of things. Anything to get in the head of his opponents. There you go. You put it down. Are you happy, Boston? Are you happy? <laughs> Left-handed. Ambidextrous, my guy. We're almost ready to get back into this one. 
<laughs> you guys, oh, are, you guys are great. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Something's up. What's Assault doing? Can we go back to Adam Assault? No, let's not. Let's stay with Atlanta Phase. That's a very bright controller. Sim is holding as well. Rolling slowly through this one, guys. We'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this. In the meantime, Selium has been uh, the Mister of Search and Destroy. He was the man when oh, it came to the oh. hard point. Guys, guys. I wish I could say it's a family show, but it probably isn't. <laughs> Salim has been an absolute demon chance, 1.78. How important is that statistic? For the Joes at home who don't really understand what it's like to play against some of these players, to have stats like that in search is something else. Focus. No, no, no. We're talking, okay. We're talking about search and destroy KD. This is important. Okay. I feel like a substitute teacher, this is so hard. We need order, okay. Diamond Con. No, oh, focus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's playing with it. But, I mean, you know what's crazy? The players have no idea what's going on. The players have no idea. I thought Diamond Con figured it out earlier, but the man of the hour. Well, we're going to get back into this one, folks. I'm happy to talk about Search and Destroy. I could do the thing. That's what they pay me for. Adam, give the, give the people what they want, Adam. We're <laughs> <laughs> going to have a quick look at an ace. Boston, you have delighted already. Wow, it's Thursday. Simp, though. Uh, this was an ace from earlier on in the qualifiers, Charles. I mean, sure. Yeah, Simp, fantastic <laughs> player. Uh, one of the best players of all time. He's probably already in uh, the top 10 and working his way down. Absolutely guns a few players in this moment. I mean, it's the type of play that Adam Assault would celebrate. He might. He might celebrate. Sim certainly did, though. And that was a tough one. Also, I love that we showed that in front of the Boston crowd. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I think we've got a, a very passionate crowd here already, Chance. It's a wonderful sign of things to come for this week. Okay, now show us LAG. Any second now. <laughs> We're a simple crowd here in Boston. It's map number two. We're almost ready to get back into it. That's a veteran player right there, man. Adam Assault, Mr. Consistent. Anytime he's on cam, that man delivers. It's been good to come back. Boston is not disappointed whatsoever. The search is somewhat disappointed, but we're going to get back into it. 4-2 the score when we do return. It's face fans, it's the hype squad in the front row. They make it to nearly every single event. That poor guy that hit the deck today outside the venue. Is he here? I saw that. That was tough. Hey! Hey! <laughs> what is... You animals. That poor guy ate concrete for breakfast. Tough one. These players are going to be in for a treat when they rewatch this on broadcast. Well, I hope they do. Because, like, again, for LAG, you're playing against the best team in the game. It's a learning experience. You go back and comb through the VOD to make sure you learn everything. You guys will cheer for anything. <laughs> You'll actually uh, cheer. Not anything. One specific <laughs> thing. You will cheer. Well, you've got, everyone's got the, their thing. They've all got their thing. Well, good job, Boston. You're doing fantastic so far. Thanks for the patience. We do appreciate this invasion s and uh, Hopefully not too far away. Refs are still on stage. For the folks in the venue that can see that, we can take a look at that. But again, speaking of s and chance. Sir, yeah, search and destroy. We can talk about, we can bring them up. We can talk about whatever. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the most picked maps so far. I mean, again, a Absolutely. small sample size. Oh my God, look at statistics. My favorite thing to see on camera. Invasion, ah. Oh. Yeah, Wait there for we it. go. That's yeah. what we like. We're just checking to see if you guys are paying attention. This will be on the test. Invasion, though, the most picked map in SD so far by the majority of our teams. Skid Row, not getting a lot of love. And I think, uh, no, not so much. I think Invasion might be statistically one of the most balanced maps between uh, defense and offense. It definitely leans towards the defensive side of thing, but close to 50-50, not too shabby. And Terminal and Skid Row with the lowest percentage, uh, those are certainly a little bit more lopsided. Uh, for the defensive team. Uh, but you know who does get a lot of love? Wait, we might be able to uh, fade out because we're nearly ready to get back into the game, boys and girls. This is it. 
take two of our map two on its way. And if LAG win this series, Adam Assault obviously is going to be the player that has to be interviewed. Has to be. And there's one question and one question only that you need to ask him. How did you handle the break in between the maps? We got Call of Duty to the disappointment potentially of the crowd, but to my very excited self. A 4-2 lead currently for Atlanta phase in the game. I think unfortunate for Sim. I don't know if he's going to be carrying that cruise in the reset, but the two round count bump all the same. Yeah, two rounds up our phase. Let's see how things go. Nobody home on the B-bomb site here from LAG, but Fame's going to start the pie. And, and that is exactly what you need from LAG, by the way. That was a hyper-aggressive play, flying through the old P1, or the current P1 on this state, and getting that nice little punch for the first blood. So LAG, instant response. And of course, that is bombed down as well. And the trades do not come through. Estriel delivers again, having himself a fine map to performance. That's a two man advantage right now for LAG. Raza hoping a prayer for that nade. Take some love taps. The nade doesn't land. Diamond Khan manages to dance himself to safety, but you've still got eyes on that B bomb. If he crosses, the fight's on and Draza's in trouble. Yeah, you're getting ripped as well. You're trying to cross. You already know someone's going to be watching it. Fame has that lockdown with an MCW. So try to make the move. You're at least going to get spotted. And meanwhile, down the A Street, selling him just in a battle of his own. The pixel fight on A Street. And Draza right now with the bomb by B, completely by himself. They really want to find some extra kills before they go for the bomb play. Oh. Draza might deliver. Oh, the clock is ticking. He's got a peel diamond con from that concrete wall. He slid in. The opportunity for the plant is here. Selium, what can he do? And in a 4v2, I cannot believe you let this bomb get planted. Atlanta phase the opportunity to clutch is here. It is not over yet. Fame pressing forward. Draza, can he hold him back at bay? Shots out from Selium at range. Trying to keep these players there. Assault makes it now a 1v3. Draza from the back side of the map. Can you get anything? No. LAG take the round. And perfect retakes towards the end. That is round number three for LAG. Still down by one to Atlanta phases four. That is a beautiful round to have off of the reset. I can't even see the hand. What are you cheering for? I just don't want to interrupt the crowd in there. Okay. The score is now four to three. Faye's still leading. <laughs> oh, it's only the first series. This is great. See? Here we go. Faye's on defense. Damn son, that is a lot of pepper on this stake already. Yeah, busy always making his presence known right off the opening salvo. And if you're LAG again, this is a massively important round. This could be the one to tie things up. 2-2 Two -two split again on defense. We've seen the similar setup for Draza and Simp on this B site. LAG did break it down before. Situation's a little bit different now. They are taking things nice and slow. Fame's been the first blood man for LAG in the last few rounds. Can he find another one here? Diamond Con and Co's, they work their way through the apartments. They are not looking for new digs. They're looking for first floods. And they're slowly getting players in position. Estriel making moves. He gets in his spot. Diamond Con bumping up just a little bit. They've absolutely spotted Draza on the tank. You know he slides back. So Draza is going to have the, the massive cross, but Simp is going to be by himself right now on this B site. That is your opportunity if you're LAG. Almost like set positions. You know where these players are. Do you have anything to deal with them? The smokes are there. Draz now making his way forward. Estriel finds his first. Draz has he timed it right? One for Draz. The second Diamond Con on the site. Huge damage. He reached out. But Draz stays alive. 2v2. Here the goes. He school. Selling him into middle of the map. And the damage is done. Fame tagged up and gunned down. Draz out here making the play. And it's map point for FaZe. That two-piece from Draza certainly changed the shape of things. Yeah, no, that is the Dan Ghosty original. They smoke out the cross. You just fly straight through it. I'm not going to say it works every time, but so far it has worked every time. Draza making good use. And that is a way to kill the momentum for LAG. Now 5-3 to three in round count for Atlanta. One round away, they go up 2-0 in the series. My point, here we go. Opening salvo. Nobody home at B just yet for LAG. The nays have been sent. A couple of tacticals as well. BC still has a frag to play with, but now you've got bodies on the B's V bomb site for LAG. 
Approach is now on. Nades are out. The trophies are working overtime. Oh, and that's the smoke gone as well. Those nades just completely killed that push. So the idea that was coming in from Atlanta, not able to make anything happen. And this is an aggressive stack on defense. They are playing for the instant trades. They was staring down that dark cross and Estriel, he is ready to pounce. LAG have all bases covered right now. The question is who falls first in the fight? 50 seconds is a lifetime to go here in the search and destroy. A fresh mag for Estriel. Here we go. And because that smoke just gets killed, though, Atlanta FaZe now have to just go for the reposition. So they're swinging back over towards A. But if you see the players on the minimap for LAG, they're making the read. Draza, will he check the tank? And Fame's here for it. He heard something. First blood, they're in. They've traded out. Onto the bomb site. Here comes a BZ. The nades are there. Diamond Con gives them the life advantage. All down to Selium. All down to Selium. 1v3. And that's the round. Another lifeline for the Gorillas here in the search. And again, just such a good play, making those reads towards the middle of the map. As soon as that smoke goes down, every single nade and stun just starts landing at Atlanta FaZe's feet. You feel the push, and then it's all about the play. You just have to make sure you read the pressure, swing it over towards that A site. They faltered a few rounds previous. Atlanta FaZe took advantage, but perfect this time from LAG. Staying alive. Staying alive on the map. It's 5-4. Here we go once again, once more into Invasion Search and Destroy. The trophies are here, the smokes have landed on B as well, so nobody's home just yet. Diamond Con trying to soften up anyone who may be there, knows the spots they'll be. The tension builds here in the search. Yeah, I think the idea there might be use that early smoke, try to bait out some nades and tacks and make it a little bit easier the later this round goes. A minute still on the clock, plenty of time right now for LAG to work with, but the onus is on them to make this move. Of course, if we're working out in the middle of the map, you have the tears basically just setting up the crossfire. Both AR setting up on the wings for both of the deep lanes. And it's the same play we've seen before. LAG, it is the slow crawl up to this B site. The tried and true. They need this to be perfect. Same route, same approach. They don't set foot on the street. The stun gives at least one of them away. Will that be enough to draw phase in? Estriel now looking to get up, one up on Draza again. Damage dealt, manages to slide through. Draz gets a kill. Draz somehow gets a kill. 3v3. Still though, you gotta get the pressure of the bomb down. Estriel, he's tagged up, doesn't want to make the play just yet, but you're gonna have to start the flood, and the pressure on the flank is existing. Sin versus Fame could be a, a kill that swings the round of BZ. In the meantime, he gets that guy off bomb. Assault has to stay alive here on the bomb site. Fame coming in to reinforce. Final 10 seconds, they've got to get the plant. On the flank, it's Simp. On the flank, he may be able to find it. Chris Lair coming in to save the day. Fame gets the kill. The play's not over yet. 2v2, bomb down. You get out with your life as well, and you get to heal up. Now you just got to read the pressure of BZ and Cell try to work the flank, and Fame picks off the next tear. Sell him now. Can he do what Abizi did so long ago in the search? Fights his way forward, takes control of the bomb site. The final 30 seconds now as the trophy is placed. Will he be able to get it done? Fame, he's given up the high ground. He's gone for it. The damage is there. Fame trying to stay alive. Pros do not fake. The trophy is in play. Fame hasn't checked it. He's not checked it. And that is that. Selium nails the defuse. Atlanta FaZe take the lead two to nothing. Yeah, and welcome to MW3. I don't know if Fame had the experience, but that bomb fades out of your vision. It is so tough to actually see on the site. He thought he had everything covered. Selium is always pixel perfect. That's a stinger for LAG. 2-0 in the series so far for FaZe, and what a performance though for Fame. 5-1 in the latter half of that search but not enough. When it really mattered, he needed a pixel more. He would be able to take that player off the bomb. Selium. He, no one takes a piss quite like Selium. <laughs> no, not at all, man. And again, for Payne, that could have been a, you know, top five play of the week. Add that to the career highlights. Instead, it is literally all for nothing. That window of opportunity back in the series, Selium might have just shut it. That's a tough one. We'll see what happens a little bit later on. Of course, a difficult delay throughout that search and destroy, that 4-2 mark, I think. That we're really pushed, uh, pushed a few of these players mental, maybe uh, a little further on. But again, kudos to LAG for pulling things back in such a great way. Sadly, Chance, I think the story of this team for so long now. I mean, look, they always have the fight in them. Atlanta FaZe, though, is simply built different. And of course, with that 2-0 lead, you go into an invasion control. It can be a defensive shootout. 
I will say though on offense, Simp quite literally has the best stats in the game on this map for offense specifically. So that's gonna be my player to watch. Ooh, keep an eye on him indeed. Well, uh, before we get to that, we are gonna go for a very quick break. Invasion control is not too far away, boys and girls. Go get yourself a beverage, go get yourself something to eat, but don't go too far, because we come back. Map three in this exciting series. This is the CDL. Tune in throughout Major One this weekend to earn awesome in-game content. You can rock the Frostbite blueprint, charms, emblems, calling card, and get XP tokens. Be sure to link your account now to start earning.
The Painted Alabrije bundle is available now in the Call of Duty store. Inspired by the folk art of Oaxaca, this stunning bundle offers colorful, vibrant, and mythical items you gotta check out. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. A quick look at the final moments of that round. FaZe, of course, walking away with a win, but Chance, how the hell do they do it? Well, that's the big question, I'd say, in my mind. I was thinking maybe a graphical setting, the trophy maybe blocking line of sight, but it was that dead body potentially right there that might have just been barely blocking the view for fame to not be able to see the bomb. You get it from his point of view, and again, he's staring exactly where he needs to, but it's just that little body potentially that could have blocked that line of sight. And obviously, you see the reaction hype for the clutch in the momentum dagger for LAG. Got to bounce back. A 2-0 on the main stage. First match of this Boston tournament. For LAG, potentially a long way to go. Invasion controls up next. And for the folks who have played or been in situations like that, it's, it's immensely so frustrating. And again, you are uh, you're rolling the dice somewhat. Do I take the gunfight, lose the gunfight? Where could Cillian be? A massive amount of respect showed to a player like Cillian. We know he's crafty. He's tough and his 1v1s. It's especially devastating because of how hard fame actually did pop off to make that play. Absolute oh, guns insane. Absolutely guns at BZ. Makes the right read. And they got the bomb down with 10 seconds left on the clock. It was a nail-biter play. They get the massive advantage, and it just collapses, but you need the bounce back. Estriel, last time we saw him on this map, or at least in control against LAT, the man popped off. It is your rookie, and obviously, if you're going against the Terrors, you need your SMGs to have a good time, especially on these attacking rounds. If you can sneak one through on Invasion, not necessarily a guaranteed win, but your odds go up massively. Gotta make sure you clutch up on the attack. Atlanta phase will be on offense first, and Got the mage raining out, trying to get those first bloods in. To the surprise of no one, Abizi gets it. Yeah. The odds were not necessarily in the favor of the Los Angeles Gorillas players here on the attack. That's the B zone being captured now. That little sign on the salt screen that says losing. Yes, he's losing that zone. So if you get a capture, the whole thing, you get a full minute on the clock. And you see Atlanta phase, by the way, they're roaming over towards this A zone. Uh -oh. This is where the important action is at. Selium still staying alive, doing a little dance. And he's getting away tonight. Draza gets the next kill in LAG. The B zone's being chalked up. Atlanta want this fast. It was all a ruse shenanigans here in the first round they've moved across map assault fighting forward trades are there beautiful tags from selling a long range that's going to be the a zone gone the tough zone to capture chance i mean that is instantaneous your odds of winning this map just spike if you're atlanta phase getting the a zone captured that is the feat that is the thing that is incredibly difficult and you love to see a team get a stack as well that is perfection from atlanta who have not slowed down next two kills coming their way everyone fully flooding through this b street we're gonna wait towards that next zone. Raza moving so well. Damage still everywhere you go. His teammates are there. Somebody please get that trade. The life count now dwindling for LAG as well. 16 to the 24 of phase. I mean, Assault's still dancing as well, trying to stay alive. And he's done a nice job to try to get his teammates back in the mix. And he forces the team kill. So small little window of opportunity. But you just feel like it's a matter of a time. Sip is roaming in your base. And again, on offense on this map, this man has basically been God. Oh, he's doing it right now. Fame gone. The trade there finally as Estriel pounces into action, but the second segment of B is already gone. A huge amount of work here in the round completed early on. It's Fame's the final stack. That's the first in the bag. I don't know about Kenny Loggins, but if I was a gambling man, I would say that is the fastest round of offense we have seen on this map all year at Atlanta Phase. It quite literally does not get any better. They pause the clock on B immediately. They find a couple kills towards mid, and they set up that triple stack on the A zone so efficiently. Again, you don't see rounds like that often or potentially ever. And right now, that is the only thing to celebrate on the side of LAG. Nice little camera shot is in game. It is nothing but pain. Tough stuff so far. Well, they're on attack now here on Invasion. Let's see how they fare. 2-2 two, two split, 2 towards A, 2 towards B. They kind of take the middle of the map, so you're able to change course quickly depending on where the kills go your way. So we'll see how they assess the situation after the fights go down. And, and I love the look. You're trying to go towards A as quick as you can. This is the only way you have that potential, and they're getting all the kills. Estriel starting off this opening break with three to his name. They haven't set up a stack just yet. Only fame on point. Assault's come to join him. Now it'll take 22 seconds to get this zone. 
How long will it take Draws to get in there? Stun lands, finds nothing but a nade, unfortunately, from Selian, but the capture is still going. Fame is still alive there on the A zone. Estriel holding these players back, a force free from him. Simp now the next man for FaZe to take his luck at the point. But so far, so good from LAG. They are eating nades, though. Yeah, and the nades are just going to keep rolling through. You couldn't quite get that extra trophy in the mix, and that's still a beautiful opening break from LAG. But if you don't get the zone, you still have a long way to go. Personally, though, I just love the A hits off the rip. It makes everybody look looking like clowns when they go to B the entire first stage. <laughs> it's been horrible. It has been tough. Diamond Kong trying to clear the mean streets out. Draza going to be some fine there. It's three all oh, lovely shots, but not enough to take care of Draza. He stays alive for now. That's going to be a big problem on the approach to B for LAG. Yeah, I mean, his gunny has been on point. He has six objective kills already, and we're just midway through this second round. And of course, for LAG, really the only downside, if you get punished over towards A, you can end up in the spawn trap, and that just means you have to take your sweet time to try to get out of it. A kill going their way and maybe still actually leaning towards this A zone. Number eight and number five, not completely out of the picture, but still far away from A. So if LAG get the kills on the flip side of the map, the opportunity's there. Oh, Simps here on the bottom right side of the map as well. Huge work there. The pinch is on. Selim has cleaned out the middle of the street. FaZe are in a wonderful position here. 20 seconds to go. No one anywhere from LAG close enough to get on the point to try to stop that clock. Yeah, you saw Simp just shutting it down as well. Wait a minute. Maybe next man up in line. Fame trying to get away with a big one, but it'd be easy. Just going to force him back down A Street oh, being wow. slammed in Atlanta phase on defense. Looking a little bit too clean. Last ditch effort. Minute. Two kills go their way. Can anybody stop the clock? Assault. Assault last ditch effort not in time. And Atlanta phase go up 2-0 in the control. It was a matter of seconds. Abizi's little dance around the backside. Slowing those players down so well. Doesn't need a kill. Couple of bullets in. I'll take the next fight. Making sure that no one from LAG gets close. Heads up plays like that. You buy your teammates three seconds to run across the map and get in position. That's huge. And honestly, in hindsight, it's kind of incredible that Atlanta FaZe got that A zone that quick just because it's the start of the round. They don't have trophies yet, but somehow they deliver. And it was the lack of trophies or at least them getting broken down that just punished LAG. But Atlanta FaZe back at it again. Straight down his A street. I don't know if they're going to make it to the zone for free, but it looks like they have. Drazit just walked straight oh, into no. it. A clean four down and a triple stack on the A zone. Atlanta FaZe not wasting any time. Atlanta FaZe are stacked on top of each other here in the showers. There's three of them since just on the outside. That zone is going so fast. Squeaky clean opening indeed. Two minutes, 20 on the clock. I mean, this is just brutal. I mean, that's just GG, chalk it up. Oh, it did God. not get better than this. Indraza has not slowed down. 13 and four, pumping up the KD just a little bit, still roaming your base. LAG trying to apply the pressure on defense, but their only hope is to spawn trap for two minutes and Indraza's out and about. You're just expecting him to get some kills. One wave of kills could be it. Draza, ooh, nice work from Assault. Diamond Con keeps the pressure off his team for a moment, but here comes a BZ. The Red FT at hand, at close range. Gestrial didn't stand a chance. And here we go, one step closer to the point. They're about to break it as well. B zone, I mean, it'd be easy. He's tagged up and stunned, but the pressure, you can just feel it right now for LAG. No wiggle room on the map, but two kills able to come their way. Hello. But again, a minute and a half left on the clock. Such a long way to go. Assault is really begging for the fist fight there. Not able to get it. Clock's ticking, sells him, find their kills. This might be enough time to get there on the zone. There we go. Slow and steady capture. The defense still holds though. Faze with plenty of numbers up close. Draza sent him for the kills. Fame, he's doing what he can on the outside. Selium desperately dancing here amongst the rubble as Draza finds two. Yeah, the extra two kills in the back pocket. Selium still just dancing around the zone. You even have pressure from Draza towards the middle of the map. So you got the cutoff kills. You just got the, the slithering right now of Selium around the actual zone. And that is two players from Atlanta Faze on the point looking to get it done here. Saul's well taken care of on the broken side of the apartments. One last hit now from LAG in the series. A two-man stack from Faze. Sell in and out of the point he goes. Three dead, that should be it, that should be Matt, that should be the series. Atlanta phase, 3-0 in the series, 3-0 in control. And that is, without question, the quickest and easiest map of Invasion Control we have seen all year long and might see all year long. That is damn near perfection from Atlanta. Maybe that little bit of a momentum killer in that final round of Search and Destroy set him up for the easy tee off. Nice little 3 0. Draza and Stallion, we'll have a look at the stats in a moment, but both of them, fantastic numbers. A very even spread from the damage across the board there from FaZe, but those boys were the cleanup crew. As FaZe start the tournament 
the way you would expect it with a strong 3-0. And that's a terrifying map of Invasion, too. I'd be interested to see how many teams are going to be willing to square up with Atlanta on that map long term. Because, again, they were two for two perfect on the opening breaks on offense. I mean, that is a map that right now on the all-time list is the most difficult one to get wins on offensive rounds. Atlanta phase make it look easy and pump those numbers up just a little bit more. Damage clean across the board. Draz and Selly might be leading that charge, but Simp not too far behind. It's just those offensive kills, though. Draz and Selly, absolute field bet. You make it, you know, second phase, they do make things look easy there in the offensive rounds, but the execution is so hard. You put one player over towards that B zone, you get one segment, you draw those defenders for a moment, they run across that map. You clean up the A zone. It's little moments like that, decisions like that, that certainly separate them for the rest of the teams. An important fun fact, I always like to bring the hardest hitting information. Uh, Draza spelled backwards is Hazard. Is Hazard. Well, we've almost got him ready to go. Hazard, AKA Draza, the Alaskan assassin is on stage. We're almost ready to get him over there. But man alive. Well, Boston, you've all been brilliant so far. It's a wonderful way to start the tournament. It's a very dirty way to start the tournament with a 3-0. And the crowd, oh, you lot, you're in trouble as well. Well, we're going to go to the stage now. Guy Blaze, he's got Draza. Thank you for the awesome cast. Thank you for the awesome cast, Chance and Miles. Boston, give it up for Draza and Atlanta Faze as they get that first one on the board. And, man, you, you look fantastic on the stage there, Draza, okay? How does it feel to be back on land and then playing with this squad? Yeah, I mean, it's been six months. You know, we've all been waiting for it. It's been a long break, so I'm ex super excited to be back in a 3-0 like that, first match on, and, you know, you got to love it. And playing with a team like this, they give me full confidence, and I feel like we can do anything. So I'm super excited to, you know, finish out the tournament, and we play Saturday, so I'm fucking hyped. Exactly. Hey, I'm hyped to have you back yes, on the sir. stage. Yes, hyped to have Land kicked off yet yep. again. And now we got all these awesome face fans in the crowd, and we got a bunch at home. This is just the first game, and we got many more to go. Yep. What do you want to tell them? Phase the fuck up. Let's go. Come on. Let's Easy go, as everybody. Fuck. Let's go. Easy AF. That's going to do it for me and Draws on the stage. Pucky, take us away. Thank you. I had a feeling that interview was wrapping pretty quickly. <laughs> Shout out to Draza. The lucky hickey is paying off again. A hot oh three. Oh, for the phase crew. What a performance. Let's start there with the control because normally we see this go into a round five. Defense is always clutching up. Looks like the FaZe boys caught LAG off guard tonight. That was just way too much for them to handle. You talk about two different attacking rounds where you're applying all the pressure over towards A and all the kills go in your favor. They cannot get back into the point. And then when you're capturing that A point first, you leave it all up to B, all it takes is one set of kills and you basically call game. Atlanta basically played just flawless cop right there. Ali, you were oohing and on in the green room watching this FaZe team. What were you seeing from this number one seed? I mean, it was just clean throughout this entirety of this series. I mean, especially that map number three. I mean, in a 3-0 fashion, if Atlanta was struggling anywhere. It was in that control. What did yep. we see in that first round? The kill feed was all Atlanta phase and the decision making, they were all on the same page. Instantly, they got that wipe and they were like, screw B. You saw two players rotate straight over to the A side and it was just one of the most fastest offensive rounds I think we've seen in a minute. Great stuff in game number three. It started with hardpoint dominance. The search and destroy was the only game that was really close. Nameless, what happened in that search and should FaZe fans be worried? I mean, they shouldn't be too worried. Honestly, LG played the search pretty good. I mean, they had a couple of massive opportunities. I mean, you think about some of their offensive pushes, they were doing great. You know, you're getting first bloods over at the cafe side of things, and then you don't capitalize on that. They didn't push together. They end up losing that round with that first blood. And then the very end, like, their setup was terrible. They had a guy back at the tractor, and then Fame ran back to Broken to sort of watch the flank, but he should have been looking over him, right? They can seamlessly work together. Communication was off, and then he loses that tragic 1v1 to sell him. So opportunity there, but in the respawns, there was, they were just no match for Atlanta phase. Hit me with it, Jay. What do you got? I was just like fame. I know that he lost that 1v1 towards the very end, but it was a 3v2. He did win a world star yeah, gunfight versus yeah. Simp to make it a 2v2, and then he finds that kill onto a BZ. It's just the only way you can lose that round is if you allow him to defuse the bomb. You have to check it. With only 15 seconds left, I know you threw a little shoulder, but the bomb's not there. At least yeah. throw yourself out of there and go for that challenge. You're not going to beat Atlanta unless those little things are yes. perfect. Yes. And even after that, like he had that opportunity, the setup had to be better. You need to be playing together. They're yeah. tighter, playing for the trade. But we'll break it down before their next matchup. I'm told we're going to get that clip for you. Until then, if you want to find out when LAG is playing, make sure you sync your calendar, right, Ali? All yes. you got to do is scan the QR code, match your calendar up with your Gmail, your Apple, your Outlook, no matter where you're at, we got you. Yeah, you can either scan the QR code or go to calldutyleague.com at that schedule. If you're like me and your memory is failing you, make sure you sign up for this and make sure you know when all your favorite teams are playing and who.
And of course, you get that squad up calling card. Who doesn't want another calling card? <laughs> Scan the QR code now, because we're going to break. When we come back, I got match number two featuring the world champions, New York Subliners take on Minnesota Rocker after this.
Welcome back in. It's opening day here, the first major of the 2024 season, and already our number one seed has powered into the second round of the winner's bracket. But now we're gearing up for match number two, and it features the world champion subliners taking on Minnesota Rocker, who retooled their roster in between seasons. They started off rough, but they have won three straight coming into today. Let's start with the Rocker team. Chris Bucket alongside Chance, Alley Cat, and Nameless. And I want to start with you, Chance. Walk me through this roster. What do you love about watching? this team I, I love that we can actually see the progress that these guys are making right the jokes are always about sort of the the school of a betty the soft start that they had was not ideal but they really started to hit their groove and they're playing much better call of duty awakening accuracy at the start of the year had some of the worst stats in the league there has been stark improvements on that roster from those two players vivid's out here breaking kill records in s and d and lynn's right now potentially the star candidate for rookie of the year it looks like the leash has been taken off of lynn's at least the man has not been able to be put in a cage what has he done differently in the last three series in your mind Alec? it's maybe not so much being different maybe he's feeling a bit more comfortable but it's just the consistency for Lynch right now I, that's a lot of pressure as well right being the rookie on a team that is struggling it's a hard situation to be put into and to be as consistent as he is I'm really excited to see what he does for his first time on main stage for your monster energy pregame here are the keys to victory if you are Minnesota rocker, pulling off the upset is never easy, especially against world champs, Nameless. Yeah, I mean, uh, for Minnesota rocker, I actually don't hate the series for them whatsoever in the way that they match up in the hardpoint maps, and we'll get to the control in a bit, but for the Monster Energy pregame, they're six and one in hardpoint map one, so definitely have an advantage there, but they're 0 and five in map fours. Oh. Maybe that's how the veto process goes, but that's definitely weird head into a series. And then Swiss cheese S&D defense. They allow plants 52.5% of the time. That just cannot happen. 19% retake, so clearly when that bomb goes down, the communication is not there to it's be able chalked. to retake. It is chalked, right? So for Minnesota, I expect that to be better today. But like I said, man, the last three series, nine and two map count, you can't scoff at it. They have improved dramatically in a lot due to the man on your screen, particularly in the search and destroy. They have shown a lot of strength in search recently and some ice in their veins in the game five. On the other side, subliners. They were flawless in the World Championship to end MW2. They come into MW3 with a Game 5. After that, win over Optic. Things were up and down. Teams like LAG took them to a Game 5, but they never looked like they were the underdogs. Everyone always considering this to be the stronger team in the fight. I mean, you know, they had somewhat of a uh, late start to the year as well. So I know early on, they were very much a team that was aware there is progress to be made. And even still, there's some soft spots like Hydra and SMD has not currently hit form. His first bloods right. right now have been atrocious, but even with a couple pain points on the roster, overall, they've still been spectacular. Again, Hydra has been poor in the first bloods, and they still <laughs> might be the best search and destroy team in the game because Kismet might be the first blood reaper at the moment, and their hard point is like still strong. So a little bit of wiggle room they need in the respawns, but it's a team world champions. You expect them to deliver. Yeah, this is a little bit of an echo of how we were touching on Atlanta phase earlier, is there's not that many weak points when it comes to New York subliers. If you want to talk about one, it does have to be the control, but they really don't need it when they have the CDL best of 9-1 and one in search and destroy, and even their hard point looks strong. So it's a house of cards, 9-1 in SD, 9 and 10 of respawns again. That's mostly because they've been struggling in control. But the thing for New York right now is they have a very strong game five. They're 3 and 0. And Minnesota Rocker doesn't 3 0 teams even when they win that map number one. So should this series go the distance, it just keeps getting worse for the Minnesota Rocker and keeps getting better for the New York Subliners. Nameless, I'm a little bit bummed that Study isn't here to argue with you because Study loves his New York team as a New York City boy. As a New Yorker as well, I think Subliners have the edge here. But you were telling us you think Minnesota. Minnesota has a chance. Yeah, I think they have a great chance in the series. I mean, look, like when you look at the last, you know, series spread, they got 3 out on the high rise control. That ain't in the series. And it also makes it look like New York's a great control team. They are not. They have not been good at that game mode. And we have Karachi versus Minnesota, who are one of the better teams on that map. You also talk about this team in Search and Destroy, like yes, New York has been fantastic in that game mode, but Minnesota has made great strides of improvement there. And when you talk about the hard point, New York are seven to five in that game mode. They've had trouble with breaking and then also almost last in the league in points off of the break. And we're going into two maps. Chris that Minnesota have been fantastic at so I think that this is a big opportunity for Minnesota with the Minnesota. maps are in Ali do you agree is this a 2-0 start potentially for Minnesota I don't know so much about a 2-0 start but I will say both of these teams have very deep map pools obviously have to give the edge to the New York sub Lions, giving it to our second team overall I think my biggest pain point is that Karachi control is going to be the swing mode for me when it comes to New York sub they've been struggling on their non
non-traded kills when it comes to control. They've been very much going out and dying and then ending out on lives and just getting outslayed. Chance, if you're looking at two individuals for each team, What's the 1v1 we need to look at? Uh, Sid versus Awakening, I do not have to think about it because like Awakening oh. this year has just been like Awakening, that's it. He hasn't been big wake just yet, has not evolved to gig awake no along giga. those yep. lines. So he's the player that has to step it up. I think like amongst the community, he might be the player that everyone is dialed in on to pay attention to his performance yep. because this year there's a few key differences in the GA category that have made some changes. Awakening might be a player that has suffered. And of course, Sib on the flip side, he has been a shooter this year. Do you mean he needs sound to know where the enemies are coming from? I, I would say that might be something that has been helpful, Listen, man, but now we're that. back I on land. I talked to Awakening yesterday. He said, <laughs> man, they're just in my head a little bit. I'm about to fry this weekend. So I think Awake comes out. I mean, they've been playing well without him even going off, right? So yeah. it's, a, it's a team aspect thing as well. But if he starts to play like the Wake that we know, this is a completely different animal. Time yes. to shut up Reddit Awakening. We'll find out, can he hang with the ARs of the subliners? Predictions, did you get your pick them in online? Well, we got them in right here. I'm going first, and you know I'm taking New York. I, yeah, I'm doing the exact same world champions. You got to pick New York. <laughs> this, might be a, this might be a full yellow desk here. I'm going with the New York subliners. Yeah, I'm going with New York. But I think it's going to go a distance. No, it's not. You're going on to game it's five. Not. I think it goes a distance, yeah. Game four, Max. Game four, Max. I'm going 3-0. Chat, let us Ooh, know how you have I'm this bad, one man. playing out as chat makes their picks. It's time to get this party started. In fact, the players need about one more minute. So, Nameless, let's talk about the weaknesses of the subliners. You're 6 and one Mm. You've gone to multiple game fives. You've gone deep in games. If you watched their most recent YouTube video, the subliners relied on Kismet to bring them back into a matchup. Where do they find themselves down? Yeah, I mean, it's the control. You know, we touched on it a little bit, but they're neither good at attacking or defending in control. High Rise has been a map that they've been particularly decent at, but it's just going to get ripped out of every series in the veto process. Uh, also, in Hardpoint, like, they're 7-5 and five in that game mode, but they have two maps that they just have not been able to win, so they have an automatic veto. You can't play Terminal, and when you look at it as well, it's like sub base is a map they're own one on. Who knows if they're willing to let that get through in a series as well? So, for New York, they have not looked as strong as Toronto, when you talk about them coming into this event, they have not looked as strong as Atlanta phase. So they are a contender, but they have some things that they need to work on. And what do you I'd see say, chance? well, control is like a pain point for them as well. They're one of two teams in the league right now that have more control offensive wins by kills versus the actual objective. Yeah. And the last yes. time we saw them play on high rise, they were so focused on kills that they got all of them and lost the map. Sid dropped 44 for the L. So yeah. I think the objective focus, if it hasn't kicked into gear for these guys, again, might be a small little thing that cost them in the end. I think you are right on the same wavelength as our stats guy because he said you got to talk about Sib. Look at yes. the numbers. Let's take a look at his numbers after game number one, because I'm told the players are ready. Let's send it to the stage with Guy Blaze. Thank you so much, Pucket. I'm ready to continue to blaze on through this open bracket, through this upper bracket, as we got our next team ready to come to the stage, looking to start off hot, but they need to stay cool and calm in this series. Get ready, everybody, because here comes Minnesota. Push on up. You have three players on the spawn. Maybe a chance here. Accuracy. The back. Linz is ripping Boston apart. Boston to close this lead. And Linz is going to just continue to push space for this Awoba Bob's team. Wow. Oh! Maybe it comes straight through as well. Awakening versus the world, and he's coming up with a dub. And if you can transition this to New Hill, Awakening is trying to put in. Oh! Slashes up there. Boston, get loud for the Minnesota Rocker. Make some noise for Lins. The Iceman accuracy. Big week. And lastly, in full color is vivid. Make some noise for Minnesota Rocker. Minnesota had the battle to make it into the winner's bracket. And one guy that turned up for them the last couple of weeks has been Linz from across the pond in France. He has watched Hydra lay out the blueprint, but now he has to take over and dominate. We'll see if Minnesota Rocket can get it done. They're on a hot streak, but let's bring out their opposition, Blaze. All right, it's time for it, Nameless. We'll see if they can continue that hot streak. 
But I'm happy to announce for the first time on land, get ready because here comes your 2023 World Champions. Let's go. Blaze, thanks so much. Yeah, shifts with my pro player duo study here, hey, my bud. man. How, How you doing, man? I'm feeling good? good, man. You know, it's our first cast on land this year. I'm excited to get into it because we got a banger on our hands. Going to be a good one. Obviously, that set it up perfectly. Minnesota riding on a hot streak right now. Since the break, three straight series wins. We've actually been a part of all the calls, and they've looked particularly great across almost every single game mode, but I think all of our focus stays with map number one here in this series. Yeah, because what? They're 6-1 in opening hard points, 0-5 in game four. So if you're on Minnesota, you got to stick to the recipe that's been working. you got to come out, and you got to beat New York in map number one. And in this matchup that they had previously, they got it done on the same exact map, 250 to 203 or something like that. So if you are Minnesota, you just got to come out swinging early in this map. One. Have to have it. On the other side, though, New York, even though they have had a couple of respawn woes, they have been great, in particular on invasion. First in rotation percentage, first in hold percentage. Could you ask for anything more when it comes to a map like Invasion Hardpoint? Especially point? like Invasion, bro. We're talking <laughs> about real. the P2 to P3 chain. We know how that crucial that can be if you're continuously spawning towards back palace. And then if you get P4, which is the treehouse hill going into palace at P5, you hold that back side, you're basically going to blow this game wide open. So both of these guys are great when it comes to rotations. Just New York are way better in their hold percentage. So that's going to be the game changer. And I feel like just generally speaking, looking at how the map vetoes played out with the series that we have in front of us, New York just has a wider berth of maps oh, that yeah. they can throw in and be successful. At. Whereas Minnesota has been, I don't want to say predictable in where their last three wins have been, but you definitely look at the map one hard point and then can they get it done on control because just a kind of marinating point, it's going to be whose attack is better versus whose defense is better, especially in Karachi because New York's attack has been great, but Minnesota's defense has been even better. And the biggest thing that for both of these squads is that New York started off the season 5-0. So Big when you time. start off 5-0, yep. you basically guarantee yourself a winner's bracket spot. So those last couple of matches, you can start working on some maps that you probably haven't played. For Minnesota, they started 0-4. So they have to make sure they play all their best maps to at least earn a chance at winners bracket and do it just that to get in this position here. Well, the progress has been good for Minnesota, but you're going up and squaring off against the champs from last year's title. To be fair, though, New York have had a couple of moments in their last two series where maybe the crown isn't sitting as firmly on their heads as you would assume. But Sib is going to be a problem. Put it up on the desk. Sib versus Awakening is one of the highlight matchups that we're looking forward to. We got Minnesota on a hot streak, but the reigning champs taking the stage for the first time. New York versus Minnesota. Let's get it on. Here we go, into the early P1, right into the cafe. I'm just going to be the player to make sure no one tries to slip on by. You don't want to flip these spawns going in towards the next hill. All out mix facts in through the middle of the map. 15 seconds already down, and now it's time for Hydra to strike. Just rolling around DVD. You're going to see him a lot in that position. That first couple of gunfights looking good as the Bulldog takes down two in New York. Find the first 20 seconds for free, and all oh, the kills outside of the hard point looking even better. Kismet now taking a little bit of an extra route just to create some extra space, but Rocker starting to shoot back, looking for their break. 
With only 25 seconds left, Rocker, no. But the next hill is going to be at P2. We want to keep this side of the map and trap New York towards the back side of Palace. And Vivian and Linz, they open up with two kills. So this final 20 is potentially going to be theirs. Just have to deal with Hydra. Already a great job. Now you're forcing the subliners off that rotation. Kismet's going to be the Bulldog. Already in a position. But you also now have Hydra on a repin. So they're still going to contest this yeah. and try to flip these spawns. Just winning the war on both fronts right now. Hit from Minnesota coming from the front. Just has accuracy and awakening waiting for this play over through Tractor. And one player will spawn over towards Palace, so Rocker can reinforce this really quickly. New York not ready for it, and hey, that first time percentage hold and not gonna go well here for New York as Minnesota get the early break. That's great work right there from Minnesota to win those trades at the next hill. You get those close spawns towards the back Palace, so you're able to reinforce immediately. But now you just have to hold strong, because if you go four dead here, you start swinging towards back Palace, that chain to the bathroom can make something shake for New York subliners. The trades back and forth, only 30 ah. seconds left. Minnesota still holding. Beautiful stuff here from Rocker. Oh, oh, oh. Wake's on now five in a row. So, yeah, maybe Ant got the good intel. Looking like Big Wake to start. Doubling up nearly on the points. And Minnesota already putting a little bit of a stretch over towards New. And there's a couple players from the subliners who are spawning over towards Back Palace. So if you are Minnesota, let's get a pedal to it. Let's start being a little bit more quick because you have the advantage off the rotation. But Hydra still being a nuisance around DVD. He does take down one. Accuracy there for the trade. But now it's only on Sky in this position. Can he stay alive long enough for his teammates to get back to him? And this is the big thing. Minnesota spawns will be in the north side of the map, so there is a chance for them to try to reinforce this through gas, but New York are set up perfectly for it, except for they don't track accuracy at all, but oh, doesn't expect the second player to be there, so New York will substantiate their hold with numbers. Minnesota quickly looking to form another break attempt. And they're right through middle of the map as well. Like, Skies, what are we looking at? I know we're watching back deep gas, but they're just running for free at your teammate in the hill. And that eventually leads to the break. Big one-on-one -on -one gunfight from Linz. The trade does come in, but finally, Scott's going to maneuver his way closer towards the back from Hill because with only 30 seconds left, we have to start thinking about that rotation, and New York are a step ahead now. That Minnesota map one magic, brother. They're looking real clean with it thus far through three hills. 20 seconds, looking like it's going to be conceded as Kismet's taken down. So the subliners on rotation, but met by awakening. So again, Minnesota kind of doing the exact same thing that the subliners are trying to do tempo-wise to start this map. And it's already good time. You're gonna find yourself up by almost 50 points going into the next hill. And if you can win these trades, even better. But awakening with the team, Nate, it's not gonna allow his team in and Lynn to get into that hard point early. So the subliners are in the preferred side when you talk about this hill. Because when you get P4, you just want to contest this down to the very end. It's a very difficult hill to break, but you also want to focus on maintaining that palace side. When you're finding all the kills, that could potentially work out. You just don't want to flip them to the opposite side. Only player that may sneak through here is Wake. A couple shots come through. Now the hunt is on. Wakening for the first thing. Oh, 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 oh. Wakening's going to take down two. That takes Kismet out of the hard point. And the follow-up eliminations. Oh, they're perfect for Rocker. How about Minnesota? Another break attempt comes through against the team's best holding percentage on this map. And this is where the score can just get blown out of the water. Minnesota are gaining this remaining time over at P4. But they have two players already set up in towards Palace. Subliners know we have to commit for this 20 seconds because it's super, super. Super difficult to break into this pallet HP. You just cannot, you can't scan. No one chow from the hill. Everyone just watch crosses and Minnesota should find himself up by 100 points at the end of this one. Not a lot of ground to work with here for the subliners trying to cut across towards that palace street. Minnesota setting the thin defensive line right across the wall. How does it hit develop for subliners? Looking to maybe 2-2 two, two split this. Two from the top, two from the bottom, but no one's able to see anything. Accuracy is just playing whack-a-mole over the top of the palace wall. Awakening does get taken down with a pistol. Follow-up from Accuracy, good. And Rocker still holding for now. Rocker still holding. Just have to win these next sets of fights, and at least they're trading efficiently. The last two players are going to be in towards the point. Awakening, when he drops, he gets a, client, a clean pin spawn. He finds that final kill, so it's still Minnesota Rocker holding on. New York have not been able to get close. Finally, Skies does, but he falls. Minnesota not making any mistakes right now. now. I know we pointed out to the Sib versus Awakening conversation. How about the Skies to Awakening conversation? 12 and 6 for Wake, only 3 and 9 for Skies, who's been the KD leader for New York. Yeah, the Skies has just been a takeover player for the Subliners roster. Right now, having a slow start, but we have the ability to get back into this game. Rocker currently finds himself by almost up 100 points. Accuracy making stuff happen. Now we go to the reset. And now with Rocker in firm control on rotation, prime time to see how the comms are sounded for the Minnesota Rocker. Yo, his game crashed, bro. Yeah, my game crashed, bro. No, 
way, man. Holy. Well, we heard it in the comms talking a game crash. And that's on the Minnesota side oh. after what looked to be, I mean, again, a possible runaway situation. That's tough, man. That is tough. You find yourself up by 100 points, don't know what happened on the back end, but obviously a game crash. We heard it in the listening from Big Wake. That's a momentum killer right Dude, there, Alan. Big time. I mean, we're talking a 100-point game. And not that the P2 rotation was underway yet, but Minnesota were starting to make some moves toward after a scrappy fight over the whole time. I, it's, that is huge, especially considering that we continue to talk about this rocker team and map number one have always been so good. And now all of a sudden you kind of think, well, hopefully the you know, air in the lungs hasn't been completely vacuumed. And they just, they were slamming. They were slamming in that map number one. I thought New York, they were going to set themselves up for some success. You're talking about the P4 to P5. They put too many bodies over to, towards the treehouse side. So when they lose those gunfights, now you start turning towards gas. Minnesota were just doing everything a step ahead. We're talking about flipping spawns, yeah. trading efficiently, awakening started off fantastic in this game. And now, unfortunately, the game crashed. And now, what we're getting in our ears is a full replay. Ooh. That's tough. Yeah. I think the thing is, and you point to a very, very good section of this map. It's not just the fact that Minnesota's been good at map one. It's the fact that New York on this map have been great in rotating, yeah. great in holding. And yeah. Minnesota have countered that completely, a lot of it by way of the ARs, which when we were looking at these guys online, that's where the vulnerabilities oh, have yeah. been. Lens and Vivid have been great. Awakening, accuracy, moments, but they haven't looked this good together in a respawn of what feels like a while. And when I heard Accuracy talk about his roster after the Christmas break, that's when they all started to really hine into the game plan that they wanted to have as a sure. roster. We, we talk about the series they have versus Carolina, clean 3-0. The series versus LAG, clean 3-0. And those are like some of the bottom teams that we have. So I sure. wasn't really know what to expect out of Minnesota. But when you beat a team like Seattle, way they did all the way in the game five, that showed some serious ice, man. They clutched up in the control. They won the game one hard point, And then they also made massive plays in that game five. So right now, Minnesota, they're on the upward trend. And I feel like for the subliners, based off of what we just saw, a sample of that map number one, yeah. New York need to wake up. A little bit of a slow start without question, which is, again, very peculiar peculiar considering how good New York have been on this particular respawn. Now, the thing about this series is it doesn't really get easy at any given moment in no. time when it comes to how the maps were selected. In particular, a lot of our focus will be to, if this does go stretch to five, New York is still so good on search and destroy. Oh, yeah. So the map two, map five, that is still a huge focus for what this Minnesota team is going to bring, not just for this match, but for the event overall, in my mind. Yeah, without question, man. Map number two, though, like if we were to get into it and that game one was to finish the way that it was, sure. all momentum would have been on Minnesota. Side. We Absolutely. watched Reese Vivid last week break the SD kill record. 3,500 damage. It's not like they don't know what's going on in Search and Destroy. And that map two is also going to be Karachi, where we watched them beat Seattle all the way in the game five yeah. due to what the SMGs were able to do. So I just think if you are Minnesota, we got to shake that one off because we got to keep that same momentum that we just had. Big time. And I think in particular, it's not just getting yourself back in. You have to trust that what you brought to the table, the yeah. sport, is going to be there again. Not having a second doubt in any regard because you look at the hard point metrics. The biggest thing, again, we look at the six and six. We have to say it one more time. We'll beat the dead horse here. Six of those wins have been in map number one. Yeah. So 0 and 5 in map fours have not been particularly great for Minnesota. But we were kind of talking about it a little bit. Like we told Minnesota this and they were like, wait, we haven't won a map four. Yeah. Yeah, like they yeah. didn't even know. Accuracy <laughs> didn't even believe it. He was like, wait, is he actually serious? They said that on the broadcast? Like, yeah, bro, I got them stats for you, bro. You can go back and check. But once he figured that out, he said, nah, man, the game plan, I don't know what we're doing, but we got to win some game Big four. Time. So hopefully they were able to turn it around at this event. All right. Well, looks like everything is starting to load right back up again. So reset it. Perfectly clean slate. <laughs> Good news for New York, considering the start. But oh, for yeah. Minnesota, can they essentially reprise exactly what they did to start through this first set of hills? And I think if I'm Skies, I'm taking a breath of fresh air. You have but to. He did not have the best start to that map, number one, but he has the ability to redeem himself here on the replay. Back into the Invasion HP we go. New York starting off on the preferred side. Minnesota, can they keep that fire underneath? Here we go again this time. Accuracy wins starting thing off with the first couple of kills. This is already opposite of what we saw last time where the subliners came out of the break off looking polished, but Awakening has not slowed down at all. He put five minutes into this guy's back pocket. He's saying, I'm fine with it. Let's get this thing going. Uh, but the only thing that's a little bit scary now and different is that the subliners are instantly able to flip those spawns over towards Mannequin. So they're on the preferred side to hold down this cafe. Hill Sip cut down street. Lens gets cut down as well by Skies. And now with only 25 seconds left, you're going to force Minnesota to once again try to hold P2 from Palace side with New York holding 
every single second so far in this V1. Nice shots from Linz over the middle of the map. Wanted Sib over the top of the tank. Will not be allowed an opportunity as Sib will double up, and that will be enough for New York to start putting a bit of a threat on rotation while soaking up this scrap. Rocker will still have the preferred setup to start. Most of it starting with Awakening here, frontside tree. Yeah, Awakening's in a crucial position right here. Get some info. Players are starting to be aggressive up towards the broken side, but just want to play his life as long as he can. You have the subliner so sending two players up through the courtyard. You usually don't see flanks coming in on this hill, but Kismet, he's going to put himself into the position to take down Linz. Even though they're still spawning in the back, Minnesota still holding from the front. Big weight came to play today. Dude, it's like the online phase never had happened. He is challenging everything, and with some confidence, as Sib is the next one in line, lots of damage comes through, but Kismet saves the day. Trade comes out, Rocker still holding on to the hard point, but look at Hydra around the back through Ice Cream. Only player here for New York, he would have to do it himself, and he does a double from behind. Behind, and that'll be enough for New York to at least contest the hard point. That's not a good play right there from Hydra. We're talking about 30 seconds left on this P2 HP. You go for the flank, and now all of your teammates are spawning alongside you over towards the Palace side. So you basically gift this Minnesota Rocker free rotation over towards bathroom. But as I say that, subliners, they get a couple kills. Now it's only falls into the hands of Linz. He's just trying to stay alive as long as he can to his teammates to reinforce. Good finesse at this point. One okay. Right the skies. Perfect. And that'll be enough for Rocker to now own numbers on rotation with help from Vivid through Mid Street. So, like you had already kind of compiled together, subliners taking a lot of extra time to get through mid map, and that's enough for Rocker to reclaim the lead. And now they're just going to take their time. See Kismet working his way slowly but surely up through the mannequin side. They know that at least two players from Minnesota are spawning out, so they're just trying to win these trades in towards the hill. They start off with at least two. Last play, they got to take care of this Vivid. He's playing his life as much as he can, but he eventually gets cut down. And already, subliners find the break over towards the bathroom side. And you already have Hydra off the rotation. Super annoying play from Sib just to stay front courtyard like that forever. So now Rocker going to concede the back 30, make the rotation up through street over towards Treehouse side. Awakening be the first one here. Accuracy right there with him. This is the tempo oh, that we had not seen from Rocker before. And Awakening puts Skies down over through DVD Alley. Trophy will get set up and Rocker will win rotation. And now Rocker are fully set up to get themselves back into this game and potentially chain it over towards that Palace Hill again. So Subline is currently up by 30 points. This Treehouse Hill is not easy to break. Subline is just trying to hit a route. You see what Skies is currently trying to do. Just flip those spawns because it was a full 60 hole before the replay started for Minnesota Rocker. Their subliners, we got to at least be on the right side of the map. A couple of kills come through for the subliners. A chance to hit from the front while also manipulate the spawns with Skies already setting himself up for new at 42 seconds to play. Little finesse over the old time, though, as Linz tries to lock down Kiss, but not quite able to find him in time. Hydra now to reinforce for this 2v1 break attempt. And Skies is going to be in a 1v1 with accuracy at new. So once again, the war is being fought on two fronts. New York only able to contest the time at old. Still waiting for this 1v1 to develop. Man, Skies versus Accuracy is such a crucial kill. If Accuracy is able to pick up this one, Minnesota will get a full 60 over towards the Palace. Basically a tie game, but now it's all on Skies. Now three players from Minnesota in position to try to locate where he is. But that last play swung all the way across the map. So Skies gets one, but now his teammates are here to make something happen. Game of Wero's Waldo. Can you find the rest of the remaining Rocker members nearby? Kismet, the one on the hunt. Dead Silence out. Oh, 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 oh. by Awakening. Now Hydra trying to follow up. Able to confirm at least one trade, but looking for the second. Awakening still in position. Vivid looking to assist. 2v2 for the time. New York in for now. And with just Vivid left to find Hydra right behind him. Little ring around the road. See someone <laughs> find each other. Vivid Finally. Smiling. But eventually the subliners collect the kill and with that also the hard point. And now this 40 seconds look like it's going to be locked up for New York. Way to just play it patient, find all the kills that you needed to. To influence those spawns for Minnesota all the way across the map. But they start off with the initial two kills. They're going to probably put more pressure on this hill. You don't want to give up this full 40 seconds to the subliners. And as they're doing that, they're getting cut down off of pinches. Kismet and Sip combined for two. Subliners are going to find themselves up by about 45 points going into the second rotation of the hill. And even though Awakening has had a good reset, still 12 and 8, you've talked about it. Sky is already performing at a much more realistic level than what we saw for the online phase. Just 9 and 9 to this point. Going over towards P1 once they get Skies. First one here. Finessing, not quite able to take down Linz. Trades are good, and with that, Rocker will open up the hill. Yeah, Rocker started off with this initial time in towards the P1. Such a close back and forth game that we have on our hands, but gets mixy around this cafe. Linz starts it off with two. Linz finds three. Eventually does get shut down on that cruise missile streak. 
not going to be able to earn that. But Minnesota slowly climbing their way back into this game. Only 40 seconds left on P1. Great angle from Sim. Also making sure no one rotates over towards the flank. Lin's there to meet him. Awakening right behind. So Rocker once again, favorable in the kill feed. But they do get pushed out of the hard point. Just down to wait. Can he once again do it all himself? On the cross, able to find Skies and says, no need to take this challenge. Let's get some extra time and bring this game back to level terms. They're going to be able to take the lead as well because already subliners are not on the preferred side. So you want to challenge the cafe as much as you can so you can try to flip these spawns. And the Skies in his position already rotated over towards Broken. You now have to get past that first line of defense. Awakening trying to sniff him out. We're going to have to jump up, but Lin's with the assistance. So Minnesota already in the advantage. They can grow the lead right now. Kismet by himself. Absolutely nobody nearby, although help is on the way. Just not going to get here in time. Construction opens up. Awakening again on another spree. This time at three. Tallied, but does get taken down. New York all fighting from the backside of this hard point. 50-50 fights over the top of the tank. And accuracy letting them have it. Can't quite get the trophy system down. So everything stays neutral. We're still in an eight-point game. Yeah, and if you're Minnesota, it's good to just keep them in this trap. You're not really fighting for this time because you know that bathroom hill, you will continuously spawn them over towards the backside of Palace if you're just continuously winning these gunfights. But trades are continuing to go back and forth. So a whole lot of continuing right there. And there's only 25 seconds left on this P2. The pistol comes out not good enough to get the job done. But I'm pretty sure there's only been like five seconds taken from this hill. Dude, the game clock is winning this hard point right now. Finally, Accuracy will jump in for the scrap. New York spawning over towards Palace are trying to cut over through courtyard side, but Vivid is right in place and uh -oh. absolutely tearing them apart. Accuracy right there alongside, so Rocker control the tempo once again on rotation, which is not something New York is familiar to feeling. And now New York are forced to break, and one of the most unbreakable hills in this bathroom because you have to cross right in front of these lines of sights. And all of it, if you're Minnesota, just simply hold down this street side, have a player contest uh -oh. in towards the cafe, but they're losing his initial gunfights. It all falls into the hands of Vivid and Awakening. Vivid drops. Now, what, what can Big Wake get done? Rocker are completely outside of the hard point. Awakening just finessing as much as he can. Okay, oh. and Big Wake is starting to elevate to Giga Wake. Now, around the same total we had before, let's take a look in to see how the Rocker comms are sounding as they try to hold. I'm just saying, throwing these little guns. I'm just saying, 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 I'm just Oh, he's uh, on the broken car. On the broken car, Nice, nice, nice. So all three by new area then. No, 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 Nice, 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 nice. I'm gonna go make 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 I'm Heard in the lesson and Rocker very committed to trying to play to finesse that old time, but they also are very aware we cannot allow New York to get to a certain tally, otherwise we very well could lose the game here at Palace. Is the cushion enough? That's the question. I think it's good enough to at least have a tie game at the end of this hill. Subliners are not able to hold down a full 60 over towards the treehouse side, and now Minnesota are putting themselves in a position to already find the break in towards Palace. They can win it here. So if you are the subliners, the last two players here, you have to find a couple kills. Hydra and Skies, they combined for two. So now there's only one player left from Minnesota. It's going to be Lynch. He takes out one, but New York reinforced back in today's feet. No one else to rock. You're going to be able to contest this. So like you had already kind of assumed, we're going to have a real tight game rotating into our third set of hills. It's just down to can New York start to find success in the first two because to this point, they really have been empty on time on these first two hills. Yeah, this first hill has been causing mayhem for the subliners. Minnesota just trading more efficient. Now subliners are going to find themselves down by about 20 points. Have to be forced to find a break in towards P1. Multiple trophies going to go down. That nade is not going to get any information. So what can Kismet do? Sliding right on in to try to get this first kill. 
first trophy tonight, but there's still so many left. And it's Wake who meets him at the back oh, door. He's going to get three of the four. Oh, maybe even pop it out for all of it. But here come Rocker. 232-198. New York flipped from playing over towards the left side of the map. They need to find the kills, and they need to find them quick. They got to get in, man. They got to get in. They at least have one person in the point, and it's going to be Kismet. He's staying alive as long as he can. He find those initial two kills, make it three. He cannot get the fourth, though, onto Lens. And Minnesota only 10 points away from being those map one Reapers again. Ziv trying to get in through the side door. Kills looking decent. Vivid pops right back inside. Tried to free forward the back door. 243 is where it stops. New York able to clean up the last couple of the kills. Rocker now need to make a decision. Do you want to play fully for rotation or do you try to want to get the last seven seconds? They're committing three players to trying to get it done right here, but the contest time, it may have been good enough. Just a couple of seconds between what's left of the hard point versus going towards New and New York are here first. And New York are here first and they also have one player in Skaz who spawns on a free pinch, so he's going to be able to find a couple of kills on the back end. Subliners are finding all the kills at the right time. Minnesota not spawning on the preferred side. When you talk about this P2, they need to get a break. The attacks need to be good. They need to be hitting. And you have to get past Hydra because he's holding it down with that AR. Explosions all over the construction side, but it's uh -oh. the subliners finding the kills. Hydra playing backside tank. Still one member on the hard point soaking up time for New York, who can 100% still try to win this year. But Minnesota start to find the kills. Hydra, last one left alive. Has to stop Rocker from finding any entry, but he gets completely cut down, and it's Rocker. The map one dominance once again coming through to take the first. Let me tell you right now, Alan, when you're in a series, right? And you play that map one, and something unfortunate happens to so where a reset comes in. The team that was dominating that map one during, before the reset even starts, they usually have a really bad time at winning the reset. But Minnesota Rocket, they did exactly what they needed to do. Every single hard point. Dominate that P1 to P2. Keep P3 scrappy. Find breaks on P4 and even the P5, which is usually a money hill. They were the team that initially started off with it and then kept it scrappy the second time around for the subliners. They started to slowly fight back, but Minnesota just had a better game plan in game one. They usually do. They now puts their record to 7-1 and one in opening hard points. <laughs> and now they're up 1-0 in the series. Silly things, man. Linz gets 30 for 5,200 damage. Wake, who played a map and a half worth of great hard point, continued to also find his way in the successful side of the kill feed. And it's just, again, all the things that we were framing up. New York, you have to beat them on rotation. Yeah. You cannot allow them to get set up and continue to reap when it comes to their efficiency on holds. Rocker worked great at that early, really changed the tone of this game right from the get-go. And I even think when it came down to that final HP, subliners were in a position to win it. You're swanning all of Minnesota towards the backside of Palace. I would have just liked them to have a more tight setup and not Kismet commit on that flank. Once he commits on that flank and he doesn't find a kill, you're already in a man disadvantage on the opposite side. And then they were able to solo out Hydra, find those final two seconds, win the HP. Now they're up 1-0 in the series. And if you are Minnesota Rocker, that GP on GD, word to Lamar accuracy, <laughs> it's worth it so far. <laughs> Man, it's just so refreshing to see Minnesota find success by way of the AR. Yeah, yeah. Because literally the entirety of this little three series stretch they've been out, you could point either to Linz or either to Vivid. Yeah. You just had not seen really much out of Awakening or Accuracy. Sure, they've improved, but they haven't taken over. Now we're starting to see what these ARs could do when they're in the right environment. Awakening really put everyone on notice in this first map. Yeah, and especially on a map like Invasion. We're talking Big about time. all these lines of sights that are so long distance. You're going to set up these ARs to cut down those proper angles. And even with Awakening, was finding himself in power position. We even saw it at the beginning of that beginning of the P1. Yep. He gets a three-piece with an AR watching Freezer side. That's because he knows I have the backup for my teammates. Aggressy is watching the right side street just in case anyone goes for the flank. They just had the perfect game plan in game one. Perfect stuff. Good, I would say, just overall prep. And we talked yeah, about yeah. it before the series. Hey, they played this map when they played each other last time. So I'm sure there was plenty of footage to start to go through. New York, late heroics, just not quite able to make up that 192 to 128 gap is where it really started to stretch. And we talked about, the, again, the continual uh, lack of success that New York had through the first three hills in particular. So that was definitely a major win condition for Minnesota. And now if you are subliners, you got to rely on the game mode that's been winning you a lot of series Big now. time. Search yep. and destroy. Nine and one overall throughout the season so far. The only loss that they have is the beatdown versus the Toronto Ultra. But just the way that they've been having a lot of success is usually comes through Hydra. He was their Mr. First Blood King. But yep. this year, it's been the Bulldog, Kismet. What is it, like opening dual percentage at 70% or 67% like that? That guy is getting it done. And when you're playing against this Minnesota roster roster, 
in Search and Destroy specifically, their defense is not the greatest. They, they allow the most bomb plants to go down. Their retakes are abysmal, which is dead last in the league. And going up against the subliners who are the number one attacking team, this is a tall task. Big time. I, I think the thing is, on top of the Bulldog being great in opening first bloods, he's also the bomb carrier. Yep. He's also playing in the bomb yep. more than anyone else in the yep. league. So when you find first blood and immediately turn that into post plant success, yeah, you definitely assume to start to see things like a nine in one search and destroy record. On the other side, though, and how Rocker could continue to kind of foil what has been a story line set up in favor of the subliners is when they do find first bloods rocker are great at converting rounds it just comes down that they're not very successful at actually winning those first bloods yeah at least the good thing for them as well is that they are playing karachi so that's a map that they recently just won but as we take a look at these stats s and attack metrics for both of these squads obviously it's a lot better for the subliners second overall ranking 76 percent of the time they close out the w with that post plan and rounds with plants 53 percent they're doing the objective yep. work on, on the correct side and then the opposite side for Minnesota, all those stats are a little bit lower than the subliners. But the way that they've been turning up in Surge and Destroy as of recent, what is it? They've won last three out of their four? I think so. Yeah, yeah because lost they 3-0, the 3-0, yep. lost the map two, won the game five. Yep. So they, their game plan, like accuracy said, after the Christmas break, it's been work. It's coming to life, man. It took a while, but I mean, even the desk, I think, when we were watching the online phase, we're still sleeping on this Minnesota team. But playing a map and a half worth of invasion, <laughs> looking good throughout all of it. It's definitely opening up some eyes. So we'll see what Vivid could do. You kind of saw the rule glimpse right there versus LAG. He looked unbelievable. Can they find ways to replicate? It'll be New York on the offense first. And New York are gonna play this one a little bit slower because you have no trophy system systems to work with and it leads to awakening. Finding that first flood over the top of the building onto Hydra. So now the subline is in a 3v4 situation. Had to slow on down. Try to weed the way Minnesota, Minnesota are setting up on their defenses. Try to work some kind of information in their favor. A little bit of intel from Sky's accuracy playing bottom sandbags. That will be transmitted. But in a 3v4, losing out in a lot of the middle of the map, what does New York even have to work with? And the answer is not very much. They've been able to find a follow-up. Kismet hunting for Awakening, and there will be no second engagement there as Minnesota will just hold the 4v2 numbers. Yeah, 2v4. Kismet position now known as Linz eventually takes down Simpson. Now it's all up to Kismet, the Bulldog. He's got the bomb in his back pocket, but it's going to be a 1v4 for him to try to clutch up and take this first round. A couple shots coming in, but eventually he walks right into the preem of the rest of the Minnesota players. And they started off with the first blood. You just said it. Yep. Get the first blood, you get the W. And that's just good. Again, pre-planning for Minnesota. Lots of nade spam through the middle of the map, which New York has often loved to take right off the get-go. So, yeah, perfect for Minnesota. Everything going to plan to this point. Can they find success in their offense? We just saw the stats for it. It has not been particularly great in really them trying to play around the objective. They're always looking for kills, but not often getting the bomb planted. And the good thing for us is that we actually casted their last match of the opening qualifiers. And the way that they love their attacking rounds usually was on the back of Lynn. He's aggressive up through the middle of the map. He tries to play for anyone being aggressive over towards that B-bomb, and he also turns into that island player if anything should, if anything hits the fan. But for Minnesota, all out pressure towards A, and New York aren't ready for this. Really quick tempo hit. Kismet trying to rotate over to get into the diner, but Vivid with under the cover of Smoke is just going to plant this, and Kismet will at least find one kill. Can't quite get away. It's the post-plant setup now in play. 3v3, we go. You have Agassi who's watching that long flank. He's able to take down Hydra. So instantly a 3v2 position now known. The last two subliners players, they jump up into red. Agassi finds a second again. And Sky's now left in a 1v3 with 25 seconds left. If you would have told me at the beginning of this match, Jay, that Rocker was going to come out and outplay, outpace New York subliners, I would have called you crazy. But Minnesota are flying right now. Love the gut check call on the first opening offense to say, we're going, we're going quick, and we're just going to try to stick to get that bomb planted as soon as possible. And that's where the homework comes into play right there. Because we saw all of last week, the bomb site for Minnesota Rocker was that B site. Every single time in their attack, that's where they were going. Subliners were probably prepared for that. But when you catch them off guard, going over towards that A, instantly putting the bomb down, winning the trade battle, accuracy watching your flank, Minnesota on point right now in their search and destroy. Next hit for New York. Well, let's continue to be focused over the middle of the map. Sure seems to be. But look at this defensive setup for Rocker. So much aggression playing through barrels. Vivid sees the trophy system, knows that there are members nearby, and it's awakening to help him out. Bomb Carrier will drop in an early 4v3 again for Rocker. And now Vivid's just going to reposition himself, find another kill through the top AC, and they shut down Hydra. Hydra so far is not having a good time in this search to destroy. And now Minnesota find themselves up in the 3v2 advantage. Bomb going to be down towards the middle of the map. Left up to the Bulldog and Skies. 
It's not that much time to work with. You have to at least find one kill because you don't want to play this bomb towards B. Yep. So many different angles you have to check. I mean, you know that accuracy is going to be sitting somewhere over towards the B side of the map, just comes down to where. And because of that little scuffle over through the middle of the map, Linz has floated around. And now again, it's kind of a question mark here for New York. There's just no information anywhere for the subliners. And if you are Minnesota, you're gaining every ounce of information that you need to, and accuracy finding that kill. Now you know where the pressure's coming in, and it sets up Linz to find the final. On the back of another first blood out of Awakening, Minnesota have been able to chain three rounds in a row. If I'm subliners, let's not move up the, up the spawn for a little bit. I'm let's just saying. take five seconds yep. extra, because these nades are really changing the game Especially right now. Especially from the offensive side. Unreal. I don't think anyone would have had this on their bingo card. Nah, not nah. through a map and a half so far. 3-0 and oh start. you got to keep in mind that this was another one of those maps that these two teams played against each other. The tally last time was Subliner 6-3 over Rocker, but at the moment, it is all Minnesota all the time. Accuracy still holding on to a 4-0 start. And as the bomb gets collected, nades go mid, and it looks like Rocker can try to take all their focus over towards B, but Kismet has one that lands right in Linz's lap. So for the first time in a while, Subliners will have early numbers. Subliner start off with that initial kill. Big kill to take down Linz as well. And finally, Hydra is able to spawn on in. Takes down Accuracy. They've been there for the trade, but Subliner's in the advantage. Only a minute left up on the clock. Vivid going to be that bomb carrier, but Subliners know where that pressure is going to be. They're trapping him in towards the chicken coop. There's a lot of space potentially to get on over towards B. The only one in the way would be Skies at the moment, but Hydra playing over towards top mid. Kids been around the back. Okay, there you go. Full surround, like you already said. Completely enveloped the play. Nowhere for Rocker to go, and New York get on the board. It's good stuff to get that first blood onto Linz, who's the aggressor up through the middle of the map. Once you shut him down, you know the rest of Minnesota. They're going to slow on down because they don't have any information of any players crossing over towards the B site. And at that point, you just allow Hydra to maneuver his way around the middle of the map, find the second kill, and then sets up the Bulldog for the final. Sablon is on the back of the first blood, win the round. Can they start to find any success on offense? Have to have it, and you would think, sooner rather than later. So can they find something here? Like you already kind of suggested, let's just stay back a little bit, not get naded. That Take would be step number one. This time, though, three members over towards Tires, and yep, everyone just kind of draws a line in the sand, and almost the delayed dates come through. Hydra still just trying to dance for his life a little bit as finally all the utility expires. And not a single player from the sublines are in a position Ooh. to watch anyone cross over towards Bridge, so Accuracy's going to find himself in this position again. And he can be the deciding factor to make something happen, oh. and he does it just in time. Finds the first, lines it up with the Kobe, already a 4v2. And just no one able to get into the face of Accuracy. You saw the stuns for New York going over the top. Those oh, didn't man. hit, and Accuracy is just planted up. Says, come and get me if you can. Holy cow, Minnesota, 4-1 start, and really even the round they lost, I mean, I wouldn't even say they've really been in an uncomfortable spot yet. Yeah. They really haven't because that that defense right there is perfect. You get all the teammates to come over the top of cha uh, top side of Chicken Coop. Everyone's one shot. No one's gonna challenge that right side and watch yeah. across those lower bomb. So accuracy gets all that info and he puts himself in a great position to find the initial two kills. And pretty sure what is he working towards a cruise missile potentially? No, he's on a two. So he actually did fall. But Minnesota. They're just flawless right now in the SD. New York have not had an answer. Are we going to get another round one hit right here? Quick attack over towards A, possibly. Linz mid map called up that one earlier, Jay. Kismet did his homework as well. Nade will land, and Kismet will tally what I believe is his third first blood, actually. He has been all over the place with these nades, and Rocker kind of have to take a bit of a pause as they try to figure things out. Got to take your time now. The most aggressive player does get shut down, so now in the 3v4, the initial push is going to go over towards that A site, but now Vivid has to work his way around the map. Accuracy. Still trying to spot anyone over towards this B bomb, but do they know the positioning right now is Sib as he's getting aggressive up through Chicken Coop? Well, they can actually just go right by him. Sib is going to get aggressive over towards Market Side, but they find Kismet. So now all of a sudden you've got some rogue players on both sides as Sib will eventually make his presence known. Accuracy to drop. Top Gun Fight versus Awakening. Tags on both sides. And it looks like that aggressive game of tag will come to a bit of a reset. But it's still vivid in a position. I thought he was going to go for the flank onto Skies, but Skies turns at the right time. Now it's all up to Awakening in the 1v3. Get some info on at least one player, but with only 25 seconds left, the bomb's all the way across the map. You stand no chance in hell at that one. Subliners again off the back of the first blood by the Kobe from Kismet win another round. Yeah, and I think a good decision from Siv as well, just to get a read saying, uh-oh, we have a lot of pressure through mid. Maybe I can sneak behind this Minnesota offense, and it does eventually work out to isolate. Okay. 
So New York putting them together here and there, but again, offensively, they haven't had anything to work with yet. And now, instead of just saying it'd be nice to have it, you have to have it. You don't want to go down 5-2. They are the best attacking team in search and destroy the beat. Yep. They get the most bomb plants down. They're great on the post plant situation. They just haven't had a situation where they can get it down because Minnesota are picking them apart early into these rounds. But down 4-2. Let's switch up the game plan. No one through the little map. Let's go all out towards red, and Linz is going to be here. Huge pause across the entirety of the map for New York. No one going to be tagged up by any nades. Thing is, on the same shoe, New York will have no idea how far Minnesota may be playing. Linz in particular over towards bus side. Holds off on the trigger discipline. Catches one front side desk. Now it's on the hunt for Hydra. Just comes down to do you get a read on this positioning because help is on the way and New York will stay alive in the 3v3. They just try to fight. They know that Linz is very, very close to the engagements and Agassi finds one, but Linz is there for the trade. Hydra now left in the 1v2 situation. Gets the first. It's a 1v1 now. Okay. Should have an idea that Linz is still playing over towards Diner side. Hydra going to take his time to get a little bit of elevation in the mix. Bomb down, though, at the feet of Linz. So it's all about the decision making. Hydra still is dead silent, still has all of his utility, so he can try to finesse, but there's only 25 seconds left. Yeah, and Linz doesn't have to do anything. He knows the bomb is down over towards A. He has the cross set up as well. The time is just starting to tick. If you're Hydra, you have to either find this kill or work this bomb plant, and Linz is going to be ready for it. Yeah, here we go. Linz playing right on top. Hydra gets a look at him. Oh, 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 oh. And it was a good look. But Linz posted up, and you can see the smile. It's like, all right, I got you guys. I got you. And now the looming of a 5-2 tally in favor of Rocker, possibly going 2-0 up in this series. That's insane, man. Yeah. That is insane. I wasn't expecting Minnesota to come out and be so polished the way they are in this series so far. Great in the opening map one. Even after the reset, they still get it done. And now you're beating one of the best search and destroy teams in the game. Up 5-2, can potentially close it out 6-2. The rookie's playing great. Accuracy's playing great. Multiple first bloods on their side. Just one round away. Do they decide to go back over towards that A push? No, we're going back to the old reliable. Let's get this trophy down towards B. Let's get this bomb down. Defense for New York. Still lurking over towards the A side of the map. Linz trying to make whatever noise he possibly can while the rest of Rock are just waiting to see if there's any intel that Linz can find here through mid and he will find Sib. Four kills straight for Linz. And now all of a sudden New York need to decide is that actually where the hit is? Because in this 4v3, they are stuck at mid map. Just got to post up, but at least with that smoke, you get some information that the bomb is definitely still going down over towards B. Actually, we need to play to watch over. Vivid as he goes for that bomb plant, but it's already down. Accuracy finds one. It's a 4v2. And Linz could just cut off this pinch. No worries. New York would have to put together a bit of a miracle here in this 2v4. Retake. Kismet will drop. And now the hunt is on. And Minnesota Rocker. Welcome. Holy smokes. Let everyone know about it. Why don't you? With some conviction. 6-2. Mercy. This is a massacre, Alex. Brother. We're talking about the subliners who were great in every mode, right? At least 50 when it came to the respawn. Search and destroy, they were basically unbeatable. But right now, Minnesota had the perfect game plan. Multiple first floods, catch them off guard with that eight push early on in their attacking grounds. And then just take mid map control with Linz being the island player, finessing with that SMG. New York did not have an answer from start to finish at that SMG. They didn't even win an attacking round. They yep. were the best at that, yep. and they couldn't get one done. Now they found themselves down 0-2 this series i was not expecting this four first bloods as well for the subliners three of them i believe by kobe's nade yep. dude. i mean those are free first bloods and still new york weren't able to convert on rounds that they should have had in the palm of their hands so now you also take a look on the flip side for rocker you're up 2-0 but in map number one you got a mammoth performance from awakening and the second map was nine and three from accuracy so the ars who have been kind of a funny little footnote for rocker have been spotlighted so far and the better news here jay looking forward to karachi control it's been a great map for rocker oh yeah it's been a great rack for rocker and the crazy thing is it's not on their attacking rounds it's actually on their defense i feel like when we talk about karachi control you usually find a lot more success on your attacking side but minnesota complete flip-flop and now that's their best control so you got to be feeling really confident to walk away with this 3-0 we maybe thought there were going to be three O's throughout yeah. one of the day, but yeah. I don't think many saw Minnesota possibly setting themselves up for a huge surprise here in just our second match on land in the Modern Warfare 3 year. But it's all Minnesota through the first two heading into a map mode combination that has been great for them. Will they stun the subliners? We'll find out when we come back.
Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Painted Alabrije bundle is available now in the Call of Duty store. Inspired by the folk art of Oaxaca, this stunning bundle offers colorful, vibrant, and mythical items you gotta check out. The bundle offers colorful, vibrant, and mythical items you gotta check out. Welcome back to Boston, friends, and, well, our second match of the day has been a huge surprise at this point, a 2-0 tally, which may, by verbally saying, that is not surprising, but it's Minnesota that have been in firm control of this series to this point. They've got tight near the hard point, but the search and destroy all rocker, and they're going into a Karachi control, which they're going to love. Yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on with New York. They must have <laughs> not got the bacon, egg, and cheese this morning, a good little coffee in the blue cup from the corner bodega. Like, something's not clicking right now with the subliners, and Minnesota are making them pay every step of the way. Now they're going into a Karachi control. We have one of the best defensive teams versus one of the best attacking teams. Yeah. And it's not like Minnesota are one of the worst attacking teams. They can sneak a couple out if they need to. But if you are the subliners, it has to come through just absolute dominance on your attacking side. Yeah. Shut them down on what they are good at so you have confidence just in case it does go to that map number four. In the same breath, though, one of the guys that's been able to help Minnesota get things done in a lot of these big series over the last handful has been Linz. We've talked about the SMGs coming into this event. They they were the, by far the stars for the rocker. But so far through two maps, you could definitely write the story off of what Awakening and Accuracy have done. So with Rocker starting off on their preferred side, it's defense first for Karachi. Can they start this map up 1-0? They're on the better side. So if you are New York subliners, you got to get this one done. Not going to try anything fishy. Go over towards V right off the rip. We're just going to commit towards this eight point. Try to extend this time of Minnesota. One thing that they did last week that was very scary is that they only applied pressure towards this A point yep. one time. They gave this up for free. You allowed the other team to have so much time to work over towards the B point. So already they're changing that game plan up. We're going to apply pressure over towards every, every chance we get. Yeah, when's clearing off the high ground may have been the green light for Rocker to try to contest this. But with the follow-up kills from the subliners, it's all about just trapping subliners from getting this rotation for free. But they have no idea that Hydra's already here. Tries to finesse underneath Vivid but not quite able to do so. Kismet around the back. Now the next hope for the subliners, and he's going to go unchecked as the full 60 is going to be confirmed over on the A point. Oh, but Minnesota is still contesting A. Yeah, yeah. New York probably thinking, all right, that one's done. Let's just solely put our focus over towards B, and 
That's definitely what Kismet was thinking, but now his teammates are dropping through the middle of the map, and Minnesota have maintained mid-map control. Big gunfight win coming in from Sith. Can potentially hop on a point, but Awakening is there for the trade. And now if you are New York, all right, you find the right kills. Now we get on this hit point. And the big thing is Hydra's going to be cutting things off over on this defensive spot rotation. Kismet getting out of the zone just to make sure nobody gets through the dumpster. And it's a double for the Bulldog. Follow up from Rocker. Now, oh, oh, oh. The side is Kismet is still not being deterred. 5-0 and oh start for him. Skies keeps him safe. And now with the extra 60 fully confirmed, New York all over this first hit. Vivid at least made it out, though. Vivid makes it out, and he's able to find two. The only two players from the sub line is over towards Cafe. He takes care of both of them. So Minnesota are able to force their way back on in. But Sib now in a big, great position to cut them off from top AC. That's still two dead. The only thing you have to focus on is that dumpster hop up. But there's still a lot of players from Minnesota yeah. on that side of the map. And these next two waves for the subliners have to be pushed off very, very swiftly if you're Rocker. Not a lot of lives to play with 19 playing 11. Hydra in the zone. Still working on this first take of progress. Knows he's got players around the back. The timing is perfect for Hydra, but the trades do come up in favor of the Rocker. Problem is, they're still down half the lives. Yeah, and if you are the subliners, you're getting those cold spawns over towards backside red, so you're able to instantly influence that aggression over towards the ticket side again. If you are Minnesota, it has to be a clean forward that to swan them all the way across because if you're playing the trade battle, subliners are going to walk away with this attack. Yeah, just too expensive here for Rocker's defense, it feels like. Accuracy does take care of Kismet, so still that first tick of progress being depleted. New York threatening, but Accuracy starting to step up a touch. Trade from Skies is good, and the rest of Rocker once again held back on the backside of Dumpster. There's just no more respawns left, and I don't know if Linz is not moving for an apparent reason, but... Yeah. Something is happening. I think if you were Minnesota in this situation, you're definitely going to go out there and die. You don't want those segments to go the opposite way. But another reset. So fortunately, it looking like it's about to come in. What's going on with Minnesota's side? Yeah, I don't know. What's going on? <laughs> you're right, though. It did look like Lens for a moment was just having a little bit of issue. He put his controller down, it looked like, at one point in time, although he's not the one communicating with the refs. So not hard to look at, I mean, in terms of what we're looking forward to. Maybe his awakening, he did disconnect yep. here as we're yep. looking at the scoreboard on our side. But I think overall, you look at kind of the idea from Rocker. Like you mentioned, not just giving away A for free. They're trying to throw extra lives. The problem there for Minnesota was it was so expensive. Oh, yeah. Too many lives at it. They're too many lives at it, and they still did not know the positioning of Kismet. Like, he was yeah. staying alive at Cafe, waiting for them, for his teammates to catch it at a point. Once that happened, Minnesota all jumping over the dumpster. They're thinking, oh, Cafe's going to be free. We can make it out this side of the map. There's no way in hell so ones on this side yeah. but kismet was ready with that ar in hand and he was the cutoff man to potentially almost take that first round and control for the subliners but obviously we don't know what happened we'll give you guys an update as soon as we can and i think the thing just kind of to look after the five minute break is that felt a little bit more like what we're used to seeing from new york yeah sure they haven't been a great control team per se, but when they're finding all of these little rogue routes, taking over the map, just kind of swarming in locations that are hard to find confirmed kills at, that's where New York becomes an issue for a lot of teams in the league. Especially in control, man, because Especially. the way that they've been getting it done in attacking rounds is not really through the segments. It's been through the slang. Yep. And they were on full display right there in that round number one. So if they can keep that up, that's how you definitely start the momentum. Just completely out slay, potentially earn yourself some cruise missiles, and shut down Minnesota, who are one of the best teams on their defensive side. Then you force Minnesota to now win it attack which is 50 50 chance sure but a very convincing start is great news for new york fans yeah like you mentioned the boston bagels not quite the same as they are no in the it's not man <laughs> telling you bro that bacon and good cheese is different a little bit of ketchup probably a slightly little thing of mayo as well i know some people hate ketchup mayo mayo on Dude, i'm telling you in a bacon and cheese ketchup and mayo are hitting different all right i'm just gonna take your word in it i will not attempt to try <laughs> take your word and I think the thing, too, is we look at this control is you've got some freedom in this series now for Minnesota. I mean, we came into this looking at the map set like, yeah, sure, you know, Minnesota map one that's been really successful. Maybe they steal the first. I don't think either of us expected a 6-2 beatdown in the yeah. second. But you're looking forward to also a skid row map number four, which based on, again, the historic success of the SMGs for the side of Minnesota, you look at it and say, OK, there is a little bit of a lifeline later in this series for the Rockers. There's definitely a little lifeline, but like, what are they? 0-5 in game fours? Yeah, oh, in three yeah. in game fives, like yeah. if you are the subliners, it all starts with this control. You walk away with this, you're going into a skid row where you can definitely walk away with the W and force that game five. And if it does get to the game five, the good thing for Minnesota is subliners have never played it. Yeah. 
And that can also be scary because you have no VODs to review of how they like to play setups. And on the opposite side for subliners, you know Minnesota played that map a couple times. And the biggest thing that they struggle with is simply their attacking rounds. So like one and eight on Invasion S and D, yeah. you don't find success on that map if you're not winning attacks. And that's the biggest thing, not just for this particular matchup, but I really have to stress to all you guys watching both here and at home is when you listen to the desk breaking down things like map fluidity, who's got the most ability to go to different locations and still find success. Yeah. Our top four teams have been able to prove that oh, yeah. everywhere they go, whether it's hardpoint, search and control, is going to be a desperate attempt likely for the teams that are on the bottom four side of what we've had so far in the online qualifiers. I, it's just really surprising to take a look at this particular matchup, seeing as they squared up once before, and it was pretty controlled by New York, yeah. but this Minnesota hot streak has no signs of cooling down at the moment, which Not is great all. news for Rocker. That's great news for Rocker. We're talking about potentially four series in a row. Yeah. Three series in a row to guarantee yourself a winner's bracket at this event, but to take down a Titan in the sub minus that we have as one of the potential winners of this entire event, Oh, man, the whole story changes Big for Minnesota time. Rocker. They get this W here. I think you feel like you could beat anybody, too. Like that, yeah, hell yeah. Without question. Guaranteed. Okay, so the update that we're getting is that will be a full reset here for the control, which, once again, great news for Minnesota <laughs> considering how things happen. But I, I think just overall, the mentality here for New York has to be, look, we've reset, we're back. Let's not let this dead time kill all of this momentum that we just found in that fake first round. I just think if you're New York, you got to come out like the world champions that you are. Bang. You got to just set the tone early on. We're talking about Hydra stepping up. Kismet setting the tone with, with that SMG alongside him. But I want to see more of an impact out of, season, out of Skies and Sim. Sure. We know Sim so far throughout the season. He's been an absolute shooter for this subliners roster. So has Skies. But so far in this series, it not really came to life yet. So on a map like Arachi, those guys are really looking forward to seeing what they can do. Okay. So we had a little bit of a teaser as far as what we could possibly expect for this Karachi control, but we are loading back in to give it another go. New York will be starting off on the offense, which just to re-hit, that has been their most successful side, not just in Karachi, but everywhere. Whereas for Minnesota, their defense has been particularly great on this map mode combination specifically. So we'll see if the breakoffs look any different for New York. Not really. Everything going back over towards A once again. Yeah, I think if you're Minnesota, though, you're going to change your break off, off a little bit and not allow them to get full chicken coop control. Huge. So you have multiple players on that side of the map, and they still are applying pressure in towards the middle. But Hydra cuts down to first segment about to be complete. And oh no, man, Hydra, you can never count this guy out. He's the best player that we had last year. He's trying to turn it around here. Already a 3-0 no start. Slapped him right in the mouth. Now has the MCW to also work with from this top AC position. Vivid wanted to give it a go. Got a lot of Hydra, but not enough of it. Second tick of progress. Looking good for the confirm unless Linz decides he wants to jump out of hotel and make a play for it. But he's been scouted. And it looks like for the most part, Rocker are going to just completely chalk this to set up their defense for B. And this is where it scares me. This is where it scares me because you don't apply any pressure over towards A. They know that you guys are playing a strong, strong setup around this B point. Now, if you don't find these kills, this game can get out of hand instantly. You do have an awakening in a position, blocking those close spawns so they can't smoke close red, and instantly applying the pressure over towards Cafe, but it's still the bulldog to the back end. He does get cut down by an accuracy, so now it's two minutes that Minnesota have to hold on to this beat point. Big elimination, though, for accuracy to make sure that New York don't just completely flood this zone on the same front. Awakening also playing topside single window over towards red, so there are members for Rocker that can set up this defense, even though not everyone is here as of yet. New York, no chance to jump on the zone. The follow-up kill from Lindsay oh Awakening my. together. Now, all of a sudden, Rocker can dominate the map as they've won every single individual gunfight. Subliners just try to ISO Awakening over towards Junkyard. He reads the first player on his flank and then turns on the second player to hold down his position. Such a crucial play coming out of the AR player. On the side of Minnesota, already 30 seconds knocked off of the game clock. You're forcing all of the subliners to overextend. Yep. We got to push through middle. We got to push through fountain and potentially try to go for deep flanks as well. And Minnesota, with their setup right now, they're fully invested on where they're coming from. Great help coming around the back as Vivid. Bit, bit. Up top towards oh. Balcony. Almost got to, but New York find themselves favorably in the Big kill win. feed. Linz follows up. Now confirming that the spawns will stay safe in New York, who tried to make this whole overextension happen, have to all of a sudden hit this through junk just because the clock is starting to tick away. Yeah, just it didn't work. It didn't work. It took too much time, and if you don't find those kills, it's going to come back to bite you. So they try, they try to come off spawn and hit something different, but now you have to go into the junkyard ARs who are holding down this position. Accuracy on three. Awakening on four. Finally, they take down accuracy, but there's still only 45 seconds left on the clock. They're not getting those close spawns because still awakening in that position. Lins trying to take care of Kismet. Surprises him just over towards bus stop. And now it can go once again, back forward. Try to zone them out a little bit further as New York are trying to look for kills. They can't find anybody. Rockers just ratting up in and around Hotel, and New York have no opportunity to break through this defensive setup, nor even see the zone. 
now there's only 20 seconds left this is going to be their final hoorah to try to get in towards the cafe trades going down and towards the middle of the map but it's still minnesota playing those corners making it so much more difficult for new york to just sprint on forward and get onto the point only seven seconds left they find two lynn's trying to find the second he cannot but it should be just enough for Minnesota to take round one. Unreal start for Awakening again. Six and one in round number one. And it just feels so right. All of a sudden to see Rocker actually fulfilling full setups. Good duality between the back line and the front line. And everyone's getting involved. This Minnesota team looks revitalized in every form of the word. And Namus has got to be geeking right I'm now. I'm saying. You know Big Wake is his favorite <laughs> player. Big Wake had a conversation. He said, I'm going off this weekend. And he's not letting Wheeler down. Minnesota take round one, but also crucial plays from Awakening over towards the junk side to keep those spawns closer for his team. Now they go to the attacking side where she usually doesn't treat them well, yeah. but they can sneak out a couple if they need to. Yeah, it's not just a battle of can New York's attack continue to find success or will Minnesota Rockers defense be the one to kind of set the pace, but also on the opposite side, neither team particularly great statistically on both of these sides. We find ourselves in round number two. First couple of the kills traded out. New York's defense looking solid and they already got Kismet forward. Hey, they find all the kills at the right time. Now you just have to take care of accuracy. Now you get the info. That's a clean four dead. Minnesota now have to work out of this spawn and Kismet already in a position towards Junkyard forcing them to always hit towards three-story or the chicken coop side. Do they decide to wrap back and get, take care of him? Man. I don't know if they're going to have an opportunity to do so. Finally, Agassi finds that kill, but nothing to show for it. Not a single segment complete yet for Rock. And Sips on the chase. Accuracy not entertained by the idea of that 1v1, so you'll just run through the map to open up something oh, else oh, somewhere oh, else. And three tough. great kills come through for Rocker. Klopp will stop at 39 seconds as Minnesota jump on him through the A zone. First hit being worked on. New York setting up the rebreak. There they go, and it's going to start off with Kismet. Finds that first kill. Big one on to Vivid. He was watching down all of this left B Street side. That first segment comes in. Skies finds another. Kismet finds a second. Now your sole focus is accuracy and Lynn. You take care of the final two. All of Minnesota coming off spawn again. Only one segment to their name. Yep. The subliners are making it happen on this defense. The clearance for Vivid through mid map, but this is going to feel very desperate for Minnesota. Accuracy, last one left alive over towards the top at Rubble. Kismet doing what he can to make life difficult on rotation from the respawners, and he's now on five in a row looking for the cruise. Could potentially read this threat on the Vivid. Oh, perfect pre fire. Cruise missile now earned and with 23 seconds on the clock in a 10 v 21 new york dominate the defense as minnesota take one last crack over towards b yeah minnesota did get a close one over towards red but the whole gun fights go in favor of the subliners only 14 seconds left nice one all the way behind p3 and they only complete two segments with hydra Potentially under cruise missile. No, he gets shut down. Kismet now has one. But this is the perfect response if you are the time. subliners to match the defensive side. You also have the segment count up by one going into this next attacking round. And now Kismet earned himself a cruise missile. Huge response for New York. The extra cruise is, I'm going to imagine, be very pivotal in what feels like this could be a control to see all five rounds based on what we saw in our first two. Hard to say for sure, but the big news is all of a sudden, New York really finding themselves alive. And I think more importantly, there was never a moment in that last round where they weren't dominating in every part of the map. Yeah, they just couldn't get out. If you're Minnesota, you go floor dead. That's the worst thing you can do with control because everyone comes all spawn in the same position. If you're not checking your left to right, checking those street corners. You're going to walk right into the creams of the subliners. Linz, having a slow start to this game. I'm yep. sure last time he played against the subliners, even though they got 3-0 to the control, he had a 2.1 KD. So 6 and 14, it's not cutting it. You got to step up, bro. It's been weird to see Rocker find all of their opening success by their ARs. Yeah. It just has not been the story at any point this year. Battle over A. Half the first tick already been completed. Lin's working on trying to get it fully depleted, potentially. He is right around the outside of the zone. Skies gives up his top position to try to get in, and that will be where he's punished. Lin's down. All of a sudden, looking for the beat Ooh. down, but it's Sib who beats him to the punch, literally. And with that first tick of progress, we'll get locked. Yeah, first tick is going to be completed. You see the subliners there, thinking to step ahead. You already have Kismet in the position. Playing for a couple spawn traps, but they're going to eventually work their way around back cafe. No, they're going to wrap back and make sure this eight point is going to be theirs. You don't know where the rest of Minnesota are. You guarantee that Awakening's probably over towards the junk side, but where are these SMGs? And Rocker just sitting, hey, you guys don't want to jump on the zone with numbers. Okay, fine. We'll wait for the gunfights to happen first before we contest this, if at all. 
Second ticket progress being worked on by Sib, and that will be locked. And with the elimination on the Awakening, looks like once again Rocker will chalk this up and just play defense at B. Yeah, you, honestly, if they're going to make that decision, you just got to do the same exact setup as you had last time around. Have someone pushed out towards Junk, and unfortunately, they both just fall. So now, if you are the subline, as all the kills going in your favor, Minnesota Rocker are now forced to consistently jump over the backside of this dumpster. That's another three dead. Subliners might be able to wrap this one up here. Here we go. Sib on the zone already working on the first tick. Help by the form of Skies, who now they double up, trying to get a lot of success done. The kills continue to happen here for the subliners. Everyone's starting to put together streaks. Every single life, it feels like Hydra on five, making sure Rocker oh, can't get it. on. It's a beat down in the back line. Second tick locked, third on the way, and Rocker are sitting here in spawn saying, you guys gonna have this round by the look of it. Hopefully there's no other issues as everyone from Rocker stopped and the moans and groans <laughs> go across the MGM Music Hall. I don't know what's happening, bro. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Subliners are getting it done on that attack. They didn't come down to the sling. They slayed when they needed to. But they were actually going to walk away with that attacking round through the objective side. But once again, a reset happens, and uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Me neither. <laughs> we, don't get, we, we just work here, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just work here. Wow. He had another Awakening game crash, so it feels like it's on his setup yeah, is what we're kind of getting. Which is odd to say because he's been dominating. Yeah. So, I mean, the guy's working through what seems to be a couple of issues and still putting together some numbers. Yeah, the guy's got the good stuff over there. So I don't know why he keeps on lagging out, but that's a, just truly unfortunate right there for Minnesota. Now I'm really curious to see what the round count is. Yeah, same. Going back to the yep. game because, in my opinion, some liners are going to walk away with that. Round. I think so, too. I think that that one was a lockup. You have everything cut off. The stack is already in towards the cafe. So they, in my mind, don't know what the official rule is. Should be up 2-1 going into round number four in control. But obviously, when we find out something, we will let you guys know. Yeah, we don't know. We just work here. Yep. The way that goes. Wow. It's, I, I'm having a hard time, and I'm really going to be curious to see what the desk breaks down. Even if, let's just put out there, just throw, let the universe chew on this one. If New York were to put together a reverse sweep and still pull out the uh, experience that you would expect, which would be a win here. You have to be really impressed by what Rocker has shown us through now two and a half, th well, three maps at this point. Oh, yeah, point. without question, because <laughs> even in my mind, like, we casted a couple of their matches yeah. going into this event. You beat down a team like Carolina, who's basically dead last in the league. You beat LAG, who are basically at the bottom as well. But then your good win was sort of against Seattle, who were around the middle of the pack. You went, get that done all the way in a game five. So that's exactly where I had Minnesota, around the middle of the pack. But when you're taking down a Titan like this, in the subliners, up 2-0 in this series. Can potentially walk away with three. They've completely changed the script of how the, I think about them now. In Maybe we need to do a little bit of diligence here to talk about the other side of the card, which has been New York since their slaughter at the hands of Toronto. Oh, yeah. Struggled versus Boston, had to go five, squeak one out. And this almost feels kind of familiar to what we had gotten out of New York in the last two series of the online phase, where all the things that were so blindly successful for them are not evident anymore. Yeah, even the search and destroy, man. Like, yeah. that was the thing that got them through everything so far. Even the game five versus Boston, they were able to clutch up there. But now you're losing search and destroys. Your heart point right now, at least the teamwork aspect, if I remember correctly, it's just not fully in sync right sure. now. So if you're not winning your heart points, you lose the SD, which is your bread and butter. Now you're going into the control, which is your worst game mode. Like, subline has got to turn up. Well, they're going to have a little bit more time to try to figure things out as we're going to head over to a break while the issues on stage hopefully get resolved without too much pause. We'll be back on the backside. Don't go far. We've got Major One coming back after this.
The Call of Duty Week is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. The Painted Alabrije Bundle is available now in the Call of Duty store. Inspired by the folk art of Oaxaca, this stunning bundle offers colorful, vibrant, and mythical items you gotta check out. Welcome back, everybody. We are very close to being ready for our third time's a charm start. I mean, I'm just going to speak that one out into the universe. Shift and study with you. And a 2-0 tally for joining us here late in favor of the Minnesota Rocker. We've kind of played up both sides. Minnesota continue to impress, whereas we kind of just introduced the topic. New York, who have been a little bit struggling lately, finding ways to try to regain in this map number three to extend the series. You have to try to extend it, man, because you don't want to be one of those top four teams going into this event and walking away to Minnesota, who barely snuck their way into the winner's bracket in a 3-0 fashion, because going forward, if subliners do lose this one, now you're knocked down to the loser's bracket, backs against the wall, you have to play perfect COD, and I don't think they're in the perfect mindset, at least right now. And it's really tough, I think, to even make any sort of prediction overall what's going to happen in that lower bracket, yeah. because there's so many mystery points, talking about teams like Carolina, now a new roster, things like that are going to exist as you try to put together a long stretch through that lower bracket. But just as kind of a recovery and re-hit over what's happened in the first two maps, the 250-238 Invasion Hardpoint, we talked about Rocker and their map one record. It continues to impress. That time it was behind the hands of Awakening. But a 9-3 and three search KD for accuracy in map number two really had us kind of peeling our eyes back as a 6-2 tally hit the Karachi search. And so far through the couple of attempts we've had on Karachi control, we've had kind of a little bit of everything yeah. depending on which restart you want to talk about and now at least off the reset i know one person was looking forward to this reset it has to be lens he didn't really have the best start on that second time that we played it. he was sitting at like 7 and 20. yep he walked away with a defense but as an smg on a map like karachi you have to be that guy that's turning up in those one-on-one -on -one gunfights because hydra was slowly starting to work his way up starting to heat up on the map you had kismet switching between the smg and the ar so it looks like new york are starting to wake on up but you need the rookie who's been getting them all the way to this position to simply off his smg play to make sure he plays the way he does so the update here as we go into our next reset is that we will be holding the one one round count okay. from our recent playthrough okay. so the only real big difference is we're now we're going into a round three Trophies won't be there again. So you look towards that as being maybe an X factor for the team on attack? Yeah, especially. No, I, I'm actually thinking for the defense. The defense? Because it's going to be Minnesota. Like, Minnesota are going to be the defense again. No trophies to work with. So the nays and the stuns will be useful to shut down that A pressure. Not give it up as easy as they did the second time around. All right. There's the layout. Let's see if third time really is a charm here. here we again, go. the tally will be 1 1. Jumping into this reset here at Karachi Control. Looking to see if Rocker can surprise early here here at the Boston Major with a 3-0 of your defending champs. First time we've seen them back on land since their win in Vegas. And that would be, I think, again, no one had that on their bingo card. <laughs> Not just the fact that they would have lost, but in 3-0 form. So can Rocker find a way to continue to just rip teams apart on their defensive side of Karachi control? 1-1 tally is what we're at as we jump in. Back to the defensive center for Rocker. And if you are the subliners, let's just get A out of the way. If you get a clean four dead, you're going to force Minnesota to play a perfect setup around B. But two minutes and 20 seconds, all you need is one push to get it done. But early on into this round, Kismet tries to do the same thing he did last time around. Sneak his way over towards the bridge. He gets cut down and already Minnesota contesting mid-map. Didn't need the nades this time, just got it done with the rifle. Skies up top also has been seen by Awakening, so he's got no attempt to make a full play. And Linz is... hell is he here? I'm saying, it's popped up out of nowhere he's just getting the intel from his teammates and then absolutely destroying the subliners from behind he's also manipulating spawns and now you look over to awakening he should be aware that oh i'm in trouble i gotta back up and make sure that this next hit for the subliners is tested yeah he makes the perfect read wow. and right now the subliners don't know what's going on that's already three dead in the feed last player out of base is gonna be hydra he finds one but now they're gonna get those close chicken coop spawns. They have to get out. They have to kind of try to complete any segments over towards A. There's only 35 seconds left, and there's nothing to show for. Now you called this one, Jay. Lynn's off the reset. <laughs> it's just all over the place. But oh, big gunfight win from Kismet with the SMG down low. Awakening still playing over towards junk side is trying to contest these subliners players, but they largely get out of the spawn trap. First stick of progress being worked on. The problem here is the life count and the time for New York. And Minnesota, they have the opportunity. Starting off with the first kill, you still have big weight 
three. Absolutely gunning in towards the junkyard. That's already three dead. The first segment isn't even complete. All of the subliners coming off spawn. Here goes Lynch, their young rookie. He at least finds one, but there's only 10 seconds left, and New York have yet to leave the base. They have absolutely no success outside of just stepping on towards the zone. Chance for the second tick to get locked in. Couple of good okay. kills. Starts to reduce the life count. So opportunity starting to brew just a touch. But Linz falling off the top of the balconies towards apartments. Does take away one. Vivid following up to confirm his trade. Wants to test the zone, but gets pushed aside. And it's only a five life lead here. New York's going to get 60, well, 66 seconds is what I was going to say. But now all of a sudden accuracy takes him off the zone. And the only hope for New York is to stop the clock at B. At least the good thing for the subliners is they're getting the close ones over towards red. So you're instantly there to assist skies in towards this point but what kind of routes of minnesota decide to hit awakening through the back end finds one look at where accuracy is on the mini map that eight point actually does get complete as well so it's 11 to 7 in lives remaining first second already done at b minnesota gotta get a move on Zip wants the gunfight. 10 plays up against five. Every life, an important one here for New York. Second tick, all of a sudden starting to come through, but Awakening just stays tucked behind cover. Enough to at least confirm another elimination. Seven plays, four. 52 seconds on the clock. Sky is trying to get some damage done himself. Help from Hydra now here. 2v2 over the top of the B zone. Trophy system gets placed. More kills come through for Skies. He's on four in a row. Vivid would have to pop over Dumpster. Can they fully bring this back? Pistols out! Oh Sky Can they find a way to break? No, not in time to contest the New York steal away at offense. That is an absolute collapse right there for Minnesota. You were up by six lives. There was no more respawns on the side of the subliners. All you have to do is trade efficiently. But Caesar Sky is bueno. Invested in this game in towards the cafe. That Renetti was working wonders around those windows. And it leads to the subliners walking away with the attack. So now they are up 2-1 on the defensive side where they have struggled. But Minnesota are a lot worse on their attack. So New York on full advantage to walk away and force this game forward. That felt like a champion moment from New York early here on land. Icing up, finding a way to bring back a seven life deficit with not a lot of time on the clock. Can they reset this series a touch and take us to a skid row hard point for map four? Rocker on the zone for now. Awakening a couple of pot shots over to Skies, who's still looking for that six kill for a cruise. Scott's just taking his time. He knows off Cruiser. That cruise missile can be, but Kismet unfortunately gets burned right there from Vivid. So already the first segment in at the same point. Second segment on its way towards their side. With a minute 20, subliners look like they're just going to give this one up. Force Minnesota Rocker, who have yet to drop any lives yep. on this round, to try to complete this attacking success. This guy's still trying to find this sixth kill for the cruise missile. And he's going to use Kismet as a bit of bait. Gunfight doesn't come through. Oh. I was about to say, hold on a second. I think Sky's trusted that Kismet was going to clean that one up a little bit easier than he did. And on now the rotation with the A zone captured. Rocker have Vivid flirting around the B zone, looking for a chance to transfer over towards B. And Minnesota already found themselves up by seven lives. I thought it was going to be a dominant, dominant all attacking round, at least a clutch up round from the subliners. But Minnesota, they're mimicking the same exact thing. Already one person on the point, Vivid. He does get cut down. At least subliner find all the right kills for the three dead in the feed. And if you are Minnesota Rocker, you still have those close yep. ones, you're here to reinforce. Take your time, play out the lives. New York on the way, trying to recover over through Hotel Care. That's teammate. teammate. <laughs> I mean, Awaken has played well, but he's snapping on everybody. And oh, finally okay. takes down Red Eddie. Zib drops three down. Now a chance to start to hit uh -oh. the go call. Accuracy also finding kills through mid map. You should be able to get at least one, if not two, on for a quick stack. Yeah, just get the stack in. First segment already going to be complete. One player does drop in, so there's only two players left in the point. You have Awakening watching that pinch. He does get cut down, so now it's all on collapse from the subline as they find all the right kills at the right oh. time. And Hydra continues it right through the ticket booth. 18 to 15 in lives remaining, but a minute 35. Minnesota only need one segment, one set of kills to get this done. The next line of defense for New York, firmly planted inside a hotel. Hydra looking for more and gets caught getting a little bit too aggressive. So now tables have turned. Rocker flying out of red. Skies, good stun help comes out, makes that gunfight much easier, and he'll double up from top AC. Lin's down low, next one in his line. Couldn't quite get the reload off, and Lin's has stayed alive here at bus. Skies now all of a sudden in a bit of a weirder position as Lin's gets a second. Finally, the trade comes through. We got a 10v10. The good thing is, at least Sib finds two as well, so it's still three dead. Last thing you got to focus on is Vivid. Everyone else is coming on spawn. 
10 to 9 in lives remaining. Minnesota still in the oh. advantage, but Vivid with the tack usage. Solos out Kismet. Now they get on the point. They're about to be able to complete it. That's already three dead. You gotta go. Sims the one who has to challenge. He finds the first, but then gets stranded out by Linz. Third tick likely get burned, and we'll have a round five affair as Linz holds off the dumpster push. Yep, we'll reset it and see who finishes on which side as we go to round five. And I'm pretty sure if we go to another reset, because round five is definitely comes down to the segment culture. Sure. Subliners walked away with three in their first attack. Minnesota walked away with two. So in my mind, it's definitely subliners who are on defense. Minnesota have to win another attacking round. Yeah. I mean, I'm no math, I'm a scientist, so we'll see. The players usually know better than we do, and okay. no insinuations towards, okay, there we go, the timeout comes through. So I think the math is firmly correct, and I yeah. think League Ops will definitely make the players aware of it. So this is just a reset to make sure the sides are correct. Will you be looking again at things like trophy systems as we have to set everything back up again from a fresh start? Yeah, I think if you are the subliners, the way that you were getting it done, at least a little bit in that search and destroy on a map like Karachi, those nays play dividends. So the way that Minnesota like to play, it's not an aggressive push right off the rip over towards B. They try to get A done and dusted so they can extend that time and then just fi find themselves in a position to get one set of kills to close out that KFA side. But it should be the subliners on the defense where they actually prefer the attacking side. Yep. So complete opposites for both teams 100 and i love it just flat out it's not our best versus our best it's you know can you get the job done on your vulnerable side of the map but man i'll tell you as you look towards kind of the statistics that we had through those two rounds accuracy at 18 and 12 through two rounds and now all of a sudden again we continue going back to what these ars have done for rocker it's just such a breath of fresh air considering what we had in the past and okay maybe the math was incorrect or okay here we go looks like rocker will be starting on the defense so ignore what we said and we're gonna have new york off the timeout jumping freshly on in towards a all right they're both on their better side so if you are minnesota this is your opportunity to walk away with a 3-0 we're gonna contest this eight point down to t as much as we possibly can Trades going back and forth through the middle of the map, but still that first segment is yet to be wow. complete. A two-piece leads to now subliners, potentially stopping this clock on the point. If it jumps forward, trying to find players on the zone, oh. and instead catches Sip nearly over the top of Rubble. Kills come through from New York. Hydra creating a bit of a buffer zone over towards the apartment side, which Awakening will have to be very weary of as he tries to set himself up top side red. Yeah, he's working his way up the red. They don't want to give up this time as much as they can because subliners are gaining the time over towards the eight point, and they're finding the kill. So Lin's the only player over towards the cap. A pinch does come in, so now the subline is on full control of this map. Two players over towards B. One player on to A, but the player on A drops. So now if you are Minnesota, everyone's got to focus towards the B point. And for the subliners off spawn, they will get a player quickly over to finish the progress earned over towards A. So an extra 60 added. Two minutes and two seconds on the clock. Five life advantage for New York, but they don't get the clean transition over towards B. They have to do it the hard way again. Yeah, and I think if you are Minnesota, just go back to what was been working. Push out junk, force them to overextend every single time. Make it a lot more difficult for subliners to even get close towards the cafe. See players trying to maneuver their way around. They solo out in, but they have yet to find what? the kill. He sent in Hydra, but Awakening was there for the team assistance. And then Hydra does get nothing. And now all of Subliners back in the back of the spawn. 130 still on the clock. Remember that moment right there, friends. That was a huge surviving play from Rocker. What looked to be guaranteed kills from New York. Vivid still existing on the flank, but the rest of the subliners off spawn have found their way quickly through Hotel and now over in towards B as Kismet starts working on the first progress. Yeah, Vivid's just gonna work his way to try to find a kill, and he might have put himself in the perfect angle to take down a player on the point. Unfortunately, the beat down slide is not gonna work on Sib. There's still a lot of time getting wind off of that clock. Eventually, subliners get into the point, but it's still Minnesota. They are here to contest this. Accuracy is not missing. Living up to the name. 20 and 16. Great performance so far out of the GPGD guy. That guy knows what's going on. Only a minute left. Minnesota down by five lines. And that also takes New York out of the top AC position. Rocker now holds some control. Trying to get their defense reset up over towards B. That first tick has not been finished yet. But keep your eye on the lives. 13 playing up against that. Oh. Vivid, huge double. Can't quite turn it into a third, but Awakening right behind him has no problem cleaning things up. New York pushed aside again. We got an 8v10. And you saw Accuracy go through the route, through the middle of the map. He pinches the last couple of players over towards the junkyard. And now all of Subliners are not spawning where they want to. They have a force to overextend. <laughs> There's only 30 seconds left on the game clock. Minnesota finding all the right kills. Potentially going to walk away with this 3-0 right now. Seven. 
V6. Not a lot of time on the clock. Kismet does get one on the backside of B. He will stop this at 14.8. But New York are not here to help him at all. Rocker still holding on to Junkyard Control. Oh. They've been able to find two through the middle of the map. Kismet working on the progress, but pushed away. Just down to seven skies. Can they find a way oh. to get things going? Sim for the double. It's a 1v4, though. It's Skies. He's so far away trying to get his run on. Minnesota Rocker came in with the perfect game plan. We're talking about an invasion. You already beat this team on the opening hard point. The Karachi, you've been finding success with this roster recently on that map in mode. You take down one of the Titans that we have in Search and Destroy. But after the multiple resets, after everything that happened in this game, number three, Minnesota clutch up. It's walking away with two defensive rounds, one attack, and clutch up at the very end to walk away with a 3 -0. I'm telling you, we weren't expecting that. No. The Dest wasn't expecting that. The world wasn't expecting that. But Minnesota Rocker, they came to play this weekend. Holy smokes, man. And it's just every form of what we needed to see Rocker do to be a contestant at this event. Not just in this series, but for the tournament as a whole. Needed to see better AR play. Yep. Needed to see the hard point exist beyond just map number one. We'll, we'll still wait to find out if they yeah. play map four. But the thing about it is every other element when it comes to how the team was being a little bit mismatched in tempo, completely alleviated. That is a beautiful performance from the ARs of Rocker. Yeah, like, you know what you're going to get out of your SMGs, but the fact that the AR stepped up tremendously, we're talking about accuracy and routes. Like, yeah. that guy has an what? AR in hand. <laughs> He's spawning all the way on the backside of Castle. He goes right through the middle of the map, hits the route for the repitch, and then completely spawns New York all the way on the opposite side. You only see SMGs make plays like that. But when your ARs are doing that, that means everyone is in sync. Everyone knows exactly what they need to do in the situation that they are in, even if you have a sub, even if you have AR, things have to get done on the map, and Minnesota played that one to the team. I mean, at this point, it feels like the sky is 1 million oh, yeah. percent the limit for this Rocker team if they can get everyone prepared at the same level they were here versus New York. We've got Blaze standing by on the stage with our post-game interview. Thank you so much, Shift and Study. Thank you, guys. There you go. Boston, give it up for the Minnesota Rocker as they take their first win on taking down the world champions. Lamar, Iceman, talk to me about this series, and I want to hop into this map number one because you guys hit a great start, but the reset came through, and we know how, how it is with resets in this game. And also with you having such a great stat in map ones against teams, how was it to be able to come back and, and beat them again twice there. I mean, we were just saying, yo, just keep going hard, do the same thing again, but I ain't gonna lie to you guys. I was absolutely lagging out on the replay because uh -oh. I've never won a replay in my whole career. So uh -huh. I'm glad the boys were going hard. They came and through. Crying and getting me that first replay win. I've never won in 10 years on a replay. And, and it came down <laughs> to about 12, 12 seconds too yeah. as well at the end. So you guys locked that one in, but then the control, a little like New York was starting to fight back a little yeah. bit. How did y'all shut them down there and really make this a solid 3 0? Um, just kind of figuring out their game plan and making adjustments going forward because mm -hmm. they were playing it you know a little different than maybe teams that we were playing before so kind of figuring out what their GP is and you know doing the things to counter it okay nice nice and lastly I want to talk to you about Lens okay because he was frying on the SND yes, how is it teaming with him and having playing with him on the main stage Bro, now? that guy's an absolute demon he's gonna make his name known this season so watch out for that boy all right watch out for Lens and the Minnesota Rocker give it up for one more time Boston Chris take us away Thank you so much, Blaze, and congratulations. Minnesota pulls off the first upset of the tournament, and it's a big one. Alley Cat, I'll let you start first, because in the pre-show, you told me Minnesota know, doesn't free old people. I, I cast a curse to this really bad, so <laughs> either you're welcome, Minnesota, or I'm sorry, New York fans. But yeah, I said New Minnesota can 3-0 people. That Search and Destroy is easily the most insane map of the series. If you didn't really watch it, go back, watch map number two. It was beautiful by Minnesota Rock. Which one of Lamar's nine kills did you enjoy most? <laughs> All of them. Yeah, yeah, all right. We got to break it down, though, Chance, because before the match, I asked you who has more pressure, who has the stronger AR. We highlighted two players, Sib and Awakening. 
seem to be won by the man wearing purple for the first time. I mean, that's the, you know, Big Wake is sort of like the meme or the joke, but he quite literally did answer that question right from the jump in the first hard point. And then even after the reset, bounced back and did the exact same thing. So, I mean, he showed resolve. The slang was absolutely there, but not even just awakening on the AR category. Accuracy also fried this series. This was in like a round and a half. The dude already had 17 kills. So uh, the ARs this series, they did just straight up look stronger than those of uh, the Newark subliners. Nameless, you told us coming in that Minnesota could be a threat to some of the top yeah. seeds. They just put everyone on watch notice. So what are you looking forward to from this Rocker team moving forward? It doesn't get easier in the next round of the winners. Listen, bracket. one, man, I just took a look and like their map goes pretty good. They've been improving a lot in search and destroy. I mean, we saw it in that series just now. That's the best search team in the game that they just beat in that game number two. But I mean, you talk about players who have not been performing well, right? You talk about big wake and accuracy, the two ARs in the team. They turn up in this series. And when they play on that level, we're seeing the dynamic and how good this team can be at respawn and the pace that they can set. Every single time that New York was trying to push out on that control and get control of red, no opportunity because Linz was the final guy in the line, picking up that kill, picking up those two pieces every time. The end of the hard point, who shut it down? Linz. It was Linz finding the two, two kills on the tank. So they have an amazing dynamic within this I roster. need to pause you right there because I'm told the play of the game is Linz <laughs> at the end of that hard point. Alley Cat, we were losing our minds. It looked like the sub liners were gonna steal the rematch yeah. on hard point. Linz leading the team at the very end. How to get it done? I was literally gonna say that and I was gonna be like, Linz is nasty on land. Usually when it comes to rookies, it's like, oh, how are you gonna perform on the main stage in your first matchup? Well, you go up against the top two seed and you do stuff like this. Linz was popping two pieces like it was the easiest thing in the world against New York subliners and he saves the game here when it comes to this final P3, P2. I mean, this was a beautiful play, right? Because New York, they had full positioning, and that's what you want. You want everybody to be spawning Palace. Kismet hits the route through mid. What happens? Awakening slams him on the pinch route, and then Linz is trapped by himself in front of ice cream. He has to make a miracle happen. When he wins that first gunfight, you know they're going to I mean, sorry, he had some crazy sorry, plays. Too. Like, he had the one play we saw from Sky's perspective when he's, like, top red on uh, the Karachi towards the end, where he has Linz one shot in between the whole team. The we watched for another 30 <laughs> seconds, and Linz is picking up kills when he's tagged up one shot. So he was fed into chaotic situations, absolutely delivered. The French guy popped off. Real quick, before we go to break, Allie, yes. who gets your MVP? Linz. We were just talking Linz, 100%. It's official. The desk is done. Match two is in the books. And we come back. We have the third match of the day. Toronto Ultra has been on fire. Do they stay that way in Boston? Find out. Another big one against Seattle coming up next. Yeah, our bridge, 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 I'm not sure if I'm getting old, but I swear to God, Joe, sometimes when Selium talks, all I hear is, I'm gonna, 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 I'm I think uh, it's gonna be very difficult, but if we put the time and we just work hard, it's just everything is possible, I think. Congratulations, Hydra! Esports Awards 2023 Controller Player of the Year. Congratulations, Alley Cat! Forbes 30 Under 30 Award winner. All right, hey, chat, watch this. Oh. All right, we got our scope play of the game, man. Let's take a look at this bad. What would you GA in real life? I think I would GA Bills. Bills for sure, definitely Bills. If you didn't have to pay those no more, life would be so much better. Taxes? Taxes. Taxes. Getting up early in the morning. I hate the morning. I hate getting up tired. It's the worst thing ever. Mosquitoes, do you know what I mean? I don't know why they're here. Waste of time. Bring nothing to anyone, no benefit. Just wipe them out and the world would be a better place. Lane. Got him. Dead. Reviving. Dead. Old. One shot. He's dead. Reviving. Hold it. All way. Uh, dead. Fingers, I'm picking up Esky's pinch. Four dead. Dead. Oh my god. Nice. 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 Nice.
This game changed my life. Uh, I was an overweight 15-year-old kid who didn't feel like I had much purpose, and then this game, uh, this community uh, legitimately changed my life and, and gave me confidence and uh, made me feel like someone. I have my family here today, so I can't think of a better way to say goodbye than on this stage in, in front of my family. They've made so many sacrifices for me. I mean, my dad was driving me to tournaments uh, anywhere and everywhere. My mom, she flew to Chicago with me for my first ever tournament. Steve, is that Mulch? It's Mulch. Put him in Steve. Oh my god. The first time I met Steve, he was playing for a team called the E Girl Slayers. No. <laughs> no. At UMG Philadelphia. I think we throw him by the top of the next crowd. He's going to be here behind me, baby. Let's go. Hey, Ben, relax. <laughs> but, yeah, but to the right of Crowder, I think. Calm down. Yeah, that looks yeah. pretty good. Yeah. 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 This yeah. list is unbelievable. This is a godlike list, I think. I'm 15 on the I got one. I got two. Okay, we need to be on the bridge, water bridge, water bridge, water bridge, I'm gonna play it towards mid cutter, right? Yeah, I'm gonna play it towards mid cutter, right? Deep water bridge. I'm playing from mid map, okay? I'm gonna go inside small, inside the kitchen. I'm just mid tank, I'm just mid tank. Play together. It's going to be fire tank. Just kind of weak. Should back to mid tank. Get my mid? Yeah, yeah. I have mid. You're good, you're good. Just don't tell him. Don't, no, no, no. Don't get wall banked either, Adam. Run to mid tank, run to mid tank. I hear you. Oh, fuck him. I'm good. In rugs, in rugs, in rugs, in rugs, in rugs. Bro, we not. Let's Bro. go, guys! The start of the year to the end, I actually don't know. If I had a guess. Uh. Number three loading up right now as we are getting back into action here at the MGM Music Hall live near Fenway in Boston. What's up, everybody? It's Puckett alongside Ally Cat and Nameless and a very special guest, brand new to the CDL again this year. We got Shift. How are we feeling, buddy? Feel good, man. I, I mean, I'm feeling a little stunned after what just happened on Maine, but I don't know. This is probably going to be the first of, I imagine, many upsets that we have throughout the weekend. Absolutely. You and Study were up there forever. The longest 3-0 in the history of the CDL. <laughs> but let's see how it affects our bracket because now... Carolina, Clayster, I got bad news for you. <laughs> you got the number two seed waiting for you there at the bottom. Excuse me, number three seed waiting for you at the bottom. Subliners versus Royal Ravens is an elimination match that'll be happening tomorrow. Right now, though, we know we have Surge facing off against Toronto. Winner plays Ultra in winner's round two, a bracket I don't think anyone had. Let's start, though, with the team from the Pacific Northwest, rocking all baby blues. We got the Seattle Surge. What have you seen from this team up to this point in the qualifiers? I think for me, I'm looking firmly at Illy to be the guy probably for this squad. He was really showcasing it through the online phase. He's been really kind of a star-studded player since his return back to the CDO overall, and definitely has to be a catalyst to have that little bit of extra land experience alongside of Booza to try to get this Surge team really flowing in the respawns in particular. The other side of it is the negative side of the coin. Arsides has not been particularly great. Maybe he could have kind of a big wake-style series here that would really turn Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, with Seattle Surge, I actually like this team. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, taking a little bit of time to figure it out, but they are excellent at Search and Destroy. We've seen it throughout this stage, and they've shown glimpses of greatness in Respawn as well. Uh, obviously, Abuza, rookie to the team. I've been very impressed with what he's brought to this roster. I echo what Alan says about Alec. I do think that he needs to step it up for this team, especially in those hard points. Alec, is that monster still hitting? 
Yeah, the monster's still hitting. I like that. We take us to the monster pregame for I Seattle. I will absolutely take you to the monster pregame. So I'm going to talk about the attack and control right now. The biggest thing for Surge is they're pretty good at search and destroy, and they have the capability of stealing a respawn every once in a while in a series. So for them right now, I think for me that map one's going to be the most important because Toronto Ultra is six and one in game ones. We're on the flip side. Surge is two and five. So if they can somehow steal that map one once we get to the map modes and see that it favors them, they have the percentage of them possibly winning the series goes up exponentially. Longer goes on, better chance. There's a look at the surge. Ilian Arcee's getting geared up next to Abuza there as he makes his first presence on the main stage felt today. On the other side, though, Scrap and friends are no strangers to the main stage. In fact, they feel incredibly comfortable there. They were dominant throughout our world championships up until that grand finals. Remember, they beat the subliners before they eventually lost to the subliners. They had something to prove online, and they have the numbers to back up the story that they are the team to beat here in Boston. And the respawn is just flat out near perfect. I mean, they are beating teams up. Their hard point differential, 86 points on average. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And it's just a continuation from last year, right? Like, yes, they did add Envoy into the lineup, but this is a team that was always good at respawn. And even this year, now with the addition of Envoy, their slaying has gone up. And this is a team we used to be like, well, Toronto Ultra doesn't have to outslay because, you know, their teamwork is above the rest of the league. Their level's above. Now they have the slaying to match it. So this is what makes Toronto Ultra such a terrifying team. Let's take a look at our Monster Energy pregame. Name was three. They just got to do what they've been doing, right? Exactly. I, I totally agree with that. You know, uh, we usually when teams pick up a new player, we're like hyper focused on their statistics and what they're doing. Well, we're looking at the other three because they have been on another level since Envoy's came to the team. And in the Monster Energy pregame, they do it all. 84.1% hold percentages first in the league. 35.5 break third. I mean, they're top three in basically every category in hard point. And purple wall control on defense. 11 and four round count. 3.3 ticks allowed per round. You play a team on a high rise, it's going to be tough. Play a team on an invasion, it's going to be tough. I don't even know if they've lost the defense on invasion yet. So for Toronto Ultra, right now, I mean, statistically, they're looking like one of the best, if not the best team in the game, right alongside Atlanta Faith. They had that one slip up against Boston in the qualifier. That was really the only blemish that we've seen. But it was a 3-0. So they've shown they're human. They can bleed. How do you see them stumbling, if at all, across these five games? In this particular series, they would have to make some sort of a blunder happen on one of the hard points, and they would have to lose both search and destroys. So that's really the only route in my mind that I think Seattle can find a way into this series. I also think just on top of that, this is a really tough Toronto team to veto against because they've blown out teams on just about every single respawn Whoa. map that we have. That being said, though, Toronto seemingly has to veto terminal hard point and search and destroy, which is what we're seeing in this series, which actually leaves a lot of wiggle room for a team like Seattle Surge. Now, they have Skid Row hardpoint map number one. Toronto has never played that. Yeah. They usually get rid of that, right? So going into this one, Seattle has three reps on it. They've lost all three, but they've had some close games. Think back to the Optic Texas series where Kenny made that miraculous play. They had a major opportunity. So for Seattle, I think they're happy throughout this. Also undefeated in that game two Skid Row S&D. So a good start to the map set for them. So far, we've all picked the same teams. We've all picked the same as the fans. It's time to find out if we have any separation. I'm going first on this one and I'm taking the higher seed once again. Toronto Ultra with the number two <laughs> seed will beat Seattle Surge with the six seed. I'm going Toronto as well, but I'm going 3-1. I think that Seattle will steal a map somewhere in here. Unfortunately, stats in my book sometimes just don't lie, so I'm going to go with Toronto Ultra as well. They just have a major advantage in the series. How many games we got? I'm going with Toronto. I'm going 3-2. Which I think I think map one goes to Seattle. We're all wrong. Surge is winning. It's time to get it started <laughs> with Blaze on the stage. Thank you so much, Chris. Boston, it's time to get this third series of the day started. And these next two teams are ready to fight it out tooth and nail. The first one coming to the stage is looking to bring the storm. Tread lightly, because here comes Seattle.
the Seattle Surge. I feel like everybody's anxious to see what this team looks like on land. A lot of these players are world champions, but they've been thrown away from their former organizations like a bad habit. But we know what they're capable of. They've been excellent in search and destroy. Can they put it together and respawn today? We will find out. Let's bring out Toronto. I'm excited to see what Seattle Surge is ready to bring. But here in Boston, this team coming to the stage is used to the cold. Get ready, because here come the kings of the north. I love when the good news coming in on a day to day. Already know what's happening, I don't got to shake the A. Big moves, big step up in the right direction. The trip continues, every double use a psychedelic. I think they gon' need a minute. Look, I'm interested in making ends, I'm supposed to make it friends. Double bags, I've been paranoid, I've been safe. Let's get it started, Allie. They do not want that to happen to them on this main stage. And I'm ready to go, Boston, for your casters on this series. It's Merck and Maven. Thank you so much, Blaze. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Let's have some fun. Um, been a minute. Yeah? Not really. I feel like it's been a while since we've like been at land, you know, getting feel more sexy with the people. Oh, all the time. Yeah. yeah. No, it has been a while though. No, a uh, long off season. We're obviously very happy to be back in Boston. Yeah. But as Ali was saying, we just saw a major upset. And I think maybe for Toronto, it's sort of like, uh, well, all right, this can happen to us. So let's lock in boys. Well, a couple times during the league, I feel like if one team, like there was a major upset, there was like another one that day, like we had a lot of that happening. So. Yeah, I don't know, it was a mental thing sometimes, but don't follow suit, come and handle business, because I think for most of us, yeah, they've looked like maybe the number two team. It's, it's hard to argue anyone's better two. than FaZe, but when you're looking at their hard point, they've been truly unbelievable. I think some of the question marks around Search, we expect this team to be really good, but it's still early. Yeah, I mean, four and three in Search and Destroy, obviously room for improvement, and you know, you, you have a new player come in, there's gonna be a little bit different play styles, yeah. right? The way Envoy likes to play versus Hixie, getting on the same page, finding that map pool, but this is a team, their, their respawn has just been lights out. No, they've been so, so strong. Now, you kind of heard them talk about the desk, and I don't want to dive into it too much. Hopefully we're into action pretty quickly, but like they sort of said through Search and Destroy is where you think the upset comes if you're Seattle, it's got to be, right? Yeah, I mean, that's just kind of it. I, I mean, I would be very surprised if it goes through like the respawns. I, I guess this has, you know, there is potential of this team, but let's be honest, Seattle Surge, they have struggled against the top teams in the, in yeah, the game. Yeah. I mean, you come out hot to start the year, but since then, it has just been a little bit ugly. Their schedule got a lot tougher, but maybe they steal one here, right? Ultra has not played a Skid Row hardpoint on the year. Yeah, so Rocker like started slow and then improved. They've been kind of the opposite. like. Like, are these guys going to come back alive? Open a kill there for RC as we get rolling into Skid Row. And oh, this is one where A is lined up for inside. He's able to get a nearly a third, but he was so tagged up, he drops with the trade comes through. But talk to me a little bit about this opening map, because what we haven't seen Ultra here, you've seen what surge three times, but like the point differential is pretty rough. Yeah, what, 0-3, you know, minus 70, 80 points in the yeah. point differential there. They're kind of getting smoked, but again, it's the half reps in matches. Again, for Ultra, you've played it a ton in scrims, and just because we haven't seen it yet in match doesn't mean they're bad at it just they're playing to their strengths is right now early 30 points but you do see on rotation Illy already inside p2 this is great starting on that side if you're able to get early control to that second hill and they have it for now so Illy just gonna be chilling but you take that time if you are ultra yeah you get a clean 33 all right now you see if you can get a break on one of the more difficult ones to do it you've got control of ticking you're starting to group up here by construction, see if maybe you can make a play for the point. It'll be Illy soaking up inside. Hook getting down damage. Pistol kill there for Envoy. And 
You look to collapse, but it's just scary. It's like, who wants to go first? Because <laughs> the second you start to get out in the open, the beams are there for yeah, Seattle. I, I mean, they try to get garage control early on. They're able to find the first heal on RCs, but after that, this first push pretty much negated. Maybe you go one more time behind the nades. Maybe no more trophies in hill, but th still three players up, and it's going to be a booze and nade. So now it's down to a, a 1v1 on the hill, and Illy, he has been so solid for them all year long. He is going to win that final gunfight. Now it's all on the focus now in rotation to P3. Yeah, this is one where, you know, you saw FaZe do it earlier today. Like, you have this P2 to P3. When you can get a successful transition there, a lot of times it flips this map on its head because, you know, you're guaranteed a good 50 to 60 at two. How fast can you come in? Maybe can you develop a pinch? Some pressure on Ultra now to get a hold here. Yeah, already some map position given up and I mean, that's gonna be a great stun from Abuza to find the first one on the scrap a nice read this is where the push is going to start from it's going to give them that closer spawn you see where scrap spawns on up and now it's just we know the entire team is here do we have trophies we absolutely do the ultra duo takes down all four yeah no that's about as clean as it's going to get they're trying to push these spawns out even further get the trophy out of action four in a row now for inside as he is up to seven and two and ultra will now go back out in front you're going to take another crack of this or try to build if you can Seattle surge but so far so good the fire is there you're on what five HP before you drop and whoa no stranger to this today so hopefully we uh will get this going yeah yeah obviously we've had a fair amount of this so uh we'll see what's going on hopefully it's something they can resolve and not something we'll be dealing with over the course of the weekend, but any big takeaways there from the opening to that one? <laughs> well, I mean, inside starts off uh, starts off well, but yeah, I mean, you, you get the P1 hold if you're Ultra, you give up the P2. I mean, a great early hold over at the third hill for Ultra, but wipe it clean. Yep. I am imagine we'll be starting fresh, considering that was the call earlier today when it was, what, a 100, 120 point differential here. You're basically tied up. So fans here, fans at home, thank you for bearing with us. If we have any more update about what's going on with these crashes, we will let you know. But uh, for now, I'm just waiting on them to get hot back into it and take a breath. And that goes to both sides of it, because you know you saw some frustrations thing on the stage in the last series uh, with some of the resets. You saw it, I think, from New York a little bit. You saw it from uh, Minnesota. I mean, but props to like Minnesota, like for Rocker. After that map one reset to come in and win that again, basically go up 2-0 in the series. Like, the win in that fashion, that was pretty impressive stuff. No, 100%. Yeah, I mean, you kind of heard Ice Receipt talk about it. He felt like he's never won a reset in his career. So to, to finally do that, it's not easy to do. And normally it does go the opposite way. But unfortunately, this just tends to happen at times. Well, obviously, you or Ant that said in the arena, we were sort of like, you never win the reset. You never win the reset. <laughs> like, Yeah, that's how we talked. Just yeah. like that. No, that sounded just like you. Yeah. Like, what am I, Scrooge? Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. You have a very sexy and sultry voice, Joe. I'm sorry. I appreciate that. You're welcome, buddy. But no, it can be so tough. You know how many times we've had it over the history of Call of Duty? Uh, I mean, we've had different rules around it at times. I feel like it's been a pretty long time now where it's just been sort of a flat out reset and hard point. You used to make those rules back in the day, huh? Not anymore. No, no, yeah. I don't have to do that anymore. I just cast we and deal with you. Take care of you. Now you're an athlete. I want to get I want to get pizza here tonight. We we'll pizza. We haven't had any. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if maybe. anyone in the venue wants to walk up and tell us pizza joints to go to later, I would take that. Yeah. There you go. He's looking for pizza. Yeah. I don't know why. It's you're already thinking about food. While we're huh? sitting here filling time. Yeah. Well, I, it's been a while since I've eaten. I'm an athlete. Now. I worked out two days in a row. <laughs> we're so proud. I, of you. I did cardio two days in a row, bro. No, we are proud of you. You know. You're getting younger and younger. Yeah. How about that? Look at those pretzels over there. See they those look, things? They look good. Woo You're yeah. really high in, high in food. You're focused. They look real good. I'm locked, y'all. You're locked. I know. Yeah. I'm locked on the stage now. See if they can get this game started. What do we think? Oh, well, I don't see it. The game's right there. You can... uh, what's behind me, Joe? Yeah. Oh, you just turn around the other way. Okay. Well, what, are we still waiting on a player? We got everybody back. Looks like we got everybody. I think we're waiting on one player. Uh, we're going to hop into the bracket real quick while we wait to get back into this. Thanks again for hanging out with us while we uh, look to get locked and loaded. Yeah, look at the bracket already. Uh, I'm, I'm sure maybe if you did your pickums, maybe didn't expect the last game. Rocker with a big 3 over NYSL. Atlanta Faze with a, a 3 over LAG. And now into this one. So it sounds like we're almost ready. Hopefully everything works out fantastically. But there's uh, an updated one. Yeah, NYSL already in losers round one. Did a take on Carolina, and that's a, a matchup. It's scarier than it once was, right? Yep, gonna be scarier than what it once was for sure. I mean, Carolina's gonna have more and more practice time. 
But Rocker, man, just, they are locked in. I mean, we, we casted some of their early games of the year, and it was looking dreadful. But what a turn. Dread Dreadful's one way to put it, yeah. But then, uh, you know, you bring in fellow, the young TJ Haley. <laughs> and they start well, talking about good. Rocker. Yeah, no, no. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about Carolina, too. Like, how much they've turned it around. Because they've, they've been so, so impressive. But same for Rocker. I think we're getting ready to load back into this one. I think that is the case. We've got a full reset here for the map one. Thank you again for the patience at home. Getting ready to load back into it. Skid Row to start us off for this best of five. Seattle Surge, Toronto Ultra looking to do battle. Here we go, back into it. Last time it was Ultra off the start, but they did allow that P2 sort of tunnel push workout for Surge. Insight in the same exact spot, maybe a little deja vu. Can he line up both players? He does find one. And it's the second, so pretty much the, the same same way the break went last time through. Yeah, a little bit deja vu, that, that is for sure. Phoenix, already watched the underground route, able to get the kills there through tunnel. Scraps POV we go, he's got basically the entire roster in front of him, it's another multi-kill there for inside. Ah, almost number five, but he's going to get cut down at a four and one start. And you maybe do a little bit better if you're surge this time, because what, like 33 to zero or something he's got starting up for ultra, but the difference. Look at P2. You'll be set up there with Ultra. Yeah, I mean, as, as soon as Illy goes, gets taken down on his first push through through tunnel, they're just like, we gotta go for the scrap time, the rest of P1 time. So, so that's the play where the first time we watch it, Illy, Illy was able to win that gunfight, and they get set up at P2. That's gonna be all four dead for Ultra. Or sorry, four surge. Now the Ultra set up. Gonna force them through tunnel is yeah P2. I don't think this is gonna get touched very much. No, no, surge. it's not. Now we'll see if you know sort of what I was talking last time. Like at this time, maybe Ultra can do a great job transitioning to P3 and get the break. They had such a good time holding it last time through. You've yet to die if you're Envoy or Kleenex and you're still hunting Envoy, trying to work his way up top. I don't know what to do it. Arcee's going to hear him. Able to get the kill right back over to Inside, who is shooting Deem. 7 and 2 start last time through. 8 and 3 in this. My guy is locked. Yeah, Inside 8 and 3. I mean, Illy 0 and 6 <laughs> right now. Not a great start. Does get on the board. A 50 point lead for Toronto Ultra over on rotation. You do have who is that? RC's already set up, just trying to fight for map control up top. But a nice trade from Scrap. Instantly traded out yet again from another rival. But here we go. Can Seattle Surge respond? Yeah, this is the big one. This is where Ultra was able to respond last time through and able to hold so well to get right back into it. Can you do the same thing? Not looking that way. You already get ripped out of the point. Breaking through will be Scrap into this P3. Three players going to be spawning close there for the push. He's got a little bit of help, though, in the way of Envoy as they continue to hold around the point. Now this is a, a chance for things to get out of hand early. Yeah, I mean, 5-0. and Clays is not dying. Looking for number seven. Gets it, but does get taken down by his teammate. So it doesn't reflect in the yeah. stat line. 7-0 <laughs> has the cruise missile now to work with and what was uh this is an ugly start here with that p3 break beautiful to for toronto ultra yeah you're gonna get in with about 20 seconds or so remaining but the damage already done ultra they are rolling so far and that boy tried to deal the outskirts going to peak the guy top dunster one pushes it close and he falls scrap he's getting dropped as well a booze it there with the multi-kill kleenex yeah he's still got that streak going just because the team kills you still see the seven in a row yeah, and, uh, again, over at P4, you already have Ultra kind of set up, just kind of hanging out for right now. So, already so much map control to fight over if you are Surge. Hook through back apartments, trying to get pushed up, but still in the back is Scrap hanging out. But someone checks behind the door now. The contest is in. Illy is there. All of Ultra going to spawn up, maybe try to flood through tunnel or through middle. Just waiting for the trades. Nice nade by Envoy. He's able to find another one. So three in a row. It's pretty much a two on four on the hill for Ultra. And they are running away with this game. Yeah, you're talking about three kills in a row. Three kills in a row as Kleenex goes demon time. Ten and one after the seven and oh start. Nothing is slowing this man down. He is a wiggling. He got some moves there, Joe. You like that? I mean, just hits the slat at the perfect time and gets right under the gun. So now, what, uh, almost 120 point lead for Toronto Ultra. And the only people that can take him down are his teammates. And his two team kills that come in out of Kleenex. <laughs> He's still at 10 and 1. Seattle Surge, though, not out of this one, over towards P5. They need a response here, though. That's actually wild, yeah. Three deaths. Two aren't even on the board. Here comes the streak as he comes back. Thanks, teammates, for taking me out. I'll return the favor into 
other side of things. You know the blow of Booza off of the map. They're blowing Seattle Surge off the map. Ultra firing all cylinders. Let's go to a listen in. He's by the barrel, by the barrel. Oh, he's here. Right here. He's two, right here. Two barrels dead. Watch out, 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 watch Try and take Ninja, I yeah. I Okay. Still one to fuck me. He freeze Fuck is like L. Got you guys out. It was a little bit L on me L on me weak. L on me weak. He went towards Laundry. Yeah, he's still to freeze. Really big Laundry dead. Nice. Yeah, he freeze still. That's on fire with you. He's got top left. Jamie, I'll try and help me. Suddenly, in the barrel, barrel, weak, barrel weak. My man's dead. No, two, 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 one deep, deep, deep. What's up, Pat? He went flat. No, he's running me. Still Pat. Dead. Dead, dead, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Dead, dead, dead. He's on the AC. Yeah, 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 no, 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 AC, no, no, no. AC dead. Flat, 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 two flat, two flat. Get yeah, I'm making him slide. Make him slide. Yeah, go the middle, right? I don't shit on him. Two more. I can hold garage. Both weak. Do you want to get deep, maybe? Yeah. We got a dub slide. Yeah. Sure, go. Yo, it's two old. One's gonna go window. Garage ready. This barrel. I'm up in garage again. Weak, weak, weak. In the right corner. He's done the native. The right corner. Yo, you're pissing. Tunnel, 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 tunnel. Tunnel weak. Garage is dead though. He's hit a tunnel. One second, man. Wait, can you get across? Yeah, tunnel dead. I don't have any time. We have a tunnel. We have a tunnel. We have a tunnel. We have a tunnel. He's making fun of the offense. Kleenex is stat line looking comedy 16 and 4. A couple of team deaths, but still quadruple positive on the scoreboard. You got a chance to close it out here. You got P2 locked down. You're looking to take it away. Yeah, I mean, a couple of seconds of difference from the score. Illy <laughs> finally able to take him down in insight, but Kleenex with another three piece now up to 19. As this stat line gets more and more ridiculous, and Surge, they're going to need something. Just look at that there. RCC has struggled versus the top teams. Continues here here in in this respawn six and fourteen for him And this is what we were talking about just coming into the game and this Toronto ultra team bro, so bro. good is Kleenex and insight Just take them all down Kleenex drops he's on six in a row again make it seven another streak to work but Kleenex Tobias he's doing it all my guy has been frying throughout the course of this you need ten points to win it You won't quite get the tick to close it on this particular hard point but last time they slice through P3 like a knife through butter. It made it look easy. Yeah, now they have a chance. It looks like a couple of players there, but it's pretty much going to be a two-on-two two for now. Insight going to slide on through. No trophy, so Nate going to hit. But Kleenex, he just opts for the pinch, and why not? Is someone going to turn around? No, nope. Hook's not going to hold that pinch. He's up to 25 and 6. Does he take it down, but has some help now for Scrap. You heard him in the listening, talking his smack as he always does. Ultra with a statement in BAP1. Yeah, I mean, it looks even better off the replay because this time you're able to like, split time on P1, then you get full P2 control, immediate break into P3. You're up 100 nearly instantly. You die, what, what did you end up dying? Five times? Something like that? If yeah, you are five or six times. Like, that looks like a main AR stat line or something, maybe. Well, honestly, that looks like a god stat line. That, that's unbelievable. Look like he was playing right. Yeah. <laughs> Versus us in the venue. Yeah. <laughs> no, he honestly did, but this is what we were talking about with this team, and this is the map they haven't played in a match. Right? They have other strengths. Talk about like Karachi, high rise, doesn't really matter what they're able to do. They're, they play everything to a T, only one hard point loss on the year. Well, a lot of times that might be the difference of if you're going to make a run at a tournament, though, in the sense of the map, map pool. Yeah, yeah, how big your map pool is, you know, we, we don't see all of their scrims, but you know, they've had this one in the back pocket. They're playing great. They come to tournament, people ban something they're good at. They're like, oh, yeah? Well, here comes the Skid Row sauce. Is they uh, make it look very easy there, but not against a very good hard point team. The question marks now start to come, and I'm just curious what you think, like, maybe it had been the struggles of Search and Destroy for this team. I know you bring in somebody new in Scrap last year, and then you, you, you come in, you have Envoy here, but it's like, this should be a good Search team. I think they will. I mean, yeah, again, I mean, is that all it is? You're just giving time? Like four and three is awful. Well, if you're as good as they are at respawns, yeah, sure, go 50-50. I mean, you'll take 60%, 50-50. Yeah, yeah. It could be less than that with how good they've been in hardpoint. That's true. That's kind of what you're hoping for. And this is a team, I think, you know what, maybe online at times, they just kind of go through the motions. It feels like we saw it last year. Prep is a big thing for them, right? Just going, looking at those matchups, having a week to prepare well, the vetoes. And, and this is where they kind of thrive. And a lot of times, like this team in the past, like the old, old Ultra rosters, like, 
they were sort of okay at Hardpoint. Like, what got them through a lot of tournament victories was just how good they were at sort of everything, right? They were good at search, they were good at control. Now it just seems like there's a very good Hardpoint team, which allows you to, like, you're gonna slip up in our spot sometimes, okay. Yeah, and again, bringing in a new player like Envoy, maybe he has a different way of playing the game, right? The way he kind of approaches Search and Destroy. Got to get on the same page with him and just figure out what map set that they want to play. Okay. Well, Seattle, we know how much they've struggled in the respawns, but when it comes to Search and Destroy, there's some stuff they've done really well. No, it has. I mean, one thing for them is their opening duels, right? And if they're able to win their opening duels, Outside of what was it, Karachi? I think if they win the opening duel, they have a 100% win rate with that first blood, she converting does. it into a round win. It's just finding those opening duels and winning them out. So we'll see if they can do it here because they need to. Well, because we've seen some teams like you and I have been casting, it's like team got eight first bloods and lost. So like, how is that happening? We got a team that's basically flawless in Seattle. They've been really good at converting there. It's just, yeah, whether or not you're able to get those first bloods and maybe a little demoralized after the map one, you kind of got thumped or maybe it's one you're kind of expected to lose. You're looking forward to the search to destroy. Yeah, I think the problem is just like, you, as the Dets just talked about, you have to find a, a respawn in here. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if it'll be in control. It may have to be, or if they can get us to a map four, but the fact is they have to, to find a respawn win if they want to win this series. Because a lot of what the early hard points that we cast, they look at it was what terminal, like it's ripped out of this. What do they have, two control wins on the year? Something like that? Like it's not, it's not mini. I think you're five and two if you're ultra, so they've looked a lot better there. Yeah. I mean, you've got to uh, you've got to win the search, but uh, we're gonna take a look at some of the stats there. I believe from that map one is it was uh, it was a one-sided affair. Yeah, and I think that's Kleenex who, who braced the hard point record right there, 4.17. So new record had just set in that map one, 4.17. Uh, that is insane. Yeah, no. Like the stats of God are playing against the venue, like you mentioned. That's basically uh, what it ended up being. And I know it looks a little weird because a couple usually were, like gas like a one four. Well, yeah, it's like one thing like the, the the team kills early on. Like maybe they stood out a little bit, but once you get going deeper, and he still got he still got five deaths with twenty plus kills. Like throw those out the window. My guy was just fine. And like every time he died, I feel like he got a triple within like seconds of getting back up onto the map. But Kleenex for I mean he's always been one of your favorite players really since he came into the league. Just. When he is on point, he is so fun to watch. No, I mean, he plays with such speed. He's got like a higher sense. Yeah. It, it looks so smooth when you're watching his POV. And yeah, it's just when he's locked in, this team is tough to beat. Now he does have moments where he gets hot and cold and kind of cools off, but it feels like with this squad, like there's enough firepower where if he does have a map like that, it, it won't matter. No, I think, I think it's huge to point out. It's like they kind of needed him at all times with some of those older roster. Now it's like, all right, Scrap will be chirping. He can pick up the slack. Envoy obviously has the ability to do it. Maybe that's, you know, the change with Hixie, because we all love Hixie as a player, but like, he maybe didn't have that next level. You can see maybe somebody like Envoy hit. Man, you kind of see just sort of the, the faces of Surge there, just kind of maybe maybe listening to uh, to Rambo Ray, their coach, but we're going to look at the attack for both of these teams. And Seattle Surge, what, 18 to 22, Toronto Ultra, a little bit better. Post plant, uh, you know, win percentage for Ultra at 90%. That is fantastic. Yeah, that's really, really remarkable stuff as we get ready to hopefully load into this map too shortly. I'm just getting, gonna stay back on Skid Row, Search and Destroy. So staying on Skid Row, and again, I, yeah, you just saw the faces of Surge, just kind of looking a little down again. The last month or so since that, that sort of holiday break, it has oh. not been easy for them. Yeah, I mean, at first you're like, this is a team, I, I think I said, like, after we watched them one or two times, I'm like, all right, they're kind of nasty. This is a chance, a team with a chance to make some noise, and then it just feels like it's been so downhill inside. SND the last 30 days for Ramblis. I was talking about their SND struggles maybe at four and three, but he has not been struggling. Inside has been an absolute mammoth in the mode. He's looking to continue that here. Talk to me just at a basic level about Skid Row Search and Destroy. I mean, offense could be tough, man. I, I mean, it's hit just something. Sort of, yeah, <laughs> hit some nades up top. Maybe just try to go quickly to top A. Let's see. And well, this time it's going to be bottom middle hit. And he's going to catch Arsenis off guard. And maybe with that, they just try to go quickly through B. But Envoy with the bomb goes up top. And okay. Uh, it can be difficult at times, but not this round here for Toronto Ultra. You just kind of commit early to the push, and that is a 20-second round for Ultra. It, it, it felt like you were like, maybe they do this and Scraps, like, nah, I'm fighting. <laughs> it ends up taking out two. But yeah, RC just get, kind of gets caught with his pants out early in the round. You see the frustrations here for Hook. He had no chance. Some windy shots. It ranged with the rival, and everyone comes soaring out. But 
I think Scrap gets two. They get that opening first blood. They converge on you real fast. You were talking about speed. There it is. Yeah, I mean, I think Arceus is like trying to throw a free nade over the top to see if it's like, uh, you know, an alley hit or if someone's going for a jump up, whatever the call is. But he jumps back into the window towards B and is already dead. Yeah, yeah. No, he didn't get a chance to get to his spot or anything. He just ripped off of it. And Kleenex, the car combo. That looked violent. Abusa gone. Scrap will pick up his third. Envoy went it his once. They are just sending it without any respect to this Seattle team right now. Body him, take a sip of water. On to the next GG. I mean, first of all, props to Ultra with their play calls, right? Because, I mean, they're reading the map well. There's sort of like, again, this sort of hard counter where they know exactly what a, what Seattle Surge want to do, but finding first bloods within five seconds helps. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like Surge are talking through what their game plan is for the round. They're already getting uppercut. Like, it, <laughs> Jesus. Ultra looking like a threat right now on the map. You think? A threat? Yeah, yeah. A big threat, dude. We're talking like a tier five threat. Red, red, red threat level, Joe. Gonna jump up top boot there with the first blood. Almost finds the second. And Kleenex is kind of just out. And it looks like Illy going to potentially pick this up, or is he? And it was looking good, and then it wasn't. It was literally a first blood for Hook. We were talking about how good they were with their opening dual percentages. Outside of what? Karachi, right? And now it is just over with. So that yeah. percentage just goes yeah, down. That stat didn't stay around long at all. Are they, are they playing a different game? I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure what's happening. They are just frying them. Oh, they play next. <laughs> uh, we'll get there pretty quick, assuming the game stays on. Oh, I'm always just like, I'm one and three. <laughs> All three the deaths. <laughs> Nobody else has died here. 11 and zero for the rest of them. The first couple of rounds, it was right down the middle. This time, they're just going to go right through the tunnel. Just again, a hard counter. RC's going to pick it up, but he's going to get first blooded. And again, just kind of feels like they're, they're saying, let's just do this. Catch them off guard. This is another 30 second or so round as Hook trying to clutch a 1v3. First, I thought I was like rewatching you guys at Warhawk SD back in the day. <laughs> where it's just like hard counter, hard counter, hard counter. Listen, Tobias. Mr. Kleenex there is about to set the highest KD for a series in the history of the CDL if he keeps at this pace. Like, uh, it might already be. Yeah, <laughs> six and zero oh. <laughs> for Kleenex. Going to have the cruise missile. This is absurd. Like, I, RC's looks like he wants to call home. Like he's a pep talk for Bristine here. So I'm like, Mom, we're getting shit on. Yeah. That's one way to put it. Yeah. Please don't find me. I, even the seagulls are chirping. What was that? I don't know, dude. Kleenex though with the cruise. This has been about a three-minute game. We're going into round number five. Two players on Ultra have not died. They get some info, I think, on RCs. Kleenex looking for number seven. Dude, if, he, if he is beaming there, like, all right, I'm done. Just call it there. Okay, finally, we get deep into a round without... It being over with. There we go. Let's get a round of applause here for Seattle. They have made it past the 22nd mark in the search and destroy round. Yes. They do get first blooded though. The players are probably, what the hell's the crowd cheering about? Oh. Next finally gets taken out. So into a three on three now is uh, Scrap. And have his teammates look over him. Bomb just kind of rotating around. Where do they want to go with this attack? And well, Illy, he's going to get spotted on that jump up. Six and one now for Scrap. Abusa. Looking to hunt, see if him and RCs can make the play. He phones home, he now finds one. Envoy ripped out of it, you got a two versus two now, 30 seconds left to go. I feel like this is the first time I can actually commentate in this search and destroy. Yeah, let's say Strap had the cross, so he, they have an idea of where both players are. Inside, just checking back alley, but Bomb being planted over towards B. Once this goes down, it does not go down. So RC's gonna take him out, there we go. Serger on the board, yes! Listen, sometimes you see a team down so bad on stage, you just got to give them some like, come on, you guys, you won the round, let's go. That's what they're giving them. We love to see it. We get past that 30-second that, uh, mark, <laughs> and they're able to get it as well. Do they know they won the round? No, I mean, they're, they're having a rough time. Yeah. True, true. Just got to stay locked. Keep talking. 
try to make some adjustments. Just realize how what Ultra is doing. They're well, just playing quickly. It's just one. Of the, it just got away from you quick, right? Yep. It's just those first couple rounds. It's so so fast. You blink. And you're like, what? We are in trouble, boys. Now can they bring it back? Get around on the board, looking for another first blood. Who can pull the back down out of that one? Now it's a first blood for Omboy. With that stun hitting, he does not regen health, right? So Foose got to wait for this to come back. Going to take a little bit longer, but there's the teamwork. Uh, the SMG duo of Envoy and Kleenex, and just like that, it's RC's 1v3. That's your Amos is like going between both players. It'd be so tough, but RC's, he's had some wild clutches in his day. Can he pull off another one now? He's gotten fired up. Just trying to stay up. There's a man dancing with death. He'll get picked, though. Kleenex able to get the angle. He'll get another one. Fifth round up now for Ultra. Yeah, you had to smoke your platform, right, Surge? They go up top. Some early trades going down. But quickly, it's Envoy, Kleenex, Kleenex now 9-1. We're going to keep talking about it because his stats this match have been unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, at this point, he's now, what was he, what was the KD for the first one, like a four or something? He's up four to seven. five and a half, six, whatever the hell it is. You are a great mathematician. Oh, I didn't even add anything together. I just made up a number, Joe. But now, we'll see if Toronto Ultra can close it out. It's what would be one of the faster search and destroys I've ever been a part of. Just able to hit the cross. Abuza with the first blood, though. Kleenex trying to take the fight and get to double digits. But for now on, he'll reposition. Deddy out, ready to fly. And not going to catch him. Illy, though, with a big gunfight win. Trade should be there. Insight not able to get in time. And Illy with the reach out. Still playing with some confidence. He's Illy, right? So he's able to find that. And then, well, you had Hoop trying to get aggressive through tunnels. Strap was able to find him. Illy going for the gunfight. And Illy staying locked in. Props to him. Finds three in the round. I mean, he's at six and six. Done about 1,400 damage in this one. I mean, he is leading the way for the team without question. Nice shots there. That was clean. But you still have a lot of work to do. See if you can rip off five straight. The first one logged. Now four more to go. They're yeah, starting to see our, you know, offense is starting a little bit, sort of the first blood's not going their way. I'm just gonna hope like they got a little too like cocky, like oh we're slamming these guys. Like, see if you can just sneak your way, it's just round by round. Sneak your way back into it. Then quickly. It's gonna be a top platform. Tickle tickle! Hit, but well, two players through the back die. That is gonna be three dead. Overconfident or not, does it really matter? Woo! Ultra 6-2 win. Ultra are cruising right now. The advantage you think. For Seattle, if you were going to find what was going to be in the search and destroy, it doesn't come there. They are just flat out body slammed early in this one. It's 4-0 in a couple of minutes. Like, that just happened so fast, it got away from them. Even if they started to reel it back in, it was just too late. Yeah, and it's tough, you know, you're a player in that situation. You're prepping all week long since the, the season, or sorry, the stage kind of ends, right? We have this matchup. How are Vito's going to go? You kind of play it out in your head, going through scrims focus and then just you blink you're down 2-0 and these maps have not been pretty it can be tough to deal with no it's just not being competitive i mean the closest it was was before the reset of map one <laughs> it's basically a tie game since then it has been all toronto ultra they are dominating this series looking to take it in 3-0 fashion you're looking forward to a control where they've been what ultra is five and two i think you're two and five if you're seattle it's not been good there um you're wondering where is our success going to come from now it's going to happen in a reverse sweep and it's gonna to be tough to do joe no it is but ultra they have you know in the time sort of let the foot off the gas right at times get a little bit overconfident i don't know if it's foot off the gas or you him. need them to hop out of the car yeah maybe maybe that's it yeah yeah just just get out of the car completely so it comes to a stop um but uh we get ready to go towards map three ultra completely in command up to oh we'll see if with the control you can start to fire back in things step by step after this break. Maybe you find something. The coaching staff gets you fired up because if you are Seattle, you are in trouble right now being embarrassed in this first series. Everyone's getting thumped, it seems like, so far today on day one. Does Seattle have what it takes? Or to the guy in the crowd, that's when his optic play. It might be real, real goddamn soon because Seattle are in trouble. And I'm not sure where the success is going to come from. Where are you going to turn this on? Is it the coaching staff? Is it one of the leaders on this team? because you got something to work for. We got a quick break when we get back to control.
Duty Leak is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League pack. Grab yourself the CDL operator, weapon blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. Hello and welcome back. We're getting ready to go and uh, let's see. Can Seattle bring this back now? You're down an 0-2 hole. You're looking to flip the scripts, get a little bit nasty with it, bring it back within this series. Who does it start with? Like, who's got to be the leader on this team right now to get them going? Uh, I mean, I think you saw Illy, right? I think he was the one player making plays in that game too. But I, I mean, honestly, all of them. Like, this is just such a one-sided game so far. You got to get the guns hot. The problem for them, you're going to a Karachi control where yeah, I mean, Toronto Ultra, the only control they've lost is High Rise. They're 0-2 in that. They're undefeated on the other two. So an uphill battle, uh, a, a giant mountain is really what this is. Yeah, this is also 1-2. Like, if you have the slow start, if you get on a back foot, like, things can get away from you quickly on Karachi control. No, they can't. Yeah, it's I, not like you have all the chances to, like, regain at times if you do an invasion. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, 1-4 dead scenario. You're starting on offense if you are Ultra, and you are down uh, a round, so. We'll see. Can uh, maybe that break help out Seattle Surge, get them locked in, and that's going to be three dead. <laughs> the answer might be no, but still very early in this one. Already uh, aggressive on the other side of the map. It's going to be clean. Actually, he's just backing away, seeing if he can get some freebies for now. Let his team soak up the time around the point. You've already got this three life edge. Most of the people have already backed up towards B if you are Seattle Surge. And here's out hunting. And hunting they are. Kleenex is able to get one. Through the cross strap is there as well. You're sitting pretty. Yeah, if you were Seattle Surge, really what you're looking for in this round one is you go into this B defense, you kind of slow the game down, you get some easy kills, right? Get yourself settled back into the game. Now like you're down, you know, 02, just try to just relax, just play it one map, one round at a time. So far, so good. Dealing with the co those couple of players over towards B, A will be done. Now you get into this standard setup if you are Seattle Surge. Yeah, try to make sure they have junk side control. Don't let uh, that close side spawn come in. Just be able to send it and send it and send it. If you are Ultra, still lurking on that side, will be RC's at number two in the minimap. Everyone trying to kind of clear him out right now. They got to deal with him before they get forward, and that they're able to do. They're able to do with that, and then Kleenex just working the pinch. Taking one player off, They're then giving them, far. yeah, spawning far. It's a booze up, able to find the first one. Can't find the second, but you still have Italy pushed up. RC's now working dark alleys. He's able to rotate over towards B. Nobody on the point, so you have the life advantage if you are ultra, but the time is ticking. Convoy through the pick as well. He had that read on the top as well, just trying to snap back, not able to do it, Illy. We'll pick that up. We stop the clock, though, if you are now. That's a tough gunfight. We lose a little aim assist there for a moment if you are scrap. You're starting to bring this back from a live standpoint. You've got it just about even now if you're Seattle Search. All players sitting around even. You said everybody everybody kind of had to bring, bring it, and that's kind of what you're getting here. But uh, as I say, that three go down. Yeah, chance here. You're hoping RC's at least finds one to deal with this attack, but gets one player weak. Maybe buys enough time. Just staying alive, forcing Ultra. Where is he? Which corner is he in? Trying to find all these different spots. You kind of just see at this point of view from Envoy, he's sliding back and forth trying to find him. A heads up play from RC. He's very patient. Yeah. Maybe doesn't find that first kill on that push on through, but plays his life, allows his teammates to come off a of spawn, get map control as Abuza. Able to find another kill top red. Does snap on Envoy, but Envoy with the gunfight win as RC wins another one. You're getting closer and closer to the lives being the difference. You've got 40 seconds left to go. If you can stop this clock at all, that might end up being the case because you still need all three ticks. 12 to 7, the advantage right now for Ultra. And they've got a triangle set up around this B point as they're getting ready to go. Hook rip down to 56 HP. Abuza able to bail him out. You're 3 and 7 and looking to get rolling if you are Hook. But now clock has been stopped. A couple more deaths. Maybe one more death. You've got no respawns remaining right now if you're Seattle. Yeah, well, that's going to be three dead. They know where Abuza is. He's going to be cutting off the reinforcements of Toronto Ultra. And with his position, they actually spawn so far away. So you're really dealing with two here. And now it's just down to one. Is Envoy just trying to play his life four in a row? Seattle Surge have to go. Kleenex is here. Round done. Yeah, and by Seattle Surge, you meant Hook. He's the last guy in there. As he's trying to get there, not going to happen. And you're able to make this an extended round defensively. If you are Seattle, you had a couple chances to regain, a couple times where you brought it back, but 
Still, at the end of the day, it's around there at Ultra. Yeah, it's like every single time you had a, a pretty solid play, maybe from RCs, maybe from Illy. There was, you know, a multi heal that came on the side of Surge. You kind of get into your setup, and it was yeah. just like three dead. Then you had the close junk spawn. You always had some presence over towards B. They didn't pause the clock a ton if you were Ultra, no, but they no. always kept that life advantage. And the times they did, they paused just long enough, but. Arsony wow. with the nade. We'll see you later. Envoy and Kleenex, they are gone. Kleenex, he's sitting around even, so maybe having that, uh, what, highest uh, <laughs> highest KD in a series, maybe over the CDL, that might be a distant memory now. But what a start it was through the first two. You did your damage. But what can Seattle do off of offense? He got two in a row now for our season. Who? Coop not able to finish the kill immediately, but then we'll track and get it done. Yeah, just keeping one player on it. Now on the other side, Envoy does find one through Junk. He's just going to back on up. But who just playing for some spawn kills. Nice shots out of scrap. The headshots connect, and you are just deleted. But Abuza wins another one on that player through the flank. So very similar to what we saw from Ultra. Just kind of playing around the kills while you're getting this A point, pausing the clock. Now you have that four life advantage as it's RC's turn. But scrap, that is just the same exact gunfight. Booza trying to hunt, able to win that one-on-one -on -one with Kleenex. You got your first point done, you now start to layer this, and you've gotten three kills. Now a chance maybe to go 11 HP for Illy, but he's able to get back to full. Looking for the opening picks here as we now start to attack onto this B site and Diner. Nice shots there from Illy. So far, so good. Seven life advantage. They're picking them apart. This is the best maybe they have looked throughout the course of this series. Insight, though, bringing Ultra right back into it and Envoy chasing them out. Yeah, really, they were looking for Envoy, right, the entire time. You had three dead, had no idea where Envoy was. One player in Abuza was clearing out Junkyard, just trying to find him throughout red, right? Just that one player, don't let him find anything, but Envoy buys enough time, and then as you said, the big multi-kill from inside gets them through that alleyway, and now you're into a solid setup here. You see where Surge is spawning so far away. They have to make a team decision. Where do they want to go? Abuza just wins the one-on-one -on -one early. Yeah, now you're fighting where you want to if you're Ultra, right? Like, you're fighting out by Junk and not inside a diner. You really brought that back if you're Ultra, because you were down, what, like, seven lives, but that's, what, three straight kills through for Surge, so you've started to build this up again. They brought it from seven back to two, right back out to six, like, with the quickness. So nice flurry of kills there if you are Seattle Surge, because you've got a minute left to go on this. Only ten lives to work with if you are now Ultra. Is Abuza, Hook, Arcee's all in the mix. Well, Arcee is taking back his it's a team kill. Yeah, I mean, as soon as you got those spawns right on the bottom side of the map, Surge do a very good job. But then it is just back and forth. As they're able to find all of those kills off spawn does Ultra. So 30 seconds left. Now they have to go. What, still a four life advantage, but that may not matter. Where is that first push going to start from? It looks like Abuza and RC is going to try to work through red. The other two players through those alleyways. But inside, he has been so clutch in some of these retakes, and he's going to do it here again. Finds the first two. And now who just all by his lonesome, is just kind of waiting, hanging, hanging out for his teammates to come off spot. Yeah, he's itching to go, but now you're just going to stagger this one back. He's finally going to peek, scrap, able to put him down quickly with the headshot. Envoy, he's sitting at 13 and 6. Three seconds to go. Can you actually get on it? Scrap waiting in the corner. Nobody able to hit the cross. And where you're able to push that to lives if you're ultra in the first round, Seattle can't quite extend it to that point. Yeah, I mean, props to the ARs of Toronto Ultra, especially inside multiple times. Every single time they really they lost positioning over towards B, he pops up and finds yeah. a couple of kills that give them complete cafe control. It's like I'm surprised he's 13 and 13 right now because it feels like all his kills have come in like two or three, but. He's putting out damage right now. Really, the entire Ultra team, they're playing with some passion. What well, Abuza's leading the way, though, actually, the damage department right now. He's 14 and 10, 3,000 damage within this game so far. But now can he rip off three straight? Damage don't matter much if he can't get around one of the board. It's looking like out of the way. Well, at least we're at the beginning of a round, so. That's true, true. Better than it could be. We may have a quick restart here. That's looking to be the case. I know, I know. Blame Joe. What did I do? I'm just kidding. We'll be back into this one as quick as we can. Hopefully it's a fast reset. I was hoping maybe we were out of the woods when we got through a search and destroy without issue. That's just because Ultra won it so quickly. That's a good point. Well, those couple of rounds. Uh, again, at least we're at the beginning of our round, so I don't think there were any streaks to carry into this. Obviously, trophies, uh, that's a, another discussion, but yeah, hey, that, you, that's a tough one. If you're Ultra, you're up 2-0, feeling comfortable.
and they'll get back to an offense where they look, to be fair, it's going to be like we did it once, we can do it again. I mean, they have the round one offense, right? It's going to be the same thing. Like, you're not going to have any added utility. I mean, that's where it's really going to hurt, I guess, is Surge trying to set up on some of your defenses with trophies and stuff. You're not going to have that, but you have struggled throughout this one. Kleenex, maybe uh, he'll get a better going here. I mean, the second time enemy, he has been terrific in this series, but I think you nailed it. It's kind of in the ARs in this map three. Yeah, and I mean, in that second round, you had a chance if you were Surge uh, a couple of times where you get a 3-4 dead. You just couldn't keep anyone up near Cafe. Uh, I mean, when they get pushed all the way back, boom, they fight right on through, able to find a 4 dead snare for Ultra, but just one player making a play gets Ultra back in a position. Just felt like there were a couple of chances there throughout that attacking round for Surge to get on the point. Just never really happened. No, I think you're absolutely right. But maybe can you get a, a deep breath down for your Surge, this little bit of a break? Can you somehow get fired up and bring us back. But that's what I was so worried about, like kind of the body language that you saw when you we were yeah. looking at. And I, I think that was a question with this team, sort of where was the leadership going to come from when they first formed. But I don't know, body language can tell you a lot sometimes when no one's no one's chapping, chatting, no one's chirping. Maybe maybe they're getting some information from a coaching staff too in their headsets, but they just look defeated. Well, I think too, you never really see the practice coming into a, an event like this. Obviously yeah. the last you know couple of weeks hasn't been great for them. Uh, going up against the top teams, just feels like something's a little bit off. Maybe just not the firepower that they that they want. Can't find some consistency. If scrims aren't going well, and then you're down, you get almost 100 point clubbed. You're getting smoked in SD. Like that. Kind of, I've been on teams like that where it's just like we don't really know what to do. We've tried everything. Well, once you get past major one, though, that was kind of your cutoff, or maybe you're just gonna have to start thinking about changes, right? Without a doubt. Yeah. You know, I, again, just you can't struggle versus the top teams. It's not even like they're playing extremely close for these top teams. Like, you're, you're, you're getting slammed. Yeah, no, you really have been. I've heard we're about 30 seconds away from this, so we'll be back in here shortly, and we'll see if Ultra can close this one out, and we'll continue on to our final series of the night. Thanks again for the patience at home and in venue. Having some tech issues, but hopefully we'll get them resolved, and just praying on a smoother day, maybe a well, smoother day going forward tomorrow. Hopefully so. No idea of this, but yeah, game loaded. It'll be Ultra once again on the attacking side. And last time it was pretty, pretty clean through the opening point. And you just kind of let them dry. It's not like there were any crazy flashy moments. Like, it's just like you slowly played TDM and kind of choked them out. No, 100%. They had enough time on the clock. He went long enough where they were just, yeah, they had that four life advantage, kept it the entire round. Trying to see if he can get the angle and gunfight in there early on between him and Illy. Shooter's gonna shoot and start taking the fight from range, but Scraps able to re peek and get the angle to win that one. And this is kind of what they want. Keep one player on it and then just sort of roam. We've seen it a little bit differently. We're, we've seen teams start to stack A, maybe with no trophies off the start. That's not going to be the go-to. But Or we've seen this, like in the past, on different maps. You keep one player on it, you start to roam, keep that life advantage as, as much as you can and carry it into a transition over towards B. Surprise. He's been having such a strong series. Roaming around the map to snap. But Arcee's able to reconnect. Yeah, he can just never really get on there. He snapped well, but nice job kind of playing your angles if you are Arcee's. That'll be the first point done now, even with lives. It's no big conversation there yet. And Illy, who's gotten pushed up, and I think I heard him maybe getting loud on stage. He's able to win one over at Junk, kind of keep the, keep the pressure here. And like, like we saw last time where they kind of had to deal with Arcee's from this position before they could start to push. Same thing, this time Boop comes in to help. Illy's actually able to win another one. As he stays alive for ages, it feels like, and Hook's still lurking. Yeah, these are kind of the points where they would go three, four dead and allow Ultra right back onto the point. Inside with a nice snap, almost finds another player in Abuza. Does reposition, but you take the one for one trades as Ultra starting to move forward now. RC's going to be the next player up inside, but Illy gets taken down just for that bit of a crazy challenge. There is a trade from Hook with that rival, but that's going to be three dead. It was kind of these scenarios that Ultra dominated in round one. They're doing it again here in round number three. There's a couple spawns that come in close. Now they're going to be coming out a bit deeper. You still have booze on the site. They're able to clear them out of that. And now you got three here. You start to stack this. How much progress can you actually make? First bit, done. Second bit, done. 
looking to push this towards the third. Is anyone even going to get there if you are Seattle? You got to go. Has a chance. You got to go. You got to go. They're finally able to get there. Contest just able to break through with the final millimeter to get done. Abuza is able to get two, clear them out. Look to get the clearance here for this final tick. Yeah, props to who. He kind of works the pinch through red, able to win the first gunfight, and then he's got to go. He was the I one was player they were close enough. There. Yeah, he, he was able to find it as soon as he hit that pick on to B, just buys enough time. If that player was able to stay alive, maybe still have three on him, maybe the round is done, but Surge alive for now. But here comes the next attack, and again, it is two in a row, no trade for Surge. You see them scrambling through the back alley. Ultra, they smell blood. Oh, well, they all hit the back, into the point they go. They're chatting on the main stage. I thought he was done for a second. I thought we were gonna reset, but that's just the end of the series. 3-0 for Ultra. You dominate across all three game modes. You look like the threat to make it to a final like we expected for these guys. Maybe not uh, the toughest competition yet, but they look very, very scary, Joe. I mean, that's a statement. I mean, playing yeah. it simply, it's not just a, in, you know, we, we talked about it coming into this with the online qualifiers. It felt like every game, no matter what, was close. You know, hard points were 20 points or whatever. Yeah. Someone always had a clutch on up. You're starting to see the skill grab grow and grow more between these teams. And that was a statement out of a series out of Ultra. No, I mean, it's just what? You win by uh, nearly 200 in the map one or whatever, 150 ends up being. What was it, 6-2 in the search? 6-2, yeah. 3 there, like that. that's one of the least competitive series you've seen so far on the year. Like, just dominate them. And that's all you've said, like, throughout this year, like, People playing them tough, even though it's a 3 up playing them tough, playing them yeah, tough. Yeah, like, I mean, no. Surge especially, like, early on in the year, like, they were playing, going to game fives, losing by 10 points, 15 points, one round in search and destroy. It's like you saw this potential, but now as frustration start to build a little bit more, confidence maybe going out the window, and or it's just ultra, just locked in for this weekend. Yeah, no, I mean, maybe, uh, I guess the good thing is, if you are Surge, like, you start in winners, you have another chance in this one. Yeah. Some teams aren't going to get that, but, it's just like, even if that's a wake-up call, like, what do you take away from that series? Like, there's just not much you can. No, I gotta hit the reset button. That's, that's really it. Uh, I mean, there were some moments for Millie from who, but no, just gotta get the guns going. That's what I, I've seen. Just, it just felt like every single time, three, four dead situation, all sure it just made it look ugly. Well, we get ready now for the Monsters Winter Spotlight. Uh, we've got Guy Blaze on stage with Kleenex, who had himself a series. <laughs> take it away, pal. Thank you so much, Maven. As I'm here with my Monster Energy Spotlight, I got Kleenex on the stage. Make some noise for him, Boston, as Ultra comes away with that first victory this weekend. Now, Kleenex, it was a 3-0 here on the stage. How did y'all get it done, and how did it feel? I feel like it's just a mix of our practice going too well. You know, online we've been showing out, so just, you know, we're doing us, and it showed. It definitely does show, and it's showing here on land. Now, this is the first time you get a chance to play with Envoy in your squad here, all on land. How does it feel to have him on your squad? And, you know, what type of pressure does he take off the team? Uh, insane pressure off me, at least. Uh, you know, I play with, uh, you know, high impact. I run around on the map. He just, he's insane. Like, mm -hmm. he is the best player in the game by far, so. By far, he definitely is good. Now, for all these Toronto Ultra fans who didn't descend to south a little bit here in Boston to cheer you on, what do you want to say to them in the venue? Uh, we see you guys every single time, every single event around. We love you guys. I hope you guys know that. And, you know, you guys make it all worth it. So appreciate it. You know, you make it worth it for them. All right. Boston, show Toronto Ultra some love one more time as Chris takes it away because we got one more series to go. Thank you so much, Blaze. And my first question for the desk is, is Kleenex truly human? No, <laughs> no the be. tissue <laughs> is an issue. Yeah, uh, four K plus KD in the game number one, but I'm looking at the overall stats, and this is the biggest beating so far that we've had on our opening day. Atlanta Faze had a three over LAG, but 250 to 106, six two search to destroy, and then a 3-0 in control. Toronto is showing that they are the force to be reckoned with on their side of the bracket. What was the best part of their gameplay? Can you pick one? I mean, they laid the lumber down on them, flat out. And when they did this versus New York, I was like, okay, you know, they're really showing up when the, ma when the matches matter the most, but this is a statement and a half, looking like by far one of the best teams in the game. I mean, Kleenex, Insight together on this map, number one, were unbelievable from start to finish. Yeah, it's just one of those things where everything they're doing is working, right? You think about that skid row, they basically had every rotation, every break. We highlighted before the series, like their top three in every single category for a reason. And no weakness in their, in their strategy headed into respawn, but then also in the search and destroy. Now, 
you know, we've seen them in the past, you know, we're, all the times are working out for the SMGs, this, that, and the third. Dude, Seattle was like completely oblivious to any and every push that Toronto was throwing at them. There's only so many times like you just get, with, get hit with a blind counter. No, Toronto were on point throughout that. Every single push, so aggressive in command of the series. I mean, that was just a, that was an ass whooping. It was. Uh, and thank you, Serge, for catching us up on our schedule. <laughs> thank you, Toronto, for putting us right back on time. We got some new teams coming out on the stage, and Optic is getting booed like crazy. A glove Boston. <laughs> Boston gets rowdy. Uh, real quick, we got to take a look, though, at the play of the game. And this is the player you need to look out for tomorrow. It's Kleenex. We should say Saturday. He gets a day off tomorrow. Yeah. Look at this guy. A 4.1 in his hard point. And what's crazy is in the interview, he calls on play like the best player in the game as if he didn't just drop a 4.0 KD in this series. Like as if he wasn't just going out playing like it was a pub. 25 and 6 map number one. Kleenex, he goes 10 and 3 map number two. I think he maybe has died a less than total of like 15 deaths in this entire series. So for Toronto Ultra, if Kleenex continues to play like this throughout the rest of the weekend, I mean, this might be our biggest contender to go up against the Atlanta. Phase. Guys, there was a round in search where Kleenex ran through top plat, jumped out of their fire, and did not stop <laughs> sprinting for like 25 seconds. Shoots two players in the back, and I was like, how is he getting away with this? <laughs> when you're so confident in your teammates and their ability to lock down lanes, and you guys just have command of the map like that, he can make those types of plays. It's special to see. Sneaky Tobias, I call him. Kleenex has been causing problems, and Toronto is moving into round two. And we have one more match to find out who is going to play on their side of the bracket. When we come back, it's Miami. It's Optic. It's going to be a good one. FaZe, they're waiting for him. We find out who it is next.
time for the final battle of the evening. It's opening day here of the first major of the 2024 Call of Duty League season. And we got another showdown between some juggernauts. This time, theoretically, it should be the closest match of the day. And I sure hope so, because it's been nothing but three O's. This is number five seeded Optic Texas taking on number four seeded Miami Heretics, who earned that seed, Joe, by 3 0 Optic in one of their last online matches. Let's start there. What was going on with our Optic team? Uh, I mean, you played them twice on Invasion, right? Which is, uh, you have these auto vetoes if you are Optic, and that's going to carry in later. We'll get to that, but uh, I mean, just right out of the get-go, you're down 0-2, and then you go to uh, a control, which the number one control team in the game right now is Miami Heretics, but the last couple of matches for Optic, they have just come out sluggish, right? We, we saw it in the game versus Vegas as well, starting down 0-2, relying right. on a reverse sweep just feels like they maybe the, the land environment will help them out, but coming out slow. That's 0-2 starts in their last three matches. Yeah. Two of those were 0-3s, but one's kind of expected occasionally when you play against Atlanta Face. Absolutely, right? That's a tough series versus them, but versus the Heretics, right? Like, you expect them to come out and beat that team. That was not the case. You know, they started off dominant at hard point. They ended 7-4. and four. Their last two series, abysmal in that game mode. And I think it's just teams are starting to get better at this game, figure things out, because for OpTic, right? Like, your T3 breaking and holding, but rotations are, are where they have struggled in the last couple of series. So, for Optic, I'm expecting to have a stronger performance in front of a crowd. Let's take a look at our Monster Energy free game. For Optic Texas, what are the keys today? Honestly, for me, it's just they need to give Kenny a little bit more help, right? I feel like when we find them finding success, it's because Kenny's making these miracle plays happen. And obviously, like Ann touched on, like their hard point hasn't completely been there. Holding and breaking, or excuse me, has been their third and first overall in the league, and their three and eight record post holiday break. So, after we had those two weeks off they came back and they have not been able to find their footing so for optic texas hopefully they take the energy from the crowd and try to pull off something a miracle today break Joe, the curse what's the difference between playing online and playing on land for optic you worried about these guys i mean you have uh, another teammate in the crowd right it's this energy the fans every single play you could be the most basic kill in the world and they will get gas you <laughs> up right it really doesn't matter but on the opposite end sometimes there could be a little bit too much adrenaline but there is sort of these newcomers. I think Pred is a guy we've seen on the stage. When he gets going, he gets fired up. He starts yelling. This is just a, a team. I think if they can gain some early momentum, can run away with the series. But it's sort of their kryptonite. This Miami, Florida, you know, team that they get to land. And it just feels like they beat them. I hear a lot of Optic fans out in the crowd. Who out there is cheering for the underdogs, Miami Heretics? I hear a few, oh, yes. I hear so. This team has been taking over the CDL. Vamos, boys. Let's talk about Miami. They came in and they started off with the hottest record in week one and week two. A 9-1 map count has then finished with them a fourth seed overall. We were wondering, will they be able to hang with some of the top teams? Some they could. Some they couldn't. And it all just depends, right? Because we haven't seen this team play on land yet. We haven't seen them play on land since Black Ops 4, but they're not new to it. They have XP when it comes to playing against crowds, especially when crowds are against them. So when it comes to Miami, you know, everybody was quick to turn heads on them. They're like, oh, well, they had an easy schedule, sure. whatever. Then they come out in a 3 0 Optic Texas. Now they get to have them in their round number one as well. So Miami Heretics, in all sense of the words, must be feeling incredibly comfortable in day number one. Of course, this is the rebrand formerly known as the Mutineers. It's a brand new team, though, and it's a Spanish fan base. Base. All four members of the team speaking Spanish fluently, some coming from Spain. So tell me about this lineup and what makes them strongest in your eyes. Joe. I mean, you see right there, I, I mean, if you want to be, you know, competitive at the highest level, you have to be good in every single game mode. They are top four in every single game mode. And I think that's what, you know, maybe is a little, little bit different than some of the teams in the past. If they've had strengths, maybe it's respawns, they're struggling in search and destroy. But as we look at our uh, Monster Energy pregame, you can see it's six map win streak. They turned it around after losing a couple of uh, matches in a row. And then that game number three can be so pivotal. They are six in one right now and their attacking record is first in the league. Yeah, I mean, I think this Heretic team is incredible. I think they've done a good job in all of the series as well, getting a diversity of maps in. I mean, they have wins on each and every hardpoint map. You cannot say that for every team in the league. So they've really dug deep into their bag. And, you know, when they went up against Optic, we sort of saw a different side of this Heretics team. Like, they can beat a top team, and the pace that they set is absolutely incredible. Like, when we watch that Karachi uh, control, which we have once again in this series, there's not many teams that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, especially when they're on attack.
It's time to take a look at what maps they're playing today. We didn't get to a map four in their online series. Will we get there tonight? Alley Cat, walk me through this five game series. What do you see on the good side for both teams? Uh, I will say at least for the side of Optic Texas, they got to switch that map one and four. So these are very, the first four maps are the exact same ones from their previous series. Instead we have a high res SD, we got a Karachi, but the Skid Row is gonna be map one instead of map four in this series. So I guess Optic Texas is hoping to try and take it early. But on the flip side, Miami got two invasions. It's just a shame that Optic has two auto vetoes. It puts them in such a tough spot because now you have to play those double invasions. Like they have to get rid of Skid Row SD, never played it, and sub base hardpoint. So we'll see if uh, maybe there was sort of chestnut checkers playing those invasions against Heretics because they knew they were going to play them regardless of the outcome of that series. All right. This is just one word predictions. I'm going Miami. Joe? Optic. 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 Three Optics and a Miami. Let's get it started as we set it up to the stage with Guy Blaze. All right, Chris, let's get this one started. Boston, I know you ready. And the first team coming to the stage is coming from the Lone Star State, but they're not alone as the Green Wall has their back. But will it be enough? Get ready, because here comes Texas. You hear signs when we sleep. Heaven sent hands down, vibes so unique. Make some noise for Optic Texas. We got Kenny Shotzi. Twisted, that's for superstars on that stage right now. In the offseason, they decided they wanted to make a change. They wanted to pack a punch. They brought in a world champion in Kenny, and they brought in Pred, an absolute superstar SMG from Australia. They have struggled so far, but don't be surprised if they put it together here on land in front of a crowd. Let's bring out the opponent. Time to bring out their opponents to the stage for the first time with a new brand. Get ready, because here comes Miami Heretics. We got Journey, Vickel, Lucky, and Metals. Vamos, Miami Heretics. Don't let the new brand fool you. Vickel has been on this stage before with the crowd against him, and so have the other three many, many years ago. Miami Heretics already got counted out this season with their strength and schedule and had to prove themselves once against the green wall and now they have the opportunity to do it twice here on land in front of their crowd i'm ready to get this final match started blaze i'm ready to go as well and this has been an epic story between these two organizations and it's going to be a great battle and i can't think of no better duo to cast it chance miles let's go oh baby let's go we've been waiting all day for this one and the cod gods hopefully will uh, delight us with something maybe more than a 3-0 uh, it is going to be a fantastic time it is going to be an electric crowd it is going to be an electric match and it is going to be incredibly fun to see how optic honestly respond because miami heretics came out and punched them in the mouth just a week ago so we have a lot of the exact same maps in the series as well. So I know Optic, they've been game planning for a long time. Yeah, been game planning and we had to run it back on local, which is what we're most excited about. Very, very interesting True. to see. The very first time we've seen the Heretics play uh, on the main stage as well. And the first time we've seen this Optic roster get things done online too. Can't wait to see how this one goes down. And I don't think for a lot of these players, fans, uh, and a lot of the fans at home, these guys have been around the block a lot. We've talked about this plenty. We talked about it on the spaces last night. It's been talked about throughout the qualifiers. There's not a single player on this stage who is anywhere near a rookie. Yeah, no, for those of you who are new to like the Heretic squad, these guys were popping off back in Black Ops 4. They were a top eight squad back in the day. Vik would actually be the new man on the roster. He's gotten the experience on the main stage against Optic just last year. So it is a well-orchestrated team. Don't get me wrong, the nerves are still gonna be high because it is the first time in a long time in this you know, almost post-pandemic sort of environment for these guys. But you know they're gonna come out and be ready. And if you look at the break metric, 
Matrix. You already know Miami Heretics need to be on top of the rotations, especially on maps like Skid Row and Invasion. If you're told from the league get the breaks, you got to get there first. It will make sure to call out those breaks for you guys as and when they happen in the upcoming hard point maps. And interested to see how our maps and modes will go down. It's a run back of what we saw online that was so very profitable for the Miami Heretics to help get them to this point here in the stage so far. And then on the flip side, I just love sort of the environment for the Optic guys as well. Like watching Kenny come out on stage and actually get cheers instead of boos from players or like fans that have hated him for years. <laughs> Even when he joined the team, he sort of had that target on his back. And after one week, we were like, oh my God, this guy's amazing. Where has he been our whole lives? So Kenny has been destructive throughout this first stage, but the man closest to your screen right there, Metals dropped a 1.47 in the series where he matched up against Optic. So you got Superstar stars on one side but you got that superstar potential on the other metals has been filthy throughout this year yeah absolutely this is a lobby full of shooters and everyone's bringing their a game today this is a very very important winner's bracket matchup i just had a flashback by the way when i say that metals has been filthy i mean that as a positive i remember saying that about the heretic squad back in the day and the spanish fans misunderstanding the language it is a positive <laughs> term of endearment yeah. in the call of duty world at least on the american side of things so team has been fantastic the map is loading in Skid Row Hardpoint to kick things off. Yeah, we say he's filthy, but Metal's fantastic hair and skin, and the game play is truly disgusting, though. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to get this show on the road. The final match of the day to start off what has been a very interesting major indeed. Skid Row Hardpoint. And for so many of the maps that are a run it back in this series, Skid Row is a new one between these two teams. I know Optic fans have paid a great deal of attention. Their team has a fantastic record on this map, especially their rotations to P2 have been crucial for this squad. Obviously on Skid Row, that is the name of the game. It is that top blue area right there. You gotta have that focus point or we like to tease. Psych! We're only kidding, guys. Quick restart, very quick restart. You know the drill. Don't act surprised. Don't act surprised. We'll get hey, DS it. could never. It's only the first map in the series. No one had to see anything to happen just yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Cool, I was ready to go there, man. I was ready to run through a wall. <laughs> As everybody, man, I mean, this is laser focus. It is nice to see some smiles on the faces of the Heretics. Even Methods is sick. The rightful owner of the Methods name, yes, the coach walking true. out on stage for the Heretics. From what we can tell, incredible vibes on this squad. Their chemistry possibly unmatched, but obviously land environment is a different beast. Optic, you know, are ready to play on the day. Even the clips, we've seen a thread just bringing the energy and like the video, the content pieces that they are making. <laughs> Got to trans that in the gameplay, but they can be electric. As we just get things ready once more, a look at the maps and modes ahead of us. Skid Row Hardpoint, we've seen a few of those in the day so far. Of course, Invasion, Search and Destroy, brilliant showing on that. And Karachi Chance has been the uh, the map of the day when it comes to control. Should we have to go the distance? That's another Invasion and a Karachi all the way there. Game five. Well, very excited to get to that, if I'm honest. If we get to the game five, that'd be a great time. It is the middle three maps that are the running back from their previous series where Miami handled them. On the Invasion Hardpoint, 250 to 137. The Invasion S&D was a 6-2 to two victory. And you know when we're going to Invasion, it is Operation Do Not let Vehicle pull off another Ninja to Fuse. It has been on this map where he has been the playmaker. He has been incredibly clean. But for Vehicle, it might be the opportunity to play some mind games. If you find himself in that clutch situation, you know the Optic player is going to be checking the bomb at this point. So Vehicle might have a, a few opportunities to sort of play the crowd, play the man. Well, it's a difficult thing to do to play the Optic crowd. I mean, they have uh, they do get quite involved, let's be honest. We'll try not to let that happen here in the Call of Duty League tournaments, but we've seen a few Ninja Diffusers today alone. Selium, of course, uh, in our first series of the day up against LAG. Very, very close. Very, very close to call that one. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few more of these. But Major 1 so far has been a delight. Three O's across the board. Very close matches at times. Not like the last series. Uh, no, that was that, quick. That was one of the most demoralizing series I think I've watched, at least in CDL history, if not all time. So yeah, Toronto definitely trying to make up for any lost time we had on the day. One of these teams on the stage may also try and provide. These are the picks we actually have for the hardpoint maps. We saw Search and Destroy earlier on. Obviously, Invasion was one of the top-notch picks in s &D. is preferred for the hardpoint game mode as well, but a much more even spread across the board. For those of you wondering, we still have, what, three minutes before this match is actually scheduled to start. So in between now and uh, once we do get this issue resolved, 
Think of this as time game. But there we go, looking at the hardpoint breakdown, that's uh, Invasion. Certainly a player favorite so far. Karachi all the way through the terminal there. Relatively even in terms of uh, how many players pick a chance. And, and that's sort of the uh, you know value you get when you have a deep map pool. And it seems like Miami Heretics might have one of the deepest map pools in the league. They've been willing to play all 13. So far, they've only played 11 of the maps, but they have wins on all of them. Their overall map count just for the series that we have on our hands, it's 9-2 and two record overall for Miami. On the flip side from Optic, it's 9-8 and eight overall. So certainly if you're losing, you are learning. Optic trying to bring that knowledge to the table, but Miami, it has been rare that they have truly been tested, and when they have, they've delivered. Another fun stat coming our way this series. According to Turtle, map number two is going to be the 4,000th map of the CDL. If we ever get there, 4,000 maps later. Wow, can you believe we started this all off with all that weird third-person gameplay? Oh, baby, we've come a long way. Here we go, take two. 3,999, 3, a skid row hard point loading up. That's great. That is, uh, that is unbelievable. But here we go, folks. Take two. They get the series underway. Optic Texas versus Miami Heretics. Yeah, and you already got number two Shotzi potentially playing for the spawns. Everyone else straight through top mid. It is going to be a gauntlet and a battle for this initial time. Opening nades go down. It's going to be the submachine guns of both teams absolutely ringing out. Journey finding himself two before being dropped, but the last player standing, Optic Texas. They're going to be the players on the time. And for Optic, this is beautiful. You get that clean break on P1 at least early on. You have opportunities long term to fight for spawns. Dashi inside of the point. Going to get taken down, and it's not not just him, that is all for it is an instant response from Heretics. They have already taken control of this game. It's a big moment for Heretics. Massive damage from Lucky, not enough to get the kills. Metals with a sweet throw. Probably won't land. Oh, it does indeed. Big win though there. Heretics get some sweet time and they've got P2 control. And again, if you have a team that is number 12 in breaking, that is Miami, they need to rotate. But Optic, this is where they're at their best. They can handle these moments when they got to play from a little bit behind. They have a small cushion of a lead, but this is how Skid Row plays. The question is, can you Break P2. Trying to make your way in towards that hard point, a very difficult thing indeed. Metal's the front line. V cool now from the hard point. Big tags, not enough for the kill. You lose that front line player now. As the Heretics, the pressure is now on. Vehicle taken care of. The hard point still in the hands yeah. of Miami. And now Lucky just has to fill in the slot. You already got like Shazi. Is he going to be jumping up? Is he going to hit you from the stairs? Does it even matter? Optic break it in 20 seconds. That's the break. Two members of Optic Texas now in. Metal still up close and personal. Can he slow down the reinforcements and get Lucky close enough? Here comes the pinch. Fred finds his. Metal's up close and personal. As the Miami Heretics are not out of this yet, it might be breaks on breaks. I mean, this is the call and response in the point you're going to fall in. Nobody can hold P2. Break percentage be damned. And by the way, Journey, nine kills. We haven't even popped the third hill. Might be the man to watch. We are having a good time on Skid Row so far. Beacle flying forward gets turned into a skid mark by Kenny. Dashy on the back apartment line. Going to clear those players up. We go to the alley. South side of the minimap. It's now open for business. Oh, this is already a devastating crossfire being set up. Lucky knows if he jumps in, he's going to be getting shot from both directions. Even Fred up top is the thorn in their side. So this is a beautiful setup from Optic. Kenny's going to fall down low, though, and Heretic's starting to make their move. But Fred's causing problems. Eventually gets traded, and now the opportunity's here. Here come the Heretics flying forward through the blue doors. There's the first entry, and there's the trade. Perfect work. The second dash and taken care of. Here comes Fred from behind. Good work indeed. It's Shotzi with an unfortunate team kill, but you'll take the time. I mean, talk about a crossfire as well, right? That's a team kill that might actually go a long way. Dashi getting rid of the trophy. Vico going to have to deal with nades. You hear the coordination coming out from Optic, but you have the crossfire oh. set up again in the teamwork from Heretics. Reign supreme. Still holding on to this time, and they're ahead of the rotation game as well. It's going to be Metals potentially by himself at new. But with effective tied-up game, these rotations always going to be key. Here comes Fred now fighting his way through towards that new hard point. But it's his teammate Dashi. He's the player there on new. Can he take care of Vico? The next member of the Miami Heretics trying to get involved. Great work from Optic on the opening rotation. That's their time. Yeah, they've completely cleared house. They've won the gunfights on the right side of the map on every different direction. A beautiful moment there from Optic. Continuing to get those clean up oh. kills. Kenny might get dropped down low, but his teammates there for the trades. But it's only shots he left alive in time, and he is being surrounded. Trying to stay alive as long as he possibly can. Vico on the back door. Takes care of business. Now, eyes to the front. Heretics trying to make the entry. Lucky taken care of. 
as Shotzi finds four in a row. That is the laser beam snapper right there from Shotzi. And again, he was in between the entire team. And he comes out on top and delivers. Still needing to make the big play. He's on a four spree. Players oh. behind him, gunning him down. The next man in line gives the kill. Metals, you talk about a trade you needed to get. They shut down the crews. And on the rotation again, Heretics are going to be here first. But it is Mixy dashing around the point. Can you find the players like Vigil hiding by the crates? That man is surrounded by red dots right now. Lucky, will he check that left corner? He does indeed. Trophies down. Miami Heretics now in control of New. This open field, a very hard point to deal with indeed. And this is the first time a rotation has not been mixed. They are actually able to settle into the game, calm it down just a little bit, and get those comms flowing. A little bit of pressure through Ticket, but Shotzi assuredly going to fall. He's still dancing for his life, so Optic putting some pressure on. Optic pressure on, but Miami Heretics still in firm control. Now, don't forget, folks, you've been working on your Duolingo. Here comes a very important Spanish lesson. It's a listen in with the Miami Heretics. <laughs> No, the Miami Heretics there in the listening, they concede the entirety of the first high point. Now they made their way towards the second. Optic Texas now still looking forward to the break. Let's go for a quick listen in with the green team. It's a chaotic and passionate game so far here on Skid Row. Optic Texas with a brilliant break. Is it enough to hold though? Everything was brilliant until Journey found the flank. And now you've had a little more pressure towards the point. You are having a juggernaut battle right now between these two teams. Mixy around the hill. Still that contested time. Lucky's going to fall. Optic collecting on that rotation. Still 25 seconds left. It is a delicate game right now on Skid Row. Even on that minimap top side. That's where we're going after this. It's back to the barbershop. Shotzi, last time we saw him in there, very dangerous indeed. There will be a lead change, but will it be enough? As we battle for the new hard point, Journey's the man in there. I mean, he's just taking routes as well. He has just bamboozled them, made his way to the back line, but he still doesn't have too much support. Shotzi and Kenny working together, but if you're down a man, you're playing for the time. Stuns out, he goes for the chow. It is Miami Heretics getting the wipe. They wipe the floor clean. No hair, no players there on the inside of Barbershop. Pred now the next man trying to make entry. Does so. Journey goes down. Metals, next man up, takes care of nothing. It's Shotzi there as the trades are complete. That's a green hard point. Fred oh! up and Fred 
Spree knocks him down. Cruz collected. That's the six Spree. 26 kills to his name and all that sweet time. Oh, big wins from Kenny. He's twisted, taking care of teammates. Can they get another break? There's 30 seconds left in the hard point. Bread can't hold him back any longer. Over to Dashi on the inside. Gets himself one. Here comes Lucky on the outside of the wall. I mean, That's a massive amount of time. And they're shooting Ghost right now. And while Heretics is chasing Ghost, Kenny has made his way towards the back of the map. If they cannot kill Kenny, they are going to lose this game. All you have to do is take care of Kenny. It sounds easy. Hard points about to open up. Kenny taken care of. Heretics with control. And that is your opportunity. Either team can full 60 this hill. Optic, they only need 12. Heretics, they're gonna need to get it all. And for the moment, they're collecting most. Dashi is the only one to really slow him down. Has a cruise miss it away with. Here it comes. Pred has one in the back pocket as well. Will there be a trophy on the new hard point? It's coming in hot. Pred's lands as well. That's it. The Heretics have been wiped out. Optic Texas take map number one. It may have ended with a bang, but that was an absolute nail biter to get us through there. Trading of hard points, great work on rotations. Both teams looking exceptionally strong, but Chance are already, we've changed the script a little bit from the qualifiers. Just a little bit. Optic turning up on land in that map number one. And make no mistake, it was the Pred pop-off potential around the barber shot, setting his team up for the kill. That started out where Shotzi and Kenny get wiped off. Pred, that first man in from the charge, gets the kill and buys his teammates time to come in from the help. 28 and 19 performance, near 5K damage, led the lobby in both categories. Not just that, obviously, Big Bruce getting the cruise missile towards the end. He had a slow start. Started off 6 and 12 as soon as we got back to that p1 he turned up in the second half going on sprees and obviously doing all of that in the objective him and Shotzi I mean that's what a ton of time collected two minutes apiece their objective kills out of control that uh, was a banger to start proceedings here all the hard points on Skid Row, very, very powerful indeed. We've seen a couple of money heals be broken. Everyone's getting a little better at it now, but Pred really was the man of the match for Optic Texas there. The pieces towards the end certainly fit in the place. Starting things off the charts, I mean, both teams very good. Miami Heretics on all the rotations. They were there in the hard points. I think their P2 was a little ropey. We'll see in the game flow towards the end there, but there was a couple of strong breaks either side. Very, very difficult to hold on to hard points with both of these teams. Absolutely. And credit where credit is due, right? We had Vigil. This was the moment where he was popping off inside of the hill. Goes on a four spree while collecting the time. So make no mistake, there's big plays on both sides. But what we have learned from Heretics is this is a team that puts extra emphasis on the teamwork. They are always coordinated. They are always team shotting. They are swarming where they need to. But this is the moment where Pred delivers in the exact same same way, gets the first kill, waits for his teammates to show up, and then just continues on and goes and make the big play. So, Heretics, that is a 9 out of 10 performance on Skid Row. Optic, 10 out of 10. Slim margins to work with here, but that's map one in the books. We got a search and destroy now. And that is elation. Certain sort of sweat off the brow there, a little relief of pressure somewhat, especially for the Optic players, certainly for the fans. But this is far from over. And look how close this hard point was. I mean, you know, how many lead exchanges did we just have in that game? I see that line crossing maybe five or six times. So, yeah, that is a true battle in that moment. And as you pointed out, elation for Optic to get it out of the way, get those vibes flowing. Their comms were on point, settling down in the right moments. And even towards the end on that final P5, it's not just Dashie calling in the cruise missile. It's guys like Kenny down low, getting the coordination, timing off, and getting those cut-off kills. That being said, that's map number one in the books. This is one you almost expect Optic to win. They have been phenomenal on Skid Row the entire year long. This is the middle section, though, where Miami Heretics 3 0 Optic the last time they got played. This is where we need to see Optic really learning, really making those advancements in the game because we've already learned from Heretics. Not only is their teamwork on point, so is their resolve. They've been down, but they are never out. Pred's got the choking out of the way now in the pregame. I think that last uh, roar of victory might have left something in his throat. We'll find out what happens in a moment. But for now, Method to Sick, the coach there on stage for the Miami Heretics. Passing on some final thoughts to the boys before they get into that invasion search and destroy. It looks like they're ready to go. 
We've already seen Invasion Search played a few times today. Very, very close. Look for those B-bomb site hits. That's really where things are getting going. And this is how we're looking with both these teams. And obviously for Heretics, we talk about the teamwork, but it is really just that objective mindset that they bring to the table. Obviously planning 50% of the time, that is roughly going to be the league average, but their retakes are completely on point in their defensive rounds when the plants come through. Heretics trying just a little bit more. And obviously a lot of that has been off of Javi Vikul, the man who's in his second year now in the CDL, always going to be making those heads up plays. Of course, on the flip side, Kenny, an absolute veteran. He is going to be there for the mind games. Here we go, in a map number two. Hopefully what will be a very long and exciting series, but the way the day has panned out, it's been three nothing. Let's find out if the stats and history lies in favor for Miami Heretics. Or will Optic continue to roll with this momentum, the strong work they put in to start the day off with. As Kenny has certainly been an instrumental player in all the victories we've seen Optic Texas get so far in the year. And it was after this series where not a victory, but a loss, where Kenny was very vocal about how much time they spent talking over what was going wrong in this series. So it was against the Heretics where Optic had a lot to learn. This is their opportunity to prove it. It was a 6-2 loss on Invasion Search and Destroyed last time they played. Now you've been able to have an opportunity to feel each other out, get used to the play style. What sort of adjustments do you like to make? With the Optic on the attack round one, you have Dashi on the cross, spots two players, one through dark, one deep, and the smoke, well, not going to offer the information. They know exactly where Metals is. Getting so two. Shots he gets. One. Bomb is now down at the backside of those broken stairs. I wonder if Vickle saw it. Well, he's out like a ghost in the night either way, so he just did a fantastic job of getting those trades. And now you have Miami potentially putting some pressure down this A Street as well. Journey roaming around the bomb. Vickle's by himself. As soon as Heretics get these comms of where the pressure's coming through, they have to be quick to adjust. Kenny now dashy backing up the priorities to recover the bomb. Oh, the kills might help out as well in this 3v3, but with 45 seconds to go, you've still got plenty of time to recover it. And if you can get Pred on the other side of the map to make A safe... Yeah, it's a solo play right now. Pred's gonna find him. Pred's gonna oh! find him, but Journey's gonna gun him down. Advantage Heretics. Now you had the two AR players forced to work this bomb towards B. Lose Pred, you regain the bomb. Be cool now. Suppressing fire, trying to keep them at bay. And Lucky's there to back him up as well. The Miami Heretics draw first blood. And again, to talk about the big brain that is on Vehicle to follow his teammate up into Broken and make sure you trade out Shotzi. If you don't get that trade, that round could be devastating. Not only does he get it, he gets the bomb down and out with his life. And at that point, Optic's hand is just forced. They have to move towards the bomb. You had Pred, he wanted to be cheeky. Journey let nothing slip by, guns him down and seals the round. Everything could go a little differently if Pred does find that kill, but alas, it didn't. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, round two. Here we go. In any round where you get first blooded, but you clutch up, you're always feeling good. And now if you got Vigil going up top, gonna be playing this slow, waiting for the nades and stuns to rain out. Vigil does have a trophy, but he's gonna want to be using that around the actual site. And again, information game, you know where Shotzi is. I don't know if you necessarily want to deal with him inside of Broken, but he might be forced to. At least you know he's there, that's one thing. And unless he does something absolutely preposterous, you know he's going to be stuck on that side of the map. And look at this angle! Harvey chasing him down. Oh dear. The damage dealt as well, my god, how is he finding these tags? Shotzi, though, has once again escaped with his life. Yeah, Vickle knows, though. He knows he's in the spot. The question is, does he read the jump across? Shotzi might be dancing a little too much. Houdini does it again. Catch me if you can. Pred now, flying forward. Good timing for Pred. Great timing! As the round is over. Optic Texas start it with a bang and keep it going until the decibels are down. And that's what I'm saying, man. That is Shotzi at his absolute best. That is Pred pouncing and making the hunter killer play. But they got the information on Shotzi. That's the question. You want to do that dance inside of Broken. That is a dangerous game to play with a dangerous man. And you see how delicate that fight actually is. Shotzi gets the slight edge, helps you win the round. And again, you think about how much time spent. So much time spent when it comes to trying to deal with a player like Shotzi. Well, he talked about it in the other series. We've seen so many good players buying time for their team. And speaking of time, there is going to be a time out. A player in the lobby crashed. Death taxes in a lobby crash at the Boston Major. Seem to be getting used to this, but either way, tied up one-to-one -one for the moment. You do have Optic that are 2-0 in the first blood category. 
And certainly struck back on that defensive round. But now it's about keeping the vibes flowing. Oh, hey, that's no problem. Players on that stage, they're keeping themselves up, keeping themselves going. Referee's going to be there to make sure that we get, I think, uh, oh no, it was Vico. He's back in the lobby now. This should be a quick fix, ladies and gents. As we can see, a fully populated lobby right now. And so far, the theme of the game, admittedly only two rounds in, but it's typical of Invasion, Search and Destroy. It is those B Street fights looking for the opening, trying to catch the players when they're willing to be aggressive. And so far, both of these teams are sending players deep into the mix and really just seeing who is better in those close quarters environments. Shotzi is 2-0 on the first blood count, but he has been nullified in one of the rounds. Obviously, Optic, if they are flying at you after the kills start flowing through, you know that they are confident after that Skid Row victory. Indeed. Well, again, a map like Invasion, you're certainly looking to play to the strengths of the players and your team, and Shotzi having a very good time over by that B Street side of the map. Those broken apartments, those broken buildings. We're going to see him there nearly every round, I would imagine. Chance, Cred typically plays the A side of the map. As far as we're going to tell, that's the way things will roll out for the rest of this series. Quick lobby restart, folks. We'll get back into this ASAP. Tied up one to one. It's Pred spitting right now. And look, I was not allowed to write this script for Boston, but if I was, this is the type of game that would come down to the wire and almost be decided by a vehicle in a clutch situation against pick a random player on Optic about when that bomb is down. How do those mind games get handled? Because obviously both of these teams have been very solid at getting the bomb down, about a 50% rate for both of these squads. But the objective play has just been a little bit stronger on the Heretic side, but obviously we paid attention on Skid Row Optic, keeping things clean. Yeah, clean indeed, but there's no doubt about it. This is a very, very tight matchup between these two teams. A little bit of drama coming into the series, of course, Heretics 3 of them online. A lot of back and forth on social media about this, that, or whatever, but for now, it's land. And in the highest stakes we can find here in the CDL, these majors, the competition is as fierce as it could possibly be here in the MW3 season so far. It's both teams still. We are all in the lobby. We are nearly ready to get this one up and going again, folks. Day one jitters are nearly finished. We made it through Skid Row, though. Did make it through a skid, bro. That one was clean, but at least tied up one to one here in the search and destroy. This is the type of series that is really all about that long term confidence as well. Not fun to be in this loser's bracket. Of course, the teams in losers don't want to have to deal with either Miami nor Optic. But even just to stay ahead of the game, losing to Heretics twice could be damning. And obviously, for Heretics, first series back on land in a long time for the majority of these players, at least at the professional level. Got to make sure you come out hot. No doubt in the back of your mind. Also, we've been joking about this for a while, but of course, the Miami Heretics inheriting the spot of the Florida Mutineers, a team that has long, long had the number of Optic Texas in whatever form they may be. Does the curse continue? So that's still what's going on. But either way, folks, we are nearly back into this one. We're loading in to Invasion Search and Destroy once again. Final set of fist bumps going back in. Tied up one to one and we restart the match. Yeah, I suppose Optic has a reputation of either dealing with curses or breaking them, and maybe the curse of Dav Patty potentially lives on. This would be the year you want to turn things around, loading back into Invasion, Search and Destroy, tied up one-to-one -one between these two teams. Shotzi 2-0 on the first blood count, both on offense and defense. Let's see if there's going to be a brand new look on the attack. Optic have certainly been leaning towards B. It'll be the same once again. One to one in the round count. Opening salvo of stuns and nades will be landing at B. And look at this stack by the Heretics, by the way. Tripled up down this A street. They were making a hard read and they get caught out on the crossfire. Fred able to strike for that first blood. Fred lucky he had an MCW in that situation. An AR at that range far more adept than the rival nine. Speaking of rival nines, here goes Shotzi forward. With a little bit of covering fire there from Luck. Just trying to keep him at bay. Journey oh, on the hello. flank. This is outstanding timing. There's the first. The second's in as Journey has just ripped Optic Texas wide open. And now it's a 1v2. Can Lucky stay alive? The bomb's still in the hands of Optic. Yeah, they're making that quick rotation too. Journey might have set you up, but Lucky has to deliver. He has been one of the finest search and destroy players in the game throughout this stage. This is his moment to deliver again. The timing might be awkward. Big Bruce might have put himself in the prime position. We'll find out in a moment.
So we're checking every possible nook and cranny of the map. Lucky taking a slightly longer route. Oh my god, the timing is just unbelievable. 30 seconds, that bomb goes boom. Eyes are on. You don't want this gunfight. Shots, he's going to stay alive as long as he can. There's the slide. There's the round. And as soon as he gets away, chalk it up. That round is over. Most of that just gets decided, though, just off the opening break. Heretics wanted to go for the blind counter. They tripled up down that A street and obviously try to work too aggressively on the flank. It was Pred and I think a few different players on Optic there to gun you down. Journey might have had the timing on the flank. Nice aggressive play, but the trades were in and solid stuff towards the end. Optic, by the way, perfect 3 0 on the first blood count. The setup for Heretics could have been very, very fun in the round, but unfortunately, the star SMG player running an AR in the round. That changes everything for the Miami Heretics. Here we go once again. Heavier presence from Optic there in the middle of the map. That's going to be Shotzi alongside Pred. And, and Shotzi in a slightly uncharacteristic position, a little bit more aggressive than players usually get down this B street. So extra difficult for Heretics to make this read. Of course, the bomb leaning towards A. And they're challenged. They're getting information, putting the pressure out on Pred, and not yet wanting to get this bomb down. Well, here comes the fight over by the B Street, though. Vikal walks away with one. A 3v3 now. So we pump the brakes somewhat. Metals does not want to pump the brakes. He's looking to breach in through the backside of this store and maybe catch these Optic players totally unaware. Timing's a bit off. It's a bit awkward. But he somehow managed to keep rolling. Oh, dear. It's getting shoulder to shoulder here in the alleyway. Pred finds himself one. The turn can't happen. As the play is still going now, dashing on 1v2. And he beams, he beams. You got to be very careful on how aggressive you are to peek. And he is playing aggressive as well, but Vikul matches him. Catches him on the gunfight. And I was saying it is uncharacteristic for guys to get that aggressive on defense. Obviously, they might have gotten that initial kill. Optic's still perfect. 4-0 on the first blood count. But too aggressive. Heretic Swarm and Vikul with the gunfight win he had against Kenny. Evens up the odds. And they're able to swarm around DVD. Execution always on point for Miami. This invasion search and destroy is now tied up two to two after our restart. Here we go. Attacking round now for Optic. Shotzi with that bomb in hand. It does look like we're once again going towards B. Here comes the opening nade hit. Smokes down as well. And make no mistake, Beagle has a little bit of love on the cross. But he has been almost the lone defender on the B site. As you see Optic spread the map just a little bit. I'm leaning towards A, but very much playing for picks. A pick is a kill that does not get traded here in the CDO. And Shotzi desperately checking every possible crevice. Here comes the crack. Anyone close? Indeedy manages to deal some damage, but he's going to be unaware as to exactly where that player was. So a difficult situation to be in. And this whole time, Chance, the clock's ticking. Uh, interesting. You got that damage on Journey, but I don't know if they've made this read. Journey needs to be careful. Dashy might have the angle if he peeks out a little too far, but you are running out of time. You're going to be forced to go towards A, and that is not the best smoke I've seen. That's the smoke check, not the stun check. Journey still holding down. Oh, bad timing. Pred's there to get the first blood. Less than 30 on the clock, though. Shotzi never got the bomb down, though. He never got the bomb down, but he does oh! give you the kill. It does get traded out 2v3. The problem right now for Optic, it's just that game clock. Oh, dear. Can they get the bomb planted? Zico now moving forward under the coverage of Kenny. Optic Texas survive a crazy round. And that two-piece from Shotzi on bomb, he had no right winning that. It's that movement king, man. I'm telling you. He is so difficult to kill. Even when he seems like he's free, he just somehow delivers. Too quick with it, and that is a big moment right there from Optic, separating themselves for the lead. Whew. We have a little replay of that uh, shenanigans going down just before the next one starts up. We've got a moment or two. This is Shotzi's POV. Oh, man. The last two bullets in there, he just peeks up for a moment. He wasn't snaking. And keep in mind, now it's a one pump. Keep in mind right now from Optic, they have been perfect on the first blood front. Finally, Heretics were able to get a little something down the line. Trophy, not good enough. Or really just not present. Pred's going to fall for the first blood. A 3v4 here from Optic. That was a banger. banger. Vikal against Shotzi in this situation. He's going to take that every single day of the week, that gunfight. Metals with the bomb now planning over towards A. Luck has been spotted out. Kenny's couple of shots is not going to amount to much, and that trophy is going to stop the nade as well. So Heretic's sitting pretty for now. Man advantage. And Chatsy's doing his dance, trying to work the flank, but Vigil read it the entire way, letting the kill fall into his lap. And for the first time, Heretic's actually managed to get the first blood. 
They are making this round look easy. Oh, indeed. Keep Optic back. 25 seconds. That bomb goes boom, and we're all tied up. Dashy through mid. Lovely teamwork there. Metal sent in for the kill. Vehicle gets the pinch, and the Heretics find the equalizer. And you just see how Heretics are not playing any games. Lucky is absolutely not child that gunfight. It is, I'm getting the tags. I am getting out, and I'm letting my teammates get that trade. They are making sure they play perfectly, and Vehicle, by the way, has been a machine. Finally, they're able to collect that first blood on the back of metals, but Eagles making plays on all sides of the map. An ever-present threat on invasion. Three to three going into the next round. Heretics will be defending this time. We've seen equal love towards the A-bomb site and the B-bomb site here in invasion so far from Optic. Where are we going this time, lads? The same defensive setup as well right now for Heretics. They happy for the default, maybe a little bit more aggressive down towards the old P1. Round the A-bomb site, they go that direction. Shots is there to pick you apart. Another first blood for him. That's his fourth of this game. He's chilling now. Players out there on the middle of the courtyard. Once again, it's going to be Metals this time round. One minute to go. Optic is still looking for one more kill at the very least before they choose a bomb site. Shotzi looking to be the one to clear it out. Sees a red dot. And there's the kill from Kenny. That's three to two. Shotzi's all the way around the back. Vehicle should be able to stay alive here for a brief moment, but this is a 1v3. What's he got here? Nothing. Optic take the lead. And that is just a beautiful round of team deathmatch. Shotzi <laughs> running the bomb straight up A Street. Throwing this out there. The first blood record this year, I believe it is met or medals, excuse me, in accuracy tied at five. Shotzi already at four. And we're barely at the halfway point in this game. So Shotzi on one right now on invasion. I love the Toronto fan just sitting there on his phone like, yeah, I'm not interested in this one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Four, two, three. Miami Heretics now trailing by one. Let's see what happens here. It's a very deep stack there from Optic on the A side. Yeah, another hard counter. This is just the, the blind read trying to stack this up on defense. And maybe bad news from Heretics. That is the bomb leaning that direction. They know at least one player's there from Optic, but that is a lot of information Heretics have yet to collect. A lot of movement as well. You're reopening these possible angles here for the Heretics to play with. And all what Optic have done, if they just showed their hand a little bit towards A, they sort of regrouped into that sort of default setup, but they are just burning time on the clock. It's not a massive amount of information Heretics are working with, but they have grouped up B, that's gonna be the hit. It's a lot of shoulders being thrown. Shotzi managed to bait out the tactical use and the lethal now from Beagle. Kenny on the flank, oh, he's picked up the pinch. Massive damage dealt, gets away with his life. Gets away with five HP, that's the man advantage. This is the bomb attempting to go down. They do have the trophy around the site. Shotzi is still causing problems inside Ice Cream. Oh! Metals hunts him down though. That is your bomb carrier getting aggressive for the 3v3. He's trying to stay alive now. Heretics looking for the regen. Oh my word, oh, Metals, what timing managed to catch one. It's now a 1v1. Dashy versus Vehicle was 20 seconds to go, the timing works out! Big Bruce is gifted a goodie with the Renetti. Map Point, Optic Texas. And that might have been chaos in the comms right there from Heretics. Vehicle just looking the wrong direction, gets caught off guard and Dashy out there hunting players down. Map Point right now for Optic to go up 2-0. I think I saw a middle finger there. I saw a bird get flipped. In Boston? Never. Matt Point, off to Texas. <laughs> Widespread from Miami Heretics here on defense. Last ditch to stay alive here in the search. Oh. Journey's throwing more than a shoulder. He's What's he doing? doing? What's he doing behind that dumpster? He's been first blooded, but the trades are there. And that is the trade on the bomb carrier as well. So again, Optic's hand, at least late in this round, is going to be forced. Danny dancing up top, but you got to go back and recollect that bomb. Pred right next to it should pick it up. There he has it. Oh. But fight's all over the place. 3v3. Oh my god, Pred. A couple of big tags there in his head there. Kenny manages to catch out Metals as well. Life advantage. Optic Texas looking to close out the map here. Beacle pinned. That's awkward. Kenny gets the kill. Trades once again as Pred and Dashy now go up against Lucky. Bomb planted as well. And they know he's going to be effectively trapped. You got number four looking mid, number three checking the alley. It is two players on both sides. Lucky, maybe trying to play patient, waiting for Optic to make a mistake. But so far, Optic, they have not bit. He has to isolate the 1v1s just like that. 
Now down to Dashi. Running out of time. Last man up. The clock's still ticking. He's got to go. Can Bruce end the map here? Or will Lucky manage to pull off something special? And 15. Br Bruce just juked him. Bruce just juked him. He crossed on the deep side of the street. Lucky not going to make this read. And Bruce checks the bomb. And he gets it. Seals the deal. Seals the map. 2-0 for Optic. That's 2 to nothing. A close search. And a close shave for the fans and the production. Because somebody did log out of the, lo <laughs> log out of the lobby. That might have been a restart. Well, either way, that's a 2-0 lead. Here in our series, the shoes and the other foot now and Optica kicking. And tip the cap or maybe tilt the controller. Shout out to Shotzi. I believe he just tied the first blood record on the year. Was able to collect five throughout that game. So Shotzi, an absolute machine. Maybe a freebie towards the end, but his teammates clutched up as well. That is efficient work there Ooh. out of Optic, Texas. They made amends for that invasion loss. They did indeed. Well, there we go. Two maps down, and we've got ourselves a, uh, a very spicy situation. I don't believe this is going to be another 3 0. Do you, chat? Do you, fans here in Boston, 3 0s all across the day? It's possible. We've seen it a few times, actually. I can't lie. But, ladies yeah. and gents, that's going to be it for map number two. Map three is on its way in just a brief moment on the other side of this commercial break. Don't go too far. Plenty more calls you do played here at the Boston Major number one. We'll be right back.
Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Painted Alabrije bundle is available now in the Call of Duty store. Inspired by the folk art of Oaxaca, this stunning bundle offers colorful, vibrant, and mythical items you gotta check out. Hi, Lee Ho, neighborinos, and welcome back to the Call of Duty League. We are ready to rock and roll through map number three. We've got ourselves a control to play. Optic 2.0 in the series shots. And what better place to rock and roll than in the MGM theater, man? That's right. We're on point with this. Just like Optic is on point in this series. Made amends for the Invasion SMD on Skid Row, a map they have been on point on all year. They deliver. It is a close battle. They were popping off, making the bigger plays in the exact same snowball effect. Rolled into that map too. Shots again, five first bloods, typical performance. Everybody like Dashi delivers towards the end. Still though, 2-0 up. We've seen Heretics bounce back from these spots before, so they are down, not out. Optics still have one more map they need. Plenty more to play still here in our final series of the day here at Major One. Uh, we've got ourselves a Karachi Control. Will Optic be able to close it out? We've seen nothing but three O's today. Will it be another? I know some of the fans here in the venue want it. I personally don't, man. It's been a good day at Call of Duty. Keep it going. Let's find out. What happens here in map number three? And I will say, Vehicle has been on point in control as of late. His KD is outstanding, and he's played well in this series. He needs to deliver. We've seen Journey also have those pop-off moments. Same thing with Lucky. Metals has been solid, but that's the guy I'm looking at to really kick things up. But Vehicle has been the playmaker for the squad. Doesn't hurt to watch him opening break straight towards A. Heretics go. See if any nades land. or oh, a couple there. That's going to shave some eyebrows off. Not a whole lot of HP loss. So with that, Lucky's first blood lands. Two players there for the Miami Heritage capturing the A zone. First segment's gone. Yeah, the silent approach right now over towards A, but there's Shotzi for the big boom. Gets the gunfight win, clears him off the point, and it is Metals behind enemy lines. You can see they're looking for him, though. And they have him trapped and isolated, and everybody there from Optic there to gun him down. The question is, can Optic be quick to rotate over towards B? It's been a problem for them before. Oh, no. I think Shotzi might be the solution. One, two. No problem whatsoever. Four shots, see there, perfect timing on the pinch. And there's the third. The man is simply so hard to deal with. Wow! What a snap from Lucky. Yeah, Lucky kills uh, instantly by the looks of it. Maybe a shot coming through, but either way, MCW may be hiding its uh, raid gun moment. Back towards the middle of the map, here you go. Kenny doesn't like people to be alive. It's only Shotzi that shuts him down, but you're getting all the kills around the zone. Nowhere to hide from Fred, and still that slow approach towards A. Heretics, there's no room to breathe. Ooh. Snippity snap there from Pred. Manages to get a little bit more time into his team. But without that, you've still got the A zone being captured. Metals versus Shotzi now. Lovely coverage from Lucky. Trophies are in play as well. Second segment A. Nearly complete. There we go. Big wins out of Kenny. Nearly. Get involved. Dashi's there to try to get him off A. And keep in mind, in the meantime, Dashi has been living inside of the junkyard. He is going to be the constant force spawning these players from Heretics out. So, Heretics right now, you're flooding in through the coop side Ooh. of the map, and you are being funneled into death. Yeah, no one's able to get near the B zone whatsoever. Fred heavily stunned. It didn't matter. Ears were ringing. The guns are still hot, though. Shotzi opens the clock once again. Metals are going to dive on and maybe get the final few pixels. He doesn't. Shotzi's still in control. 15 seconds. I mean, he's 7-2 right now. He is feasting. You're trying to get him off A. It might be that final oh. gunfight that buys you a lifeline. But you are down to 11 lives. You only have a minute on the clock. And you've shot Dashi maybe twice this entire round. He has been living inside a junkyard. And again, it is about just spawning these players out. Heretics off spawn. It's a 45-second run, what feels like, just to get towards B. Dashi playing very disciplined right now. Metal's looking to close out that spree. Here he comes. That's Junkyard open for a brief second. Kenny now there to reinforce. Vehicle caught unaware. Altic will continue to hold over by B, but Lucky has managed to slip through. Yeah, the question is, how many kills can he get? Zero. Optic ahead of the game, completely shutting it down. Now maybe you've at least bought the pressure off a of Junkyard, so your spawns now are going to be quick, but the problem for Heretics, they just barely have any left. Trying to brute force their way through the bottom side of red. Here we go, Pred lying in wait. Gets red. Here come the trades. Oh, no. Shotzi with a two-piece instead. 20 seconds to go now. Kenny cleans up middle. This could be the first round done. Oh, Jesus. Big shot. Smells there. Turn and burn from Kenny up close and personal. 10 and 4 for Kenny Williams. I mean, look, that is a 22 and 8 performance right there in round number one from Shotzi and Kenny. Maybe add an extra death to the pile, but that is a nearly perfect round of Karachi. 
Again, Dashi just gets the feet up, get in position, force the spawn up, or spawn out rather, and let Kenny and Chati do it all. That slang was out of control. Exactly what you want to be seeing as an Optic fan. Smiles across the faces of these players, but that's it, wipe it. Strictly business. Round two now. Miami Heretics on defense. Yeah, that was just mistake free as well. Again, the trade's always on point. You think Lucky might make the play getting to Dumpster. Optic just ahead of the pace right now. That means the comms are flowing as well. Now they're on the attacking side though. Heretics, they want the instant bounce back. Optic don't want to give him a chance to breathe. Nades up right through the middle of the map. Optic looking to get themselves onto A quickly. They might just be able to do that. Nice shots out of Journey. Lucky nearly been able to take Fred down. Here comes Journey, hungry for it, but that's a huge amount of work from Fred. Journey, sweet drop shot, stays alive. Do lose that first segment on A. Yeah, Journey going on the flank as well, so it'll be late to the picture, but he's been on point with the kills. There's the comms coming through, by the way. I think Kenny just dished one up to Dashi. Either him or Fred gonna be screaming those callouts. Still, though, not a lot of pressure bot out towards A. Oh those my are God. Elite shots coming from Fred with the rival nine. Dead Silence popped, a couple kills going their way. Top third, though, still a problem. Metal's a nuisance on top of the map. Yes, yeah, Miami Heretics now really pushing the pace of this game. They are not letting Optic Texas breathe whatsoever. Shotzi, though, might have the opportunity to put some air in those lungs. That's it, he's on the beat. Oh, that's a great shot coming from Lucky as well. You want this opportunity. If you can get it from Optic, you want more than one player here, but Kenny's going to be nearby. If you can get the stack on B, this is without question the harder zone to capture. Optic, they have an opportunity to put the pressure on this round. That's one segment down at the side. Halfway through B now, we sit. Anyone there from Heretics to stop this one? Second segment gone. This is it, the last line here on the B side of the map. Vehicle's in. Gets himself two. Over to shots. He's still keeping the capture going. Can Vehicle find all three? No. Metals is there on the back line. The play is now done. The Miami Heretics hold B. Still, though, two ticks is a fantastic job from Optic, and they're actually getting the close spawn, so they have options. If they want to work for B, they can continue to do so. Getting the junkyard spawns. You two ideas to play with, and they're going to force it. They're leaning towards B, or maybe they're all chalking up. Three arrows turn, dive onto that A point. They felt the pressure of the game clock. They just want to be nice and secure. The game clock is going to change in a brief moment from 29 up to 120 something. There you go. Kenny Peel through the middle. Lucky trying to keep these players out of the action zone. Don't let them get near B. You only have one segment to defend. And Heretics are still trying to make sure they contain every player. Pred being a problem, but he does get caught. Now you're dealing with the junk guard pressure. Optic opened up that dam. And now they're going to be getting those consistent close spawns. You can afford to fly. Lucky trying to hold them back once again. He's turned the KD around in a big way. Spree comes to a close. Not enough HP to stay in the fight there. Journey on the flank now, trying to slow down the ooh, reinforcements with shots. He keeps the lane open. Vehicle once again, plugging the holes of this slowly sinking ship. 50 seconds to go. Big wins as well. It's that SMG front line looking for the trades. You're going to get it. The two AR players cutting in through mid. Pressure once again, flying forward. Journey desperately stays alive. Go away from the light, my son. 11 lives now for the Heretics to hold on. Just about 35 on the clock. And they're setting up for Kennedy to go on the flank, but it looks like Metals is going to read it. Heretics on point as well. Oh, my word. 30 seconds now to go. Pred dealing with the trophies on the back line. Might be able to get the contest time as Dashi picks up two. Pred has thread the needle, finds one. Oh my god, they're in! Can they read the spawn as they can? Dashi is there, and they've just managed to dive in. Optic Texas, what a round! And that is the value of leadership in those moments. You had Optic, they pumped the brakes. They got everybody in position. Two players around, Ticket in red, Dashi up top. They sent Kenny on the flank. As soon as he gets gunned down, no one over Charles. No one makes a mistake. There is no overcommitment. They wait for Kenny to come off spawn, and they make that secondary play. Dashi shredding with the opening, picking up the two big kills, and it is fodder after the fact. One round, and Optic have their revenge. Heretics unable to push that front line further forward. Every death was so close to the point. Now they are staring down the barrel of a 3-0. Swift and violent retribution from Optic Texas from the online play. Is this destiny in the making? Are they flying forward into the win? Ah, oh, Kenny loves that bus. He did it at the start of the game, and he's doing it again. Finally gets traded, but the reinforcements are here. Dashi on the cross. Dashi for some damage. Chatsy trying to be the cleanup crew in the moment. Stun's on point, but Heretics right now, they are swarming around this B zone. This is that teamwork. Every single time you fight one member of the Heretics, you've got two more to deal with. 
Holding him at the back wall now. First segment at B is on its way out. Lucky the man doing the work. Yeah, there's so much damage from the nades coming through as well. So Dumpster able to be opened up. Shotzi has made it through the back. The Eagle's reading the pressure. Oh, right gun for the job too. Is the MCW at close range, able to shred. Here comes the second segment. Complete. Great work out of the Miami Heretics once again, breaking this one down. Lucky in the reposition. Not wow. enough to get the kills. Fred and Kenny, they clean house, one minute to play. I mean, again, similar situation, right? For getting the two ticks, you're setting yourselves up long-term and you're getting close spawns. Heretics, they want to force this through straight towards B. And keep in mind, number four is also out of the picture. So Optic, not quite here. Now the rotation coming through from Dashy and Heretics getting picked apart along the way. Oh. They're going to be forced to chalk it up and go back towards this A zone, but even still, zero ticks of progression through. Only 40 seconds on the game clock. Airtics have some back pressure. A couple kills starting to flow their way, but Optic are fighting. This is not an easy round. Dashy has been alive on top of AC for so long now. Vehicle may be able to deal damage. Bull is doing this, tickling him. And Dashy is not dismayed whatsoever. Lovely teamwork once again. Metal's in the feed there. And he's still being captured slowly, but surely. As Vehicle now. Oh, come on. Kenny with three. I mean, look at the feed. Kenny and Shasi, Mr. Do It All's on this map. Metal's by himself on the point. What? And it is a dance with death. And now you might be just flooding no. it. Me. It's chaos for heretics as they cannot buy a kill looking for this opening top red though gonna be a problem dashy big bruce the beads are there can't get the third but does it even matter defense has been reigning supreme holding still kenny keeping the play going kenny still fighting tooth and nail can they get them out of B in time? Dashy, oh, there's the contest! Vehicle's down! It's a goal line save from Optic! And look at Shotzi, by the way. They're just going to be funneled in. They know all the players are going to be spawning Coop, so that long spawn out with 20 seconds on the game clock could go a long way. Looks like Optic might be forced. They're not going to make that full commitment. And that third tick does go through at a minute to the game clock, but for Heretics, oh, no. no respawns remaining. Oh, you needed that one. Fred might get caught here, but is it going to be enough? Metals manages to find it. 7v4. And this is time. Pump the brakes for Heretics. This is where your teamwork has to be at its Sunday best. You cannot afford to make mistakes. You need to make this clean. You can throw a few lives away if you're Optic. But once again, it is a single segment. Because now we play a very delicate game. An Optic have turtled, but they have everything covered. Kenny, taken care of. 6v3. But the play is now on. Pred has spotted out Journey. Can Journey make his way forward? Shotzi, he's not gonna check that. Shotzi gets the kill. Lucky with the acrobatics. It's now 5v2, 5v1. As the 3-0 is looking more and more likely the seconds they pass by. That's it. Vengeance is a dish best served cold. And here in the cold of Boston, Optic have got that one back over the Heretics. Welcome to land and the revenge from Brett as well. Nice little 3-0 eyeglass. That reminder, that was online. This is land and what a different story. We just saw Optic completely on point from start to finish. Honestly, some of the best Call of Duty they played. That is nearly mistake-free from start to finish. Every single game mode, every single round. Optic Texas could do no wrong. Three to nothing all day long here at Major One. It's been a 3-0 Thursday, which I think we can now coin as an official phrase. Shotzi at 27 and 17, that's your guy. Kenny alongside him. A brilliant series out of Kenny from start to finish. Every map, every mode, brilliant work out of them. A chance, I, I think you're right. It was brilliant teamwork there of the Optic boys, but also that flair. We saw Shotzi make those crazy plays. Kenny leaning from the front. Big beams out of Dashy and Pred, absolute superstar moments. That scoreline, it was still a tight series. But my word, another 3-0. I mean, again, that is as good as it gets. That is the comms on point as well. Shotzi, maybe the MVP of that series. The first bloods out of this world in the search and destroy and the control. You saw the damage stats. Absolute menace on the map. Well, it's getting rowdy here in Boston and with a uh, very good reason. That's right, Shotzi's up there on stage with Guy Blaze. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what he's got to say for us, guys. Take it away. Thank you so much, Miles and Chance. Boston, give it up for Optic Texas as they win that first match of the bracket. Thank y'all. Yeah, Shotzi, they've been going wild the whole
whole series. I know you was hearing them with the headsets there. But, you know, for these dedicated Green Wall fans in the building, they never doubted y'all in this series whatsoever between you and Miami. How did y'all get this 3-0 done? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we played them last week, so we kind of know their tendencies. But uh, you know, this time around, we kind of just focus on ourselves, make sure we're executing right. And, I mean, that's what we did. There you go. That, that, that revenge that you guys got against them definitely feels good. Now, the whole squad is back together here on land. It's a lot more to get done. How excited are you for this season? Oh, I'm excited, man. I feel like we haven't played on land for like half a year, it feels like. So, uh, I mean, I, I love it because of the crowd, obviously. Shout out to you guys. And uh, yeah, we couldn't get so far. Definitely doing good so far. I'm going to let you get up out of here, but there's some Green Wall fans at home. What you want to say to them? I appreciate y'all for, you know, supporting us as always. Obviously, we'd have a, a good online slip, but we got you guys online. Appreciate you guys. All right. You heard it from Shotzi himself. That's going to do it for us on the stage. Thank Chris, you. take us away. The fifth man definitely playing their part tonight as the Green Wall gets a revenge 3-0 over the Heretics. Joe, I saw things going south for Miami at the end of that game one. That was a game they looked to be in the driver's seat for the majority of, and then it was just stolen from them on the final two, three hills. Yeah, I think there was just some execution that obviously they were probably, I don't know, not proud of, right? I think they were very much in that game. P2 was a little messy, but I think really if you look at that P4, there was it, it was just sort of this chaotic. You had a two-man setup. They kind of let it go. You spawn Optic out for P5. It's like, if it was a little bit cleaner, and I know they're going to go back and watch the VOD, right. they probably win that map one, thinking they have all the confidence in this series because you steal Optic's best hard point away from them. You have Invasion map four for Joe's distance, but just some early mistakes, you know, for, for Miami we saw. I owe Chance an apology. He said it was going to be 3-0. I said it was going to be 3-0. His 3-0 was correct. Mine was incorrect. But Miami's not done. They could meet up later in the tournament. Let's catch you up with everything we saw in this showdown. Last time, it was all heretics winning the KD fight. This time, looks like, like Pred and Friends had a great time. Yeah, it was all off to Texas this time. And again, that Skid Row Map 1 really showed out for them. And as Joe was touching on, it almost was Miami Heretic steal away. Unfortunately, Shotzi just got a god kill on Lucky in that final rotation, even though they had the Hurley setup. And he got us two piece right after that. So for Miami Heretics, that Map 1 definitely hurts. And then to lose that Amazing Search and destroy it, I mean, Optic Texas just knew everything they were doing. Like Optic Shotzi touched on. They had just recently played them on it, and they showed that they seriously did some review. Nameless, do you think Miami made a mistake with the map pool today? I don't. Uh, I feel like if you're Miami, you look at that map set, and you feel pretty confident. Just Optic got a lot better. I mean, talking about that search and destroy a little bit, just the information gathering, so on point for Optic Texas. We saw multiple rounds, you know, Dashy back playing back ice cream, getting the info, Kenny coming to assist, playing off of each other's contact much better to their defenses than on offense, I mean, Shotzi was having a day, man. I mean, you know, he was getting first bloods left and right. We saw them push all the way up American Street one time together. You never see that on offense. So uh, Optic today looked like the far stronger team and clearly learning from playing Miami on Karachi. You saw the aggressive red spawns. It was beautiful to see. Ignore the last two online results. Optic is back on land and they are into winner's bracket round two. Let's recap all the teams that made it to round two. Starting at the top, Atlanta played LAG to open up the day, Joe. And, well, the Tiny Terrors weren't the only ones dropping numbers. Selim was right there with them. Draza had a huge game one. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the first match of the tournament, the first match on land of the season, it, it can be a little bit nerve-wracking, right? But they just got to work, right? That's what this team does. They take care of business, obviously, and they're going to continue on to face off. They're going to win this round, too. I will say, even though it was a 3-0, when you look a little bit closer into the statistics, it was a little bit close that Skid Row was back and forth the entirety of it until the final three hills that Atlanta faced was able to chain basically uncontested. And then that invasion search destroy. I mean, Cell had the 1v2 in the ninja. You obviously cannot let that happen. You've got to check the bomb. Unfortunate to be in fame shoes in that situation. And then Sip dropping a six free. But the control, that was all Atlanta. Yeah, just massive regression from the side of LAG. You know, the playmakers that you expect to go off. Diamond Con, like, just wasn't happening today. Uh, Atlanta phase, I mean, they're a tough team to go up against, man. You saw it today. You give them an inch, they will take a mile, Ali. And that's exactly yeah. what happened in the hardcore. After eight matches, LAG only has two wins. One of them is against LA Thieves, who they will play tomorrow in an elimination matchup. That's Atlanta taking the first series of the day. In our second battle, we saw Minnesota Rocker with the first upset of the tournament, the first series. LAN upset Insane. of the new season, and this was dominant. Yeah, this is a 4-0 series. You know, uh, we, we have a saying in Call of Duty, it's 
you never win the replay, right? And, you know, they have to replay. There's a game crash. They're up 120 points. They still win, and everybody was popping off. Awakening, I felt like he breathed life into the rest of the roster with him just turning up. They were like, wait, yo, Wake, would you actually kill me? This is so easy. And everybody had such a great series, man. I'm going to show some love to Linz as well. That guy was a man on a mission today. Joe, we saw him face off today. Who's the better French player right now in oh, MW3? Oh, oh, oh. He's putting you in a spot. I mean, listen, I, I don't think I can. I, I mean, it's one series, but I mean, Linz <laughs> has been informed. They've obviously won four in a row, but I'm going to still give that time. Hey, he okay, looks good, right, 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 right. No, 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 Linz is getting more and more comfortable. Listen, early on in the year, I cast it over the team and I was like, this is an absolute mess, right? Like, it yes. just felt like they were not on the same page whatsoever. Their teamwork was off, the pacing was off. Obviously, they went three in a row. Maybe the schedule isn't the best, but they started to get momentum. Trust in one another. You saw it pay off today. These are the underdogs of underdogs of the league right now. Minnesota Rocker, I think, is kind of putting everybody on watch because now they're on four series wins free. They proved they can do it on land. Lynn has proved he can do it on land. This is a team that I don't think anybody too expected to be in this position. Let's roll on to the Surge versus Ultra. Yeah, Our done. third French speaker <laughs> took the stage. Slammed. We're in Seattle here at Abuza. Bodied. Got 0-3. We're watching the whole series, actually, right now. Yeah. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the highlights here from Kleenex, I think this was the, the key for my day one. Kleenex is the best player in the venue. I, I legitimately, <laughs> when I was guessing this, I looked at Clint and I was like, this may be like the most one-sided series I've ever casted. Like legitimately, like it just felt so clear how much further ahead Toronto Ultra was. I mean, just right from the get-go, should have been a 100-point club, hard point wasn't. The search, you know, they get a couple of rounds back to Seattle, uh, but then this control, I mean, I don't know. I've man. never seen a pro team dispose of another pro team like this. That bad. It's, I mean, they were it's been a while. And, Black and, and, Ops 2 champs, Team Japan that brought oh Riot Shields into search and destroys as far back as I I'm sorry, what year was that? 2013. It's oh good year. I think we even saw a couple in Cold War, but it has been a, a long time since a series like this. The Surge got to wipe their minds, and they've shown us they can do that, right? Yeah. They've had ups and downs the whole ride. No surprise to see them in the lower bracket, especially with how hot Toronto has been playing. But now we know three of our top seeds are moving on. A lot of people considered Optic to be that third one, I should say. Here's your bracket right now. What side would you rather be on, Mr. Merck? The top or the bottom? Uh, I mean, the bottom. What? I mean, uh, Atlanta FaZe versus uh, Optic Texas, that rivalry we are going to see again. We just saw it online. FaZe, they took care of business. But again, Optic, they have a day now to reconvene. We're going to go over VOD, see what we like, what we don't like. Toronto Ultra versus Minnesota Rocker. That's obviously a, a bit of a rivalry from the past, kind of rekindling that flame here. But initially, an interesting one. And Ali, every team that lost today, they are playing for their lives in the tournament tomorrow. We kick off the elimination bracket all day two, all eliminations until that winner's round two to close things out. Let's break it down for you. What do you see here? Uh, I see that the home team, Boston Breach, has to go up against a surge that is reeling from the hottest 3-0 we've seen in a while. So that, we might see the quickest exit here at the Major I'll in that map play. number four. Well, obviously, Carolina, New York, it's a tough one. But outside <laughs> of that, these, those next three can be extremely close games. Like the yes. LA versus yeah. LA, LA rivalry. Vegas, they have looked good at times going up against Miami. And then Boston, Seattle. These could all be uh, much closer games than we saw today. I'm looking for a Legion to cause some chaos. Standing and the boys are here to prove everyone they still got it. And we will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in to day one of the 2024 season. We'll see you all for Major One tomorrow. Kick off Friday.
fire. The ah! Let's go! Let's go! Oh, you're still on Drucken. But what's your left, okay? You got this. Good. Push me. I already pushed. I'm a forklift. Take your time. So. Probably won't hop in this situation. He hopped it. Oh, I see that, dude. I couldn't see it either, but I thought it I thought you had my cross there.